and we are live <laughs> welcome everyone to our makeup episode episode 69 you know hammer 69 for 69 you know as they say I don't know nothing about that, sir. Sorry. <laughs> As a certain Buck Murphy says, you know. <laughs> but here we are. Welcome, everyone. Um, of course, joining us today, the mayor of MGTOWN, Drexel, and special guest, back by popular demand, Hammerhand. Oh, Say I doubt that very seriously. What's up, gang? How you doing? Appreciate you, man. Uh, glad to see you on your 10th. Th- this is the 10,000 sub special. Yep. Yep. Man. 10,000 episode 69 it's everything when it's you April started Fools. this what did you think about 10,000 being a realistic number uh I thought it was realistic only because uh because of my exposure on Nick's show right uh Ricada. that made everything yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. since yeah what the you ever have that feeling like something's biting you and there's nothing there Shit. uh yeah I left her at the divorce court so yeah <laughs> Shit, see, ya. In the- see ya yeah I'm, 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 I'm like <laughs> I'm not it feels like something's literally like biting me right now I'm like what the fuck Nothing there, but no. So, so. Oh, sorry, sorry, Drake. But it, well, it, it the comes audience. up there quick, right? Like you know, you you start, and then like you know, I mean, it's, it's like anything, right? There's ebb and flow. Sometimes you spike. Sometimes you kind of you know <clears throat> plateau and kind of peter out for a while. You dip maybe a little bit, and then you know what I'm saying. Like my thing was this: uh, when you start in this space, you know how it is, Hammer. You're oh, just yeah. like you see a problem, right? You're looking around you. I look left. I look right. I look center, right? And what do you see? You saw the same thing I saw. How come yeah. no one's doing shit? No one's saying nothing. No one's doing nothing. And I'm like, oh, really? This is what it is. Because I, you know, Hammer, you've talked about this. You're the same guy off camera. And because I've always been like this, and I'm looking around like, how come no one's doing do shit? Really? So so I guess I got to go on on other people's streams. This is before I had my own channel, right? That's right. I'd be, on other, I'd be doing shit with other people. Like, yo, there are people out here who literally live in uh, delusion land, right? They just sit there and say, "No, no hammer up." Wait, you know the meme, right? It's the uh, the dog sitting in the burning house, right? Everything is fine. That's most people. No, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I have no clue what. No, not, everything's fine. I said, "You know what, man? No, fuck that." So here we are. And I said, "You know, I, I was looking at uh, certain content creators in the background for years, right? Probably since about 2017 or so." That's a good long time. You, TFM, back when he was on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And you and I have talked about this. There was a time, especially in those days, like that, you know, that 2015 going forward time, there were a lot of dudes who grifted in to get paid, right? Mm-hmm. Angry mm-hmm. MGTOW, remember him? Oh, yes. There were a lot he's of other dudes. Review. He's doing movie reviews. Oh, is that what he's doing? <laughs> uh, yeah. last, time I, last time I saw it, that was a few months yep. ago. But, but, but you know, that, like you said, what ended up happening is a lot of people started getting phased out because when the demonetization came, that was after Big John did that interview, right? Yeah. That was when yeah. the crackdown really came. And then you started seeing who was really into this, who really yeah. lived it. Because I've always said, Hammer, a lot of dudes don't have receipts. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of guys, I believe, this is just my own opinion, that's why a lot of guys don't show their face. It has nothing to do with like the, oh, doxing this, doxing that. Because if certain dudes showed their face, right? I believe what would happen is a lot of these guys don't have the receipts. You see what I'm saying? So then people from their past, right, or present, would expose them. Kind of like Jack Murphy, right? Okay, watch this. So, Hammer, I'm Jack Murphy. I start claiming all this, you know, right-wing stuff and conservatism, blah, 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 right? Then someone goes, wait a minute, we got videos of this dude on Chatterbait. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Once you show your face, people – because remember, let's just say – he can always – Oh yeah, young boy buttholes. Oh. Ooh. But but you see what I'm he, saying he though? Never, he never went from Democrat to deplorable. This motherfucker, all he did was write a book because he was getting burned down in his chosen field for taking a copping a whole bunch of cash that wasn't his. So he just came on over here and yep. tried to ride that train. Yep, he grifted. Yeah. Here's the thing though. And I think that, that goes to something that, you know, I even put in my notes tonight. One of the problems that we have is you know, and I've seen this in the black community for, you know, only all my fucking life, right? People are too anxious for outside acceptance and validation. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, my God, look, he, he's, he sounds like us. And, and you know what, Hammer? Like I said, I haven't gotten a chance to watch your, your video about the, the false prophets, but I believe that's why you have so many chameleons, male and female, because oh, people are so desperate to hear mainstream. You know, these people out here who say, uh, I don't ever want this message to go mainstream or blah, blah, blah. 
and yet every chance they get, what are they doing? They're trying to look look for a way to go mainstream, right? Mainstream, which is what which yeah. is what the Kevin Samuels thing is. And sure. the message will get perverted, right? It's going to get perverted when you start saying that Nicki Minaj is a nine out of ten. That lets me know you're compromised. Oh my god, you're, you're compromised. Oh my you see god, what I'm saying? What, what, would you rate me? What, what would you rate me? What What am I? What, oh, you're a nine, baby. You, you're a nine. Turn the, turn the fucking computer off. That's yep. over. Done. Done. Yep. Like once that happened, a lot of people just went like, "Oh, really, bro?" Because yeah, <laughs> because remember they're gonna they're gonna base it off everything that you've set up until that point. You see what I'm saying? Nine. If if everything you set up to that point was like, "Oh yeah, you know, you need to be a high value woman," and the way you do that is it. So so here's the thing. I'm okay with you saying all that, right? I'm okay with whatever message you push, right? I, I'm not gonna knock you. However, if get, when, when you get put on the spot and the question is, are you really that guy? So with Kevin Samuels, who, who took a lot of Manosphere talking points, and then when the time came, Nicki Minaj says, rate me, Kevin. Oh, you're a nice, wait, really? Really? Because I thought women who put a bunch of implants in themselves, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen, do you know what she really looks like? Because I, I actually have yeah. seen the pictures. Yeah, where yeah, she's yeah. like, she looks like she's in a stairwell. Yeah. In, in in New York, right? Yeah, looking like a, a looking like a stud, right? The lesbian stud. Yeah. And I'm looking at this bra like you're a one or two, yeah, uh, literally sure. a one or two. So I'm I thinking, showed that to Undead Chronic, and he was like, oh, "No, it's not no, the it's same her. fucking bitch. Yep. No, it's not." Yeah, yep. Yeah. And she got her shit. So she got her teeth done. She got the the wig. She got the 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 boobs, the butt, the, the all you know, all that yeah, stuff. She's she's a hundred percent plastic, man. She's all plastic. So plastic's not real. It's not real. So so you can't. How do you give someone who's not real a nine? You see what because I'm saying? You're not real. Because you're not, and that makes sense, right? Yeah. So someone who's real, like I, I always tell you, man, when it's real, it's real. So what ends up happening is a person who actually lived the life who shows their face on camera for a fucking reason because. Nobody can ever come uh, anywhere, Hammer, and say, you know what, Hammer, I went to school with Drex. Drex is a fraud. You see what I'm saying? Because if, if I'm using my real name and this is my face, who's going to come up and say I'm a fraud? Anyone from my past will be like, yeah, yeah, everything he said is true on his stream. Yeah, he's really like that off the camera. He was like that back then. Show me somebody who's like that. You see what I'm mean, saying? A lot of dudes are hiding. Global oh, I got news, an avatar. Man. CBC might. Global News might. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. I understand. I understand both sides of it. I understand how folks get shitty with folks that don't show their face and they don't count it as a receipt. And it's easy to just dismiss them out of hand. But we got a few folks out here that have done this for a long, long time, been nothing but consistent, don't show their face because they got a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. So I understand it from that side, too. You know, if you train, like, say, Undead Chronic, for instance, you train for years and years and years to be a biologist, a genetic scientist, and somebody decides to dox you and then you can't get a job in your chosen field. Mm -hmm. I mean, your life's kind of over. Yep. So, and, and it's important. Yeah. Like, like here's the thing, you know, you know, as well as I, we always pick and choose our battles. Sure. And even this whole thing tonight. Right. So the whole issue of chivalry. Uh, there needs to be a a reimagining of this uh, because one of the things that I've noticed in this, not only in this space, but in my regular life is, you know, people can talk about the Will and Jada thing staged or not, blah, 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 blah. Was it a humiliation ritual? Whatever you want to call it, right? What matters most is this, the lessons to be learned from that fiasco, right? Because you can use a movie to to you know hammer points in. You see what I'm saying? Like you don't always need to have real world stuff happen, right? Like how many times have you been like this? You've referenced a movie or, or a song or something, right? Hammer, where you're like this. Hey, it's like this. You know, insert random thing here, right? In random form of multimedia. So with, with the Will and Jada thing, I look at it like this. This is the end result of being the simp, right? Because it, you start off as the simp. The simp gets turned into a cuck. Then you become the cuck with rage, right? Yeah, like in Boogie Nights. Boys. Yep. You know, that's what I told everybody when this stuff started to come up. Yep. Was this guy, he's probably one of the most well-financed cucks in the world. Yep. You know, just because you've got a half a billion dollars laying around somewhere doesn't mean that you are an alpha or that you're a stud. It just means that you worked really, really hard to cover your bases on what you are. Mm -hmm. It's just what you are. Not saying that the man doesn't have a work ethic, not trying to take any of the other shit away from him, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay that big bag of cuck right on his fucking lap Yep, because it's what he is. That is not an alpha. 
But no. Tiffany Haddish would tell you that that's an alpha. Yeah, yeah, and well, and that's another thing because one of the major takeaways from this, and I remember saying this uh, as soon as I saw it, was it was really simple. It's the reaction, right? How are people going to react? Because you and I both know who is going to react the same way. Oh, yeah. These German shepherds are going to react saying, that's what a real man does for his woman. He <laughs> says, but now they're not going to, they're not going to say anything about uh, the entanglements. They're not going to say anything about the fact that she's uh, uh, got her daughter Willow writing love letters to Tupac 25 years after he's dead. They're not going to say nothing about um, the fact that she has said Will Smith was her third choice. They're not going to say anything about, oh, yeah, well, you know what? Not only has Jada cucked Will, right? Every chance on her red table talk, she disrespects him, right? Yeah. Every single time. They, they, it's a platform for disrespect and cuckoldry, right? Sure. And that is now endorsed. You see sure. what I'm saying? It's endorsed. But you see that you see stuff like that across the board, though, whether it's black or white, male or female. Yep. I mean, people Jeff use Bezos. their platforms now to become incredibly tribal. Absolutely. You know, tribalism, I think, in, in certain forms is a good thing. Like I, I said this the other day, the black men, a black culture that wants to be with black men, black culture. I'm all I'm all for it. Whites that want to be with whites. I'm all for it. You know, bluebirds, bluebirds, redbirds, redbirds, like uh, Ali said years and years and years ago. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand it. There will be some overlap. But these folks out here. This to me is not, it's not normal. It's not organic uh, tribalism. Mm -hmm. It's not organic. It, it's all synthetic. It, well, one of the things that, you know, we think about tribalism, because, you know, you see this in sports, right? So in you know, <clears throat> the very nature of sport is tribal, right? Sure. You, you are on team A, you wear white. I'm on team B, you know, I wear blue, right? And we go out on the field to play against each other. I'm not out here to be your friend because you are my opponent, right? Now, can we show equal respect? And do we have to play by the same rules? Yes, right? The same, the same rules and regulations govern both of us. However, the odd thing about tribalism is this. When people don't hold people in their own tribe accountable. Because like, if you see a player on your team do a cheap shot, you shouldn't be just thinking to yourself, well, yeah, I mean, that kind of helped us win. No, it's like, no, dude, that's a fucking cheap shot. That was a dirty play, right? Because you remember, I was at Daryl Stingley, you know, getting paralyzed. That wasn't dirty. It was just, uh, uh, you know, hits happen, right? Uh, when Lawrence Taylor snapped Joe Theismann's leg, it wasn't a dirty play. It just happens because that's the nature of the sport. That's but if you see somebody play. going out there doing something intentionally, right? If a guy told you, hey, Hammer, I'm about to hit this guy low, man, because I'm going to end his career. You'd be like, no, 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 we're not doing that. You see what I'm saying? You know, I'd be very honest with him. I'd say if you do that, um, you ain't my teammate. You're not my teammate. Yeah. Well, see, I, I'm going to win honest. I'm going to win fair and square. You know, if, yep. if you miss calls here and you miss them there, that's one thing. You know, that's a ref here and a ref there, uh, not looking at the field right. Um, mm -hmm. But no, man, you are the company that you keep. Yep. You're the company that you keep. So folks like Haddish, when they run out there and they co-sign uh, black men assaulting other black men yep. to keep those B-dubs happy, you know, the same thing happens over in the white sphere. Same thing happens in the Asian sphere. It, mm -hmm. It's it's a worldwide problem. And men got to get their shit together and they got to get it together real fast because it's killing the species. Yep. Uh, so I'm put about the, the, the drag video. Of course, they removed it. But. The the main thing that, that got taken away from all this, right, was that it's something that has bothered me for a long time ever since I entered this space because it's something that affected me in my personal life, which is really simple. Hammer, I'm sure you've you recognized this fairly early in your YouTube <clears throat> career. Why is it that your biggest opponents have the same dick swinging between their legs that you do, right? Yeah. We, well, you you notice that, that really quickly. Time. We've known that you for see a what I'm long saying? time. Yeah. You've known it for a long time. Because like, 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 it's the thing that I think it, it, it bothered me most. They're like the, the very people you're trying to help, right? You know, they're the ones trying to tear you down. They're the ones saying that everything you say is a lie, oh, blah, 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 blah. And they're defending the, the bad behavior of these demonic creatures out here doing all kinds of fuck shit to men, right? And then at the, on, the same, on the same token, you don't see... In other words, the women will agree with what you're saying, right? Like, yep, that's female nature. Yep, that's yep, that's why we put guys in the friend zone, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes time to put up or shut up, i.e., first and foremost, destroying the family court, they're always silent, right? Always. Like, uh, 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 we ain't going to say nothing about that because it benefits them in the hive mind, right? The sisterhood. Now, that being said, when you look at this space and the grifters, 
the weirdos that have infiltrated, right? And you sit down, you start to really think about it. And you say, Hammer, why is it that there, there are so many content creators feuding, right? Is it because it's an issue of real or fake or is there something deeper going on here? You know what I'm saying? Well, I think you can attribute both of those points to all of the above. You know, it, it is an issue of feuding. It's, it's an issue, you know, tribalism, like we spoke about a little bit earlier, uh, being arrogant, not willing to listen, not willing to have people on your show that have a, not just opposing point of views, but like vehemently opposing points of view. And you can't sit down and have a civil conversation with these folks. Mm hmm. You know, and I, I'm really, it's the end result of 60 years of women raising men. You know, mm -hmm. women destroyed the men. Now they hate what they've created. They refuse to take responsibility for it. They think that they can just divorce that situation and move to another group of men. But their disease has spread all over the earth. Yep. It's everywhere. Can't get away from it. Yeah, well, it's funny you say that because uh, I put in my notes tonight about that very topic. That <clears throat> I think is very telling, right? And I had this thing, it literally says the hammer hand roll call. You had done a show once, I'll never forget this. You're sitting in, in your room right there and you look over at the camera and you said, let's see how this, this message is spreading. You said, tell me where you're from. And then you shared your screen, right? And all you saw was things yeah. scrolling up. Yeah. And as uh, Lina Mictow always says, shout out to LOM, he always says what hammer hand? This red pill's on autopilot. You see yeah. what I'm saying? It's worldwide. It, it's, it's, it's global now. You, yeah. So, so when I hear people doing this whole, I have no clue what you're talking about. I've never, where do you meet these women? Where, what is a simp? Well, I have no clue. You can't say that anymore if everyone all over the world, you had people from every country. We had people from every country. And I'm sure that, especially when you first started, right? Weren't you kind of surprised that, that when people were saying, hey, I'm in, and then, you know, they would tell you what country they were in. You're like, well, oh, yeah. you, you listen to me? Like, I was shocked, right? Oh, I'm yeah. in Zambia. I'm in 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 uh, uh you know Ukraine. Man, I'm in Uganda. You're like we've had folks pop up from the fucking Congo. Yeah, I mean the Congo, Zimbabwe, yep. South Africa, ev everywhere, Iceland, Greenland, everywhere, Tasmania. It just it's unbelievable. Yep. It's unbelievable. What, is, what is your thought on that? Like when you when you hear about these guys who are from like you said from far away lands and you thought that you know these are people that you probably never thought you would ever meet in person, let alone would reach out to you saying, hey, I listen to your content, I enjoy your content, and, I, and most importantly, I relate to your content. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't speak anything to me on a personal level. I don't want this to come across the wrong way. It's not like I blasted it out there and that, that everybody relates to me. It's that everybody's having the same problem, and now they have the ability to communicate with people everywhere that are having the same problem. And it, it's like a light turned on in them. As soon as they hear it, they couldn't describe it. They couldn't define it. They felt it. And then as soon as they hear somebody else say it, it's like, that's it. There it is. Yeah. Well, TFM was the one that did that for me. Because, you know, I've oh, talked yeah. on numerous occasions where I said a lot of my actions, uh, some that may appear unsavory to some, I told people, go, you got to understand. I was coming from a position in life where I said to myself, I'm all alone. I truly, Hammerhand, I'm not lying. I truly believe I was the only one like this on the, in the whole world. You because, wouldn't believe how many people I've had say that. Yeah, because, think about it. I, I, this is what I've told the guys in my Discord. Hammer, when you go out and about, you're, right, you're just out in the world. Go to your family reunion, everybody's a cuck. You go to work, everybody's a cuck and a simp. Every, so if, every, if everywhere you go, you, you're the only person talking yep. like this, you're thinking, it, it, yep. you know what? There was that scene in X-Men First Class, right? where Magneto is going to uh, try to yeet Sebastian Shaw, right? When he doesn't know that he's a mutant, right? So he goes on the boat to go try to, to, try to go ahead and end him. And then uh, the uh, White Queen, Emma Frost, stops him. And he's like, well, he realizes, like, holy shit, wait, what happened? And that's when Xavier comes, right? And then when Xavier rescues him, right? Because he's able to go into his head with telepathy, right? Right. And do you remember Magneto, what he says? He goes, I thought I was the only one. I thought I was all alone. Right. right, and Xavier was trying to tell him the whole movie, like, you're not all alone, Eric. Like, there's other people like us. But he truly believed he was all alone. And so if you notice, he, he was an isolationist because of that. You see what I'm saying? His yeah. experiences in World War II taught him to be a certain way, right? And then when he saw the world was a certain way, he said to himself, I am going to do things this way, right? Because I'm all alone, right? And when you meet people who, are, who have shared these same experiences, all of a sudden you're kind of like, well, well, damn. Right. So you start to reevaluate 
what is most important. His initial mission was just revenge, right? That's all he cared about. Revenge because this is the guy who went ahead and took the life of his mother, right? Uh, in the concentration camps. Fast forward, by the time he's joined, like, you know, at that point he had joined the X-Men and they're working toward a common goal, he still wasn't fully on board with Xavier because his goal was still vengeance, right? That being said, he started realizing, hey, by the time you get to the end of that movie, do you remember how Magneto was? He busts in to do what? To save the same white queen, Emma Frost, who was his enemy earlier in the movie. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tribalism, mutant mm -hmm. kind is now mm -hmm. my new ally. You, you put saying? your personal differences to the side. Even yep. if you're not seeing level eye with this person that you're not getting along with, you're more alike than the people that are trying to destroy you. Correct. So and that yeah. always stuck out with me. You know, that movie came out God knows how long ago, like 2011 maybe? Yeah, it's, it's a minute ago, yeah. Yeah, it was a good while ago. And I remember that always – it was that last scene when he burst through and she – remember she – and this is what's, what's very striking about that scene because she goes into her diamond form, right? Mm -hmm. He burst through. Drink, she goes into diamond form. And then what happens? She looks over, sees her old comrades standing right next to Magneto, right? And then she does what? She goes out of diamond form. She goes, Eric, wasn't it? And that's when he says, no, I prefer Magneto. And that's the end of the movie. It goes to show you, though, she was in defensive mode until she realizes her old allies are with this guy now, right? Because it was bigger than Sebastian Shaw and all that stuff. You see what I'm saying? And I always love that scene because it's like that's what the manosphere, you know, the so-called manosphere needs more of, which is like this. Let's weed out who are the infiltrators, who's trying to pervert this message, right? Because yeah, there's a lot of that. It is the manosphere. I mean, that's why you have people like Richard Cooper and Rolo Tomasi that are trying to find names that they can use in substitution of the manosphere. And they start coming out with derogatory terms for it. They turn right around and they call people like me or people like you uh, a grifter, mm -hmm. some kind of a money bags, something like that. Just some stupid shit. You know, mm -hmm. when I've got years and years and years and years of receipts, plain and simple. I actually just did a show with him. Uh, not, you know? uh, I was on a legal mindset. and he, Which one? And, uh, Rolo. So he yeah. knows Rolo personally. Yeah. So when we went to go dissect the whole Will Smith thing, uh, Rolo hopped on. Mm -hmm. and, and I've always told people. I'll do a show with anybody. Like I got asked sure. to do a show with like Brittany Venti. Like I tell people all the time, I'll do it with <laughs> literally anybody. <laughs> I don't care because <laughs> Brittany Venti. Brittany Venti, right? Oh, uh, uh, I know Chronic's enamored with her chest, but that's about. I it. know. Yeah, shout out to my man Chronic. He he right. texted me about that that night when I was on Rakeda's stream. And don't forget, Nick Rakeda, <clears throat> my brother, is literally right now doing a show. Uh, you are here with. A girl that I know is a chameleon, Sydney Watson. You see what I'm saying? Sydney Watson. Sydney Watson. Yep. And, and trad see, con, see, it's not a trad con. Trad con. Look, do you ever notice none of these trad cons got married young, right? Oh yeah. They all no rode the carousel. Kids, no marriage. No kids. No nothing. Carousel riders. Yep. Yep. And, yep. And, and, and the thing, Heron, I'm okay with you being a carousel rider. Just yeah. don't say that you're what. Oh, I'm a traditional woman. Don't a, don't no, don't try to don't come at me talking about you got 50 dicks inside of you at some point in time in your life talking about how you're a traditional conservative that you you got you know i just posted a, a meme in my community chat talking about well i'm saw i'm spiritual but you know not none of the god stuff yep you said you said yeah you know? is the black guy having the face yeah. and, and they're like this and then at the yeah. end his face is turned away yeah. <laughs> when, when hammer when we hear spiritual from a woman right it, have you noticed yeah. every girl that you've ever known who said that she is spiritual ha is tatted up well she's a liar yeah, you know she's got feelings. I I don't begrudge them their feelings. You can have all the feelings that you want, but they're just as fucked up and confused as anybody that you'll run into. Agreed. Spiritual nowadays just means that you you smoke one too many joints. Probably. You know. Yep. Kind of. Right. Kind of. Yep. So I don't give these people the time of day. If your your head is half shaved, if you got tats, if you got full sleeves, some tats. I, I don't mind some. So I, I get some, right? I got some, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm not fucking, I'm just not adorned in them. I think that there's, there's a pathology working there. It's not just, Oh, I'm a human canvas and I worship my own body, which I think maybe that's not the greatest thing either. Mm -hmm. People are just loaded with excesses and I think it really hurts them. It hurts them. Well, with women, uh, I believe it's much more troubling because of course sure. women are, 
are marveled at and they are uh, valued for primarily for beauty, right? Yeah, beauty and fertility. So if you show up with like Amber Rose doing slut walks and you tattoo your forehead and then you and I both know at some point she's going to find God, right? Oh, yeah. Of course. You, you, know, you know it's coming, right? Of course. Oh, I'm, I'm a born again virgin. I'm a born again Christian. Listen, that needs to stop. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, w- I was doing that show and uh, with, with Legal Mindset and also with uh, Good Logic Joe Nearman uh, last night. And the, the whole, you know, the, this whole, I'm going to find a good man in church or, you know, Drex, I don't know where you meet these women. You need to go to church. I said, anyone out there who knows, if someone says, hey, Hammer, where do I find the, the, you know, the worst of the worst thoughts? I would, this, this is how bad it is. True or false, Hammer, you have a better chance of meeting a good girl in a club over the church. I would say it's about even. Yep. You know, I'd, I'd, honest, honest, honest. That yep. is my honest opinion. I, I have met both kinds in both places. And it's more shocking to me, or it used to be anyways, to walk into a church and sit down in a pew and these bitches walk in with thigh high skirts on with no underwear. Yep. And that's their Sunday best. Yep. They're advertising their Sunday best. You knew what that was about. It's not one time or 10 times. It's more times than you can count. Well, you know what? I would even argue that there are more girls right now, you know, let's say pre, pre, uh, coof, pre coof, when everything was open, there would be, I would, I would argue more girls who dressed better at bars and clubs than going to church. Yeah, I guess I guess you know what I mean because on the, because on the bar the club but yeah I can see because it. you know think about it, there there are people who go to bar like I don't mean like you know if it's it's happy hour I'm just saying like as a, as a, someone says hey hammer it's a Saturday night and you know you know X amount of people are going to the bar for some drinks and for some conversation or they're going to B Dubs to watch the big fight right they dress I would argue they dress pretty decent you go to the church it's like what the fuck yeah it is outright degeneracy like yeah yeah. That's what I'm I was looking at. About. Well, who who are those bitches trying to to get in the oh, church? Yeah. That right? guy they, up front. They're trying to get the workhorse. That's right. They're paying the pastor. They're paying that pulpit fucking trader up there. That to, to find a simp that accepts everything to That's line right. up a husband for them, and then they're going <laughs> to do that man dirty just like they did everybody else in their life. Church is just another meat market for these people that call themselves Christians or conservatives. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I would even argue that, uh, you know, especially, and I I would take this with, uh, of all the religions, uh, Catholics, right? Anybody, and I do mean anybody, who ever went to a Catholic school will tell you what, Hammer? If you're talking to a guy, if you ask a guy, what are they going to tell you? The guys? What are they going to tell you about the girls? That they're easy. They're easy. That there's easy meat there. They said that of all the different girls, they said, and, and from from what I, it's not even close. No, because guess what? Not when even. all you're doing is the whole shame thing, they tend to like what more uh, degrading, more depraved sexual acts. You see what I'm saying? Of course. So, so when someone tries to do this whole like, oh, and that's the reason why I have such issues with what I call the trad cuck, the Stefan Molyneux types, right? And all of these fake red pill guys who talk about you know getting the bag, right? Hammer, you just gotta get your money up and then. Shut the fuck up. As soon as these guys start talking, I shut them up because I go, look, if you want to be a rich cuck, like what happened to Will Smith, right? You do need to have your life in balance. You see what I'm saying? You should be making money to be financially independent for yourself. You see what I'm saying? Sure. And then from there, you go like this, hammer. Now that I'm financially independent, I can choose. Do I want to go this path or that path? If you look at the current climate, you say to yourself, I don't like what I'm seeing. Because I don't like what I'm seeing, Hammer, I'm going to go like this way. Like, right, like, okay, your path, monk mode. Some guys go pump and dump. So, you know, guys go short-term relationship. Some guys do pay to play. Everyone goes their own path, right? Well, it don't even have to have a sexual connotation. Nope. You know, you like right behind me there, you can go to your model table. You can go to the artist table. Yep. You can go to the photo development table right here. Mm-hmm. You can go to the collecting table if you want to do that. You have options in life. Everything yep. in life is not coming down to kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy. It is not. And you not. know what? And that's the you know I do believe that that is one of the dangers of how much this uh, this modern Disney romance uh, fantasized version of love and relationships has it permeated the culture. Because let's <clears throat> let's face it, if if you were to ask a guy right, an old man to look back on his life and you ask him, 
what are the things that really meant something to you, right? It's usually his experiences that meant something. You see what I'm saying? And the experiences aren't sexual. You know what I'm saying? He, he scaled this mountain. He built this thing, right? He had these friends. Those are the things that he really thinks about, right? If he has children, he thinks about them going to their ball game or doing, you know, changing the first diaper and, you know, the, the look that his son or daughter gave him, uh, you know, as a baby. So the, all these things yeah. all kind of kind of cobble together because, you know, when you're a parent, that stuff really does affect you, right? Like, I, you know, to this day, I still remember the best hug I ever got was with from, from my daughter while I was stuck in the family court. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because this was the first time I was able to be with her without being supervised, right? So that's you're trying to like literally build a relationship, right? Like literally, like she basically doesn't even know who you are, right? Because you're stuck in, in purgatory. And at that point when she gave me that hug, I remember I pulled into my driveway and I heard my dad because he was holding her hand walking out in the front yard, right? So my parents are in town and I remember him saying, I heard him say, there's your dad. And I remember her face looks over, sees me pull up in, I put it in park, hop out, and she runs over and jumps up and gives me this huge hug. It is the the hug, right? The hug to end all hugs. Because sure. at this point, you know, like I said, we that was I think that was the first or second time I had ever been with her unsupervised. And like yeah. so already she was able to have that bonding attachment, right? And you know how it is, like they're, you know, they're little bodies, right? They have a tiny little body. And when you hold them, it just it feels different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once your kid is a certain age, it, it feels like a little adult. But like when they're really, really small, and you are a much larger man, and when you pick them up and hug them because they feel like a you know a rag doll, you pick them up and you're like, Ugh. there's you know? an experience there that that can't be duplicated by anybody or nope. anything. There's nope. nothing like the hug, the the show of affection that comes with a father or a decent mother. I must mm -hmm. say that a decent mother, you know, which there are few and far in between now. Yeah. You know, they'll say, Oh, I did all the work. I raised them two kids. Yeah, it's, but you, you failed them as a mother yep. because they don't yeah. have a father because you have denied them 50% of what would make them. Yep. And now they're lopsided as fuck going into the world. That's lopsided as fuck. Absolutely. And so, yeah, it, I know that feeling. It's kind of stunning because, you know, as we get into this this whole thing, this whole episode about chivalry and bringing men back together to fight the true enemy, right, and to make sure that we are good to each other. You know, when, when people go back, we're talking about this started back in France. 12th century is the origin of chivalry, right? And, you know, you're talking about a, a code, right, a code of ethics, right, knights, the nobles, right? that at all times had to adhere to. They had to behave in a particular manner. Because as you know, there are some certain people in this so-called manosphere space, Hammer, that are not chivalrous, right? If you false flag someone's channel, we know who that is, right? Fresh and fraud. That is some bitch made behavior. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And this needs to be called out. Saying that Nicki Minaj is a nine is bitch made behavior. That is, you are yeah. compromised. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no, no. Can I look at your videos in terms of the, are they entertaining? I can look at a KS video and say this is entertaining. You, you, you can saying? always get something from it. I mean, yeah, always. The worst of the fucking worst can drop red pills. Oh, absolutely. That's not the thing. I mean, like, like I said, I use the analogy that what these, these motherfuckers do is they, they bake a big blue pill cake and they sprinkle it with red pills. Yep. At the end of the day, you're eating that motherfucker up. You're eating it up. And it's hard when you get into this sphere, into this circle of awareness, the self-awareness, right? It's difficult to distinguish a blue pill cake with red pill sprinkles from actual red pills. It is. It's and hard to distinguish that. But you, you watch it long enough, you see these guys doing their thing and you see these other fellas over here doing this. They're telling you the same fucking thing all the way down the line until you get to the $89 hand soap. Yep. Yeah, yeah, get that pheromone soap, right? You know what I'm uh, saying? And that's that's a bad example, but... Oh, it, it's a great example because... Uh, do you know what it reminds me of? Uh, did you ever see the movie Unbreakable with Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson? Yes. Do you remember when he's Good talking story. to him and he says... Uh, you know, when Samuel Jackson says, like, oh, and now I need your credit card number. He goes, that last part was a joke. Remember? Because what did Bruce Willis' character say, right? Remember he says... I've met guys like you in my line of work all the time. You know, they, they come and give you a fantastic story, blah, blah, blah. And then at the very end, they ask for a credit card number, right? That was this whole spiel to Samuel Jackson. Yeah. And you're starting to see that in this space where, like you said, 
when you say, hey, if you want to support, here's ways to support. Right. This is the reason why I don't like people calling people grifters, right? Oh. Unjustly, unjustly. And here's why. Because someone monetizes themselves in certain ways, you and I both know, Hammer, time is money, right? If you, sure. Because remember, you, you talk about this. Your equipment has gotten better because of the revenue that has come in. You see what I'm saying? Agreed. So has mine. Yeah. Yeah, and, and people start doing this whole thing where, yeah, it better mics, better. Than, I just got a new mic from, uh, a new old mic from Nick. I got to set that up. Congrats. And the thing is, I look at a guy like Nick, right? Very successful on YouTube with the Super Chat. He's in the top 20, right? He's never forced anybody to do anything. You and I have both watched a, a KS show. And what happens? All right, guys, we, I need X amount of engagement. Otherwise, I'm going to shut yeah. the stream down. What the fuck? I, I can't. I can't what? stomach that shit. I'm going to stop the stream and he puts a little music on, right? Puts yeah. a little jingle on. I'm like, look, yeah. man, hammer. Look, You know what I, that reminds me of? That reminds that? me of the fucking change plate. It, it does. It does. It, it's a collection plate, right? Ah, uh, yeah, Y'all ain't going to get saved today. Hold on. Clink, 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 clink. Yep. And reminds I'm sitting there looking the like, plate. how many times have you brought this thing around, right? Is it, hammer, is this the third time you brought this, this, this collection plate around, right? And then I look at him, I'm like, you got a new Benz, right? You got a new Benz. I'm broke. I walked mm -hmm. to this church with the only change I got. I just gave you, and but you're bringing around a third time. But you're in a new Benz. The door on the goddamn church is broken, right? Door handles broken. Yeah, look, the the benches. Hey, I'm sitting in the in the bench, right? I got splinters in my ass crack hammer. Literally, I, I pulled. Look, bing, I pulled a splinter out of my asshole. That sounds painful, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're asking me for change again, right? Clink, 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 ching, 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 ching. I'm just going. Wait a minute. So the dude with the most resources, you know, shout out to that buck tooth fucking Joel Osteen. Do you remember that hammer? Oh, him and his Hurricane, wife, Hurricane yeah. came. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Oh yeah. Oh, y'all yeah. oh, gotta keep out of my church. Keep, keep out, keep out of my church, watch, man. This, this is a good church. We don't, we don't good, want y'all in this good church. We don't want y'all in this good church. I mean, we're you, all you God's paid people. For it. You motherfuckers paid for it. You paid for but, it. You know, you know. Yeah, uh, Osteen oh. and his wife Victoria, they actually were just in the news here. Uh, just a week or so ago, uh, that that bitch of his is hideous. She's hideous. Gets up there. Oh, I don't doubt it. She's preaching, talking about how God wants you to get me this Mercedes, yep. you know, or something of the like. That's paraphrasing, but it's just it's hideous behavior. They would be judged is, the it, harshest. Well, let me tell you why I think it's it's such hideous. It's so hideous, right? It's it's really simple. So, hammer the your your congregation pays for the shit, right? And then when they say, hey, why aren't we able to indulge in the way that you indulge? Because you seem to be doing this in a solo mission. You know what he says? Oh, the right off. No, no. This is the church's G5 aircraft, right? It's the church's. So okay, well, if it's the church's. Deals, right? I, yeah, I should be able to hop on, right? I should be able to hop on that plane because it is. The, I'm part of your congregation, right? right? I should be able to hop on that G5 aircraft because I want to go do mission work over here. And, hey, man, Joel, you know I'm struggling. But, hey, I still want to speak the preach the, the, the word, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> This is the churches, but it has only room for me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. See, these are charlatans. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And when you call this out, people want to call you the bad guy, right? Hammer, I'm sure you've been uh, called a doom pillar, right? Oh, he's doom. See, whenever you are not a prosperity pimp, right? People want to call you a doom pillar. I go, what up? Look, Hammer, you've, you've seen me. I'm sure you've heard. You have never once heard me look down, right? Sound sad, sound depressed. Because I never am. You see what I'm saying? I have no reason to be all like, oh, my God, it's all over. The world sucks. No, no, no. I'm telling you, you and I talked about it, right? The relationship between men and women, that's over. It's done. It's gone. Done. It's gone. It's, gone. it's gone. over. It's gone. Okay? Yeah. That does not make you a doom pillar. You see what I'm saying? No, it just makes you a realist. It makes you a realist. When did being able – and do you know who says that the most? It's dudes, right? Women aren't the ones saying that calling you a doom pillar, right? It's dudes calling you a doom pillar. It's men that are, are hanging. It's like when you rattle the change plate or you shame people for thinking that they deserve a little bit of their tiding to be kept back so that they can eat. You know, women do the same thing. I mean, they mm -hmm. prey on the, the fears and the insecurities of men. Mm -hmm. You know, men are raised with a boatload of fear and insecurities. They go through a system that has transformed itself over 60 years, especially the educational system. 85% of teachers are female. Females don't deal with little boys. They deal with little girls. That's why 70% of school age kids are medicated. Yep. It's fucking obscene. Well, it's Hammer, obscene. do you know what those boys are? Those boys are not boys. Do you know how, do you know how they, uh, the system views them? 
they view them as a defective paycheck. girls. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a, absolutely right. You're right. Wait a minute. Why are you not being able to just sit here and shut the fuck up and just listen to whatever I tell you and go like this, like yeah. a drone, like all the girls do? Little There's girls something are wrong much with you. More compliant. They're much more compliant. We need to give you these drugs to make you like her, right? Yeah. You need to be more like Julie and less like Jimmy, right? Yeah. And then, you know, that comes the drag queen story hour. They want to go ahead and swing the dick dingalings out there to your children and all that. And that's okay. I just had a, a conversation no, with my okay. daughter. No, that, that's their saying, say, right? That, that's all okay, right? By, by, by their accord. And I'm talking to my daughter about this. And I told her, uh, I put it in my, in my uh, live Q&A chat. I said, yeah, I literally just talked to my daughter about this. I said, if these people ever come at you at that school and talk about some gender shit or maps, you let me know. I have this exact same conversation with my son yep. bi-weekly. Yep. I say, have they said anything about feminism? And he's like, nope. I said, have they said anything about gender? He's like, nope. Have they said anything about tranny shows or bullshit like that? And he says, nope. I said, tell me what your curriculum is. Let's go over it because I just want to make sure. I've mm -hmm. been on his schooling like stink on shit almost since he got in school. Mm -hmm. I, I was aware of what was going on, but the way that this is intensified, nothing is safe. Nothing. Nothing. And it's unfortunate because here we are talking about chivalry and making sure that we hold each other accountable. And, you know, we, we have to do these things because, you know, the very translation of the French word of chivalry is like a knight. Right. And it always led uh, originally to the ideal characteristics of a knight. Right. It wasn't just holding. And, and I think this is where the manosphere can learn something. A knight meant in, in, in a literal term. Right. Hammer. It just meant that, hey, you you serve the Lord, right? As in your Lord, not Lord Jesus, the Lord, the, your Lord that you serve. You had the armor on, right? You had the lance. That made you, just like saying, I'm a Marine, right? You can say, I'm a Marine. I'm, I'm a Green Beret. You can say that because you've done the work, right? But that doesn't mean that you really hold those values because you can always go out and go far left and go do whatever you want, right? With the skills you've learned. So it became about having a code, right? And this was not written. Contrary to popular belief, this was not written, but there were certain ideal characteristics of the knight that were put out front, right? You had honor, you had generosity, and what else did you have? You had honesty, right? Well, loyalty, companionship. Loyalty, companionship, right? Because it was, it was a brotherhood, you see what I'm saying? Sure. And, you know, one of the things that, that bothers me, though, is that I look at what's going on now, right? And you don't see a lot of that anymore, right? You don't see a lot of that. And the chivalric code... You know, I, I think back to just the way that these people had to have interacted. It was also, unfortunately, Hammer, perverted by what? Romance, right? Well, the way that we, that's how it got to where we are. It was a natural kind of kind of like you said earlier about uh, you know, some of these infiltrators, right? Where they tried to twist the message, right? Over time. It's just like you said, it's a it's it's a blue pill cake with red pills sprinkled in, right? And it yes. starts to twist on itself, right? Because how did something that was amongst men, amongst knights, amongst the nobles, how did that shift into simping, right? How did well, that become well, simping? Shit, like militaristic and, and general code chivalry has been co-opted into romantic chivalry. Yep. You know, romantic chivalry, uh, Paul Elam has done a series on this uh, years ago. I'm sure that you could still find it at A Voice for Men or An Ear for Men. Ear for Men, yep. But it, it's years back about romantic chivalry and started what 900 years ago with a few french broads and that's what they did and they mm -hmm. just decided together that they should be treated this way yep and then when you when your advertisers even medieval advertisers could take a fucking clue mm -hmm. you know i mean de beers is responsible for the modern architecture of how a wedding is supposed to go with a, yep. with a big fat diamond ring mm -hmm. You know, because they couldn't sell diamonds. So now we're going to put this useless. rock here. Yeah, they're useless. Yep. They couldn't sell diamonds, but they convinced women that they were incredible and it was a sign of love. And if your man's not giving you a diamond, he doesn't love you as much as the man that's going to give you a diamond. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to buy off people that have no soul. Absolutely. It's not hard. Now, I've always believed this, though, Hammer. The, you know, when you talk about a soulless creature, right? They aren't bad because they are what they are. What's really bad is when a person with a soul chooses to be led by someone who is soulless. You see what I, I'm saying? I don't disagree with you. Because you know, that, that is the worst to me. Like, 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 you're saying, I, if someone asks you, hey, Hammer, who do you think deserves the, the, the responsibility? A kid was eaten by a shark, right? 
and someone goes, oh my God, this is a horrible tragedy. We have to definitely go ahead and take a harpoon and go to the shark, right? It's like right. a smart person looks at it and goes like this, hold up. The shark is what it is. The shark is there naturally because why? Because you have to have an apex predator in that ecosystem well, so that it's, everything- it's their environment. It's where so they're For that environment, right? And then what is the obvious question? How did that kid get in the water? Exactly. Oh, well, I just took my kid to the, the, the park. Yeah. Even though I ignored the sign that says yeah. sharks and I just threw my kid in the water and I went yep. to go sit on my phone like this, yep. right? I went yep. to do. I went to go do duck lips, right, for the gram. Kids did, and you know, you heard about that IG model, right? Who was at that party in London or whatever it was? Uh, it was maybe it was a not. Pool. Oh, uh, yeah. So she, it was a pool party, or oh, like the a, kid like that drowned. Yeah, they, they drowned. You heard about yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. The and kid I'm like, drowned. Yeah. Are, are you serious? Like, yeah, was a kid was like three years old. Unfucking believable. It's the same thing. No one, no one's doing nothing, right? Like, like every everybody has that dog in the in the uh, the fire uh, the firehouse thing, right? Everything's fine. Everybody just looks around going like this. Oh, everything's fine here. This is not okay. It's not okay to have children left unattended while you're doing this. But what does it go back to? It, it's, it's giving women the absolution of no accountability and no agency for their actions and for their choices and for their decisions. And like you said, it's not the shark. It's the people that enable them to be that way. Correct. Whether we like it or not. This is a civilization of enablers, mostly male enablers. Yep. You see, and I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the general population. I'm talking about the people that allow this shit to be written into law. Yep. You have Talks law governing biology, and they know that they can make money, power, and status. They know that they can divide and conquer. They do it in every arena. And when I say they, I mean the people that hold all the fucking keys to all the doors and all the locks. Mm hmm. That's just what they do. But people are waking up. Uh, not fast enough, unfortunately. No. It'll but, be 100 fucking years <laughs> before, but, but you know, before you know, we get there. The sad thing is we, we, can, we can only speed up the, the amount of people that we can reach. Because like, you know, I've had people who have asked me, well, Drex, Drex, why do you talk about this, that, and the other? And this actually this happened to Coach Greg Adams where someone said, well, why do you make videos and you always go back to X, Y, and Z? He said, you got to remember. Oh, that's an easy answer. It's an easy answer because at some point, this is someone's first time hearing it, right? Yeah. I mean, Hammer, imagine if and this is this is one of the things I think uh, that like with TFM is that TFM got to a point where he said, look, I don't need to talk about simps and cucks and all this stuff anymore. I'm talking about X, Y and Z now. Right. Right. Even though he's been right. like, off every platform. But right. I was like, but TFM, you got to remember this. this somewhere out there. There's a kid. Right. Hammer, it could be your son. What if you weren't around? Right. He'd be lost. You see what I'm saying? Your son would be lost without you. And yeah, what if this, this is the first time he's ever heard it, right? He's like, what is a simp? What is a, he might not know because he's conditioned to be a simp, right? And he's like, wait a minute, huh? And he hears TFM. He hears, he hears a guy named Hammerhand, right? In an alternate universe, you're not his dad. It's just a guy named Hammerhand in a truck making videos. He hears a guy named Drex. He hears this guy, that guy. He hears yeah. Undead Chronic. That may be the very first time he's ever seen Reddit. You see what I'm saying? Wait, what? Huh? Am I the asshole? Wait, what? What are these stories? No, this can't be true. The reason why he initially rejects it is why, Hammer. Because well, that's your, not your reality's what, not grounded there. It, it's not there, right? You you've right. been conditioned to be one way, and you say to yourself, "No, these guys are crazy. This yeah. is Alex Jones." And then what happens? Over time, what what do you do? How do men think? They go like this. Okay, I'm gonna change my thinking. Just I'm gonna tweak. I'll go. Like that, like like a guitar string where you tune a guitar, right? I'm going to tweak something just a little bit. You know what I'm going to say, Hammer? I'm going to do this. I'm going to take what he says as the truth and just I'm going to now apply it to my life and see if my hypotheses or his hypotheses, right, is correct. So then he says, okay, feminism, blah, blah, blah. Let me see if this hammer hand guy, because I think this guy's a fraud. And then he goes in his real life, right? And what happens? Holy shit. All of my friends are on on drugs, right? They're all on 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 the uh, the the Ritalin, the Adderall. And then he goes like this: I'm on Adderall. Wait yeah, a minute, you, you got that tipping point there too, where they're totally not invested in the idea of what you're saying because it's not affecting them personally. The second that they it, they start to suffer personal consequences is when the ears start to open, yep. and it's like that teeter totter. Then they just go over the other side. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, ironically enough, that's why I think it's so important to talk about relationships in this space. Because I agree. That's why. That's usually when people. Let's be honest. 
the overwhelming majority, I'm saying, I guess I don't think there's any like exact statistic. I'm going to guess no less than 80%, which is four out of five guys, came to this space after something that involved some form of a breakup, right? Girlfriend I, I left them, argue with you. cheated on them. They went through a divorce. They went through the family. Something happened in a relation, in a, in a, a heterosexual relationship, right, that fractured or broke apart. And then they were looking for answers like, wait a minute, because here's the, here's the catch, Hammer. I did everything I was told to do, right? Yeah. Hey, I, I got the house. I got the. I did everything like a good boy, like I was supposed to. How did I go wrong? And then I here's the thing, Hammer. I did it again, and I still went wrong. What I is said, it that I'm getting wrong? Right? Like, how am I getting hosed? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I said the other day on, on the video, if uh, Superman and Indiana Jones can't keep a girl, neither can you. Nope. You know, it's not. Bezos it's not about, not about that anymore. Nope. You know, people with billions and billions and billions of dollars are being jilted. You know, they're being divorced. Mm -hmm. Two of the highest profile bitches that you will ever see, Gates and Scott, got divorced, you know, within a year of one another. Yep. And then they went on to start giving away billions to reinforce this structure. Absolutely. And that's all this is about. It has nothing to do like the yeah. virtue signal is really what? It's to go like this. Let me tell let me let me show my overlords that I'm still an ally. You see what I'm saying? That's all this is about. And you know, as as we go through this. Right. And, you know, people forget that knights were initially goons for hire. Right. They were goons for hire because they, they fought for and were loyal to their lord. And as we start going through history, right, from 12th century, mid 12th into the, the 14th century with, you know, the Crusades. Right. Then it became much more linked to the church. And you have to always have what, Hammer? An ideology governing the actions of the populace. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, agreed. You, you, always. Right. Like, like, there, there's always some, something because because here's the thing. As we get closer and closer to a fully godless world, right? A godless um, state controlled world. And it will get there because the reason why, you know, I always tell people this I said, the reason why the deep state will win is the simplest reason ever. It's not because of their technology or their resources. There's one simple reason it's because the common person wants them to win. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that. Think the, about the, it. They, 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 the they're not going to do man, The common man or the common woman looks at themselves as an individual it's it, no doubt yep. they don't look at themselves as part of a community or part of a family or part of an extended family they see themselves an, as an individual and as an individual they have everything to lose including their life if they yep. stand up absolutely yeah why why should so, i stand up so so yeah. i'm just not gonna do anything they're i know afraid. they're, 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 they're gonna to, stand up and nobody's gonna go with them and then they're fucking grease so when everybody has the same thought, what happens, Hammer? Well, I guess we're all, mm, mm, yes, Massa. Everybody is complicit, right? Yep. So th that means that you want them to win. And when people say, no, no, I don't, Drex. No, I don't want this. I don't want drag queen story hour in school. Yes, you do. Because if yes, you didn't you want it, you would have done something. But you did. Did. You, did you say something about it? Did you do something yeah, well, about no, it? I, I, did you I, call I just... the news station and tell them that those motherfuckers are sick, disgusting perverts, and they're fucking your kids up? Nope. They do nothing. You, you're right. worried about the, the mental illness, the feelings of people that exhibit mental illness 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Absolutely. Over the development of the next generation of the human being. Mm -hmm. That's what you're worried about. But your higher ups aren't worried about that. They know what they're doing. Absolutely. Yeah, they're have, not dumb. Can't have hundreds of millions of men walking all over this planet strong jacked you can't right. have that because if you have that they will eventually take from you what you have taken from them absolutely so and you have to hamstring them look at all the wars that what what who is the chief beneficiary of the wars that we commit out here and i mean we oh yeah, it's we always going to be it's always going to be your government it's always going to be your power brokers always who loses the most it's the male population look at the male population of korea they're yep. girls the male population of japan they're girls the male population of China, compliant, whipped, almost girls. Anywhere in the West that you go, same yep. fucking story. Absolutely. Same story. Absolutely. Until and, you need them to go out there and be body blockers for bullets, yep. that's the way that you're going to keep them. Absolutely. And you know what, though? It, and good. I always say good because, you see, when I look at uh, these thugs with badges, when I look at these thugs that sit around with and, and hold this shield, U.S. of A., and listen, my brother's in the service. I got people all over in the service. You know what they're telling me, Hammer? Oh, it I is 100% cucked. It's 100% it cucked. 100% fucked. It, it's yeah. fucking compromised, like, like oh, to yeah. the extreme. Like, Big time. 
uh, all they teach is grape classes, how the man is always wrong, right? Yep. Uh, gender fluidity and all this. Like he said, he goes, dude, it's 100% cucked. Like, there, there's no hope. I don't know if you know this, Hammer. They don't even get paid on time. Oh, no, I, I know. They get extorted, they man. Hardly ever have. Ever. They hardly ever have. It's like, well, why is this okay? Because, because here's the thing. That goes to show you it, they're doing it because they can. You see what I'm saying? Because sure. they can. But they can't All do people have to do is just say no. Of people. Yep. You know, people, people as a group have to make up their minds that they're going to stand on this hill, that they're going to die on this fucking hill. I've already made up my mind. Yep. This is the hill that I'm going to die on. Yep. So that's just that. But but 99% of people out there are completely fucking bitch made. They ain't going to do shit. No, like, you know, that's why they always say stuff like, oh, no, I'll tell you what, Drex, they ain't going to try to come for my guns. <laughs> yeah, they're going to take your guns too. Stop. Stop pretending that you're going to do something. They you're not going to go John right Rambo. Fucking front door. Yeah, that's right. And they're going to take door. the shit and you're going to go, but why you got to take them? This. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't going to You ain't going to you ain't going to take all the guns. Is loaded, they're ready for bear. And they're yep. going to just be like, okay. Okay, okay. You're just going to hand it to him, man. You know? Hammer, the true alpha is the left. I agree. They are the true alpha because they have agree. not lost. They are 100 and 0. I don't disagree with that. I haven't seen, look, here's the thing. I haven't seen them have one thing that they, they tried to push Hammer in schools, in the military. You see that, was it Rachel Levine? Whatever that creature is, it looks like yeah, Benjamin that Franklin. Crazy motherfucker. They are winning every with Millie. Yeah. Every time, show me a loss. Here's the thing. This is how sorry the right is, Hammer. What the right views as a win, as a W, is so irrelevant, right? Oh, we, we mean right better. Right. We mean. I said, dude, you guys are all flip sides of the same coin. You all push for male disposability. You're all simps. You're all cucks. You're fucking useless. Hammer, this needs to be the new talking point. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This whole partisan garbage, the left, the, all I hear about all day, you know what I'm talking about. The left, the left, the left, the, that's all you hear. The left, the left. I said, look, yeah, I if, if it was all about left, right, if they're the bad guys, explain to me how if I go into a right-wing state, the family court looks exactly the same as a left-wing state. Let that sink in. How? Sure. And they don't have an answer, do they? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, they uh, Soapy will. Long case. Where did that happen at, Hammer? Texas. The dad who has to pay for his son's gender reassignment surgery, cucked by the court. What state was that in, Hammer? Texas. They, uh, didn't they? Uh, they stayed that though, didn't they? Ooh, uh, I was. We, I, I'm pretty somebody sure. Somebody in the chat knows that, that she can't make a decision. I think that the final judgment on that was that she couldn't make any moves without his authorization. Oh, well, they'll, they'll find a way to cuck him. In some oh, they will. Fashion. They, they will. They will. They will. They will. They'll they will. say he's. Of course uh, they will. They'll say masculinity he's an abuser. is toxic. Yeah, he's yeah, an abuser he's an or abuser. something. Um, I mean, why do you think your medical agencies, APA and the rest of them have come out and actually classified, pathologized masculinity? It's to take the guns. Sure. That's, that's how they're going to take the guns. Sure. It's, take, yep. it's to take everything. Take everything. Yep. If you and... can classify everybody, if you can take all of the existing mental illness, declassify it, destigmatize it, and then put that shit on the people that have the best chance of fucking you over and taking your shit from you, yep. you already won. But do you know what, though? This is the reason why I am so, so hard against cops and military. A lot of people, because see, right-leaning people who are less than useless on this earth, this is why, Hammer, they simp for the very people that are going to go like this and take your shit, right? Yes, sir. Who, who how, simps how, for the cops how, how the hardest? Fucking, how many no-knocks have you seen that has resulted in a death? Yep. You know? Yep. How Arizona's a red national... state. You saw what happened. Yeah, oh, yeah. How many yeah, you saw what happened. deployed in the fucking street out here that just stood there and watched your town burn? How many yep. cops stood stood by and watched everything burn to the fucking ground? That's right. Ground? Well, you everything. know where I live. Hammer, I'm right here in Minnesota. I'm, I was at the heart oh, of it. You ground fucking zero. Ground zero. You yeah, know? I got all kinds of pictures. I know what it looks like. 44 motherfuckers lost their lives that summer. 44. Yep. And all of this BLM shit, and we're fighting for this, and we're fighting. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. That's a front to launder money. Yep. That's all that is. Three and you saw what, what the German shepherds do. do. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sitting yeah. in mansions. They jump and, right and they're lesbians. Hey, here's the thing, Hammer. It was so bad. Straight, man, that they're, they're a bomb destroy the nuclear family. family. They literally destroy said on the, the website, family. they said our goal is to Billion. totally destroy the nuclear family, to kill it, and yep. to install a, a village mentality mm -hmm. of trannies and lesbians. That's, That's literally right. what it said. That's right. They only took it down because they started taking heat. Fuck them motherfuckers, man. 
Fuck them. Fuck them. Hammer. Hammer. Fuck them all. Good job. Good job to them. See, I respect. No, my I agree. Enemies. I agree with you. 100%. Because, and I go like this. And, and Hammer, you know me, because I did. I actually did a stream on that when I was. Uh, it was on Out of the Darkness. The dude who turned out to be a bitch made beta cook sent mangina. Right. Uh oh. And yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he tried to. He flipped and sent and sent for single moms and German oh. shepherds. Yeah, oh. bitch made Q. He's somewhere out there getting pegged, probably. Uh oh. And <laughs> Hammer, Sounds I did that stream. Oh, 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 Hammer. It was so bad. He lost subscribers as the stream was going on, and then he pulled down the video, the marriage stream. Man, when no you bullshit. poke holes in somebody, yep. when, when they're out there, yada, 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 and then somebody that's informed gets in front of them and destroys them, you know, our boy Chronic's pretty good at that. Yep. You know? He's exposed a lot of, a lot of cucks. Cucks a in denial. Of, Sims, a lot of cucks. Undercovers. That, and that's, that's the thing. When I see this happening, all of these things started, started swelling up in me. And, and that's that's how I got to this this show tonight because I was like we hammer I had a live chat uh, I think that was what, what day is it today Friday this was must have been Wednesday night right this shit went on for over ten hours hammer a ten hour live chat and we started talking about some things that don't get talked about look at the kids out here right now right the boys hammer oh it breaks my heart they grow up they don't even see a masculine presence. No, I, I know. And that's, the animes that's are an beta accident. simps. Yeah, the the movies are beta simps. The commercials, the music, Lil Nas <laughs> X. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dudes out here Yo. wearing verses. Like he's giving Yo. the the he's giving Satan a lap dance. <laughs> but he got bars though. He got bars though, fam. Yeah, uh, Boondocks <laughs> predicted this shit 15 years ago. Oh, you ain't fucking kidding, my God. And, 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 my and my so, brother introduced me to that, and I was like, Oh, did he? No. Oh yeah, my, my brother loves that show. I love it. I love a lot it. of these yeah, dudes have been buck broken. Uh, all these these people in industry in Hollywood have been buck broken. They're out here yeah. going through the rituals. Oh, and yeah. when I when I call this shit out, people, Drex is crazy. I don't know where he's getting this from. I told these people about magisterial privilege in the Catholic Church. If you know what magisterial privilege is with the Pope, they look at me like I'm crazy. Hammer everything I say, just like Alex Jones. He's crazy. He's crazy. That's all they say. He's that, crazy. How you think that new Pope's gonna handle it? Hey, uh, hold on. Let me ask you this, Hammer. Sir, isn't this the same religious denomination that was all about we we stick to the the new New Testament of the Bible? Now they're letting anybody in, right? Letting anything yep. go. Yep, they're all part of the same. They're all system. part of it, bro. All, all of them are part of it. And when people start to wake up and they realize that this is what it really is, I I don't condone it, but I understand why they put a gun in their mouth. You know, because yep. they, they cannot find a way to reconcile daily life with what they know now. Oh, it's easy for there's me. There's just no turning it off. It's easy for me. When I was it's growing easy. up, easy. I, I didn't. I, I told these guys, man, I was on the show with uh, Joe Nearman. I said, I was born without the cuck gene, right? Because when I was a kid, I used to get into a lot of trouble, right? From the from the establishments, right? The the institutions, the, the coaches that I had problems with, the schools I had problems. Everywhere I went, hammer hand, I was a fucking problem, right? So they said, but you and I both know how this works. Oh, yeah. As you get older, you start reflecting, you start looking back on your life, right? Like, why was I always in trouble? What, what is it that w was really the issue? You know what it was, Hammer? I was a fucking threat, right? I told my teammates, don't be out here doing the whole drinking drugs and, and thoughts, right? Go to school. Uh, no, Drex, no, how dare you be saying that? No, you're, you're dangerous. See, see, you, you don't get along with your teammates. No, no, no. They didn't want me to educate them. They didn't want me to inspire them. Hammer, you know in the sports world, especially with these young black athletes, they want to keep them dumb, get them to just use their bodies up to get wins, right, to, to get asses in the seat, which gets them money, right? Sure. And then push these fucking black asses out like it is nothing, right? The black, sure. A lot of the black kids, they don't get their degrees. They don't get their skills. They don't get nothing the other than some fun years in college. Anyways. The, yep. the, the degrees, 90% of those degrees that they hand out are useless. absolutely useless. Useless. I mean, just go look up any 100 of the folks that were playing five years ago and see where they're at. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all you got to do. I mean, we, we've seen that story repeated all throughout history. It, it has. And, and it's so, sad. And, and when, when you have teammates that are basically mad at you for, for, you know, like they look at you as a weirdo. And I said, look, dude, I go, I care about you enough to say these coaches are pimps they're playing us no nah, man you know what i'm saying it is what it is man i'm just gonna go out here and smoke this dro fuck these thoughts <laughs> do blah 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 hey, hey hey hammer i'm going to the league 
No, you're yeah. not. No, you're not. You're not going to the league. Every guy believes they are. And and here we are, cowardice, Hammer, in the old days, right? Do you know that cowardice in battle would strip you of your knighthood back in the day? It, it could get you executed. And executed. Yeah, you were stripped because you were a fucking fraud. You weren't yeah. what you said you were. And in this manosphere space, right, there needs to be gatekeeping and cancel culture right here. Because a lot of these people aren't who they say they are. They're bitch made. They're frauds, right? And, you know, it talks about, you know, duty was to, you know, your Lord, not the Lord, your Lord, first and foremost. And the modern day conservatives represent this, right? They're turncoats. And, you know, you were expected to be, quote unquote, good Christians. And I think that term is ridiculous because, as we all know, people aren't good anything anymore. People are uh, basically good for themselves, right? What is good for me? It's like you said earlier, the individualistic mentality, right? And not understand that we're all interconnected, right? If if guys out here, like like prime example, Hammer, what if this this would be a crazy pipe dream? What if the cops said no? Let that sink in. Well, cops, so so when, when 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 the bureaucracy says go after people for not wearing a mask and blah blah, and the cops are like this, no. You no. have se- you have seen that in instances all over the world for the last maybe ten years. You have seen as a collective. It. See, 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 the thing is, Hammer. As a collective, collective, we've we've never seen it. We've we've never seen it though, right? But what what would happen, Hammer? If let's just look, even even a even a 40-60 split in their favor, right? What if forty percent of cops said no, right? No, I'm not arresting it, people. It, it who, would be Titanic. It, game over, right? Because yeah. that's too many. Because you can't get rid of them, right? What if the military? Forty percent of the military said, "I'm not going to go fight any wars for you." Well, we're going to court martial you and throw you in prison. Then throw me in prison. Okay. Okay. Well, you going so, so where are you going to get new soldiers? Squad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I will die on my goddamn I will my die life. on I'll that. die on my fucking feet as a respectable, decent human yep. being before I'm not I will on my knees. acquiesce to that bullshit. Yep. Won't do it. Yep. Won't I will not fight for a country that hates me. And, you know, uh, one of the things that, that I was always thinking about, Hammer, that, that really bothers me, man, is... Um, when it comes to this constant, and I do mean fucking constant, this ethnic back and forth pisses me off to no end. Well, it, it puts butts in seats, it puts eyes on fucking podcasts, and it puts money in a lot of a lot of money in pockets. Race hustling is never going to go away. Yep, the race hustlers, It'll we all know away. them. The Al Sharptons of the world. Now, here's the thing. This is what bothers you about this. A lot of people don't even have never even heard of Kohlberg's six stages of moral development, right? Yes, Kohlberg, sir. six stages. Do you know how I know a lot of these people who claim to be MGTOW are fake? Tell me. They are feminine. They have never evolved beyond the third stage. You know what the third stage of moral development is? I haven't read the book. Care-based morality. Well, you have to have ethics, morals, values, and principles. Do you know what's the top? Do you know what's, do you know what's uh, number six? No. Justice-based morality. Do you know what's the difference between care based and justice based? Yeah, You'll go like this. The book's going to say, but I know what I would say. Watch this, Hammer. This is the rule. God damn it, Hammer. This is what we're going to do. Oh, but that's my cousin. I, we we got to be easy on them. Oh, that, that's, that person is this. That, you, you see how the, the rules keep getting shifted? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. With justice based morality, the rule is just that. That's you why women don't serve time. You just watched it happen today. You did, yep. Did you hear did you hear the shit that went down about the dossier? Oh, ooh, wait, what was this? They confirmed that the dossier was real, that it was used to spy on a member of the Trump campaign, that it was 100% manufactured and they fined Hillary Clinton 8,000 bucks. 8,000 8, 8, $8, dollars, 8 grand oh, wow. for turning the country on its fucking ear. 8 Eight grand for completely corrupting everything that they said that they valued, mm-hmm. and then a hundred and three thousand or a hundred and five thousand dollars to the DNC for endorsing it. Yep. Imagine that, right? right. And and that's the thing, hammer. Eight thousand bucks. Hammer, you see this all the time. Oh, th- if a man punches a pregnant woman, that's murder. Okay, I, I can get behind that. If a woman wants to abort, my body, my choice. Move the goalposts. See. Care based. You oh, keep uh, moving the goalposts, right? I just watched one happen here a couple of couple of days ago, where the woman was adamantly suggesting. Well, no, no. Let me take that back. I'm gonna walk that back. She wasn't suggesting. She's saying she 100 supports uh, 
termination of kids right up until their crowning. Oh, they got new law coming now that you can even after the baby's born, you can oh, still yeah. push the delete button. I, uh, well, my, my views on all that changed dramatically because, like I said, the one of the only indoctrination points that may have permeated me when I was younger was the whole uh, abortion. I was Because kind of, you remember, you're told my body, my choice. Like, As a man, you're not allowed to say anything about a woman's body. Remember, they, they teach you that. that then then and, I don't fuck with them. Yeah, yeah, and eventually I was like, wait a minute. And I started thinking about like I was like, like because it became more about justice. I said, wait a minute. If that is the case, something else also has to be the case. Because let's face it, the guy can never duck his responsibility, right? A guy can't say, well, I'm going to financially abort. No, 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 no. You're, you're required to. Wait a minute now. You see That's what right. I'm saying? I said, wait a minute. You and when I saw all, all of that stuff has been taken from the matriarchs uh, throughout history over the last 100 years. Uh, they've been working on it a long time, but mm -hmm. hardcore over the last 100 years. And it's been completely removed from them and shifted to females where you have absolutely no control over anything that happens in your life. If I have no control of that type of decision, that type of responsibility, if I can't say yay, I can't say nay, I can't do anything. If, if I'm engaging with them in any way sexually, then I just prefer not to engage with them. Yep. I, I will not ever sleep with another woman ever. Yep. You know, there, there'll be some people that'll say, well, of course you won't, motherfucker. You know, look at you. But it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people in very, very high places that make fucking millions that are saying the same thing. Yeah, uh, I, you remember that video, uh, I believe it was TFM made or someone made that said uh, Superman went MGTOW, right? When Henry Cavill was talking about, well, hell, what the hell you want me he, to do? He did. Yeah, he was like, what do you want me to do? Like, I mean, hell, if, if everything I do is, is, is going to be a Me Too allegation and you know, one of the things that, that I don't think gets talked about enough in this space is the difference between complaining and whining, right? Is, you know, because, you know, you always hear people say, like, oh, those guys, those those so-called red pickup, they're always whining. I go, look, there's people need to understand the difference, right? So if you're doing everything right, right, and you're getting a raw deal, right, you feel like you're being treated unfairly, right? Like, So here's a prime example. You're parenting properly. You're doing it the right way, right? And then CPS shows up out of nowhere, right? Or the maps show up, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to indoctrinate or they want to get you out of the picture. See, mm -hmm. that's a complaint. You see what I'm saying? Because you're like, hey, someone's intruding on my life, right? You're doing this, doing it right, straight and narrow, and then now someone is intruding. That's a complaint, right? Hey, mm -hmm. I'm taking care of my kid and the courts are trying to do this. Hey, I'm trying to go to work and something is happening. Hey, BLM is blocking my access for me to make money for myself to live. When you start saying these kinds of things, right, that is a complaint. Someone goes, what is whining? I'll tell you what whining is. Whining is when you have total control over something, but you pass the buck and the responsibility onto someone else. So this is this is what whining is. It's the system, TFM. It's the system, Hammerhand, Undead Chronic. The system's against me. I got nine kids by different baby mamas, but, man, uh, these laws is messed up. No, 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 that's whining. Because, see, you have total control, and you're now trying to say, no, it ain't me. It ain't nothing I'm doing. The, yeah. No, no, you're actively doing something to put yourself in the same scenario over and over and over. Now you're whining. You see what I'm saying? Like it's like when women say men ain't shit, but they got five baby daddies, right? But well, she's trying the common to denominator. Absolve themselves of of the consequences of their actions. Yep. And it's it's been made so easy now to blame shift that yep. everybody's doing it. Yeah. Well, look, dudes do it too. You can't oh, tell I me know. you've been married three no, times. You, how did you get married and divorced three times? And they took you for half each time, but mm. you say women ain't shit. No, no, no. You are the common denominator, right? You got on the knee three different times with three different women. You you didn't vet them, right? You didn't vet. You didn't you didn't say to yourself, hey, why don't I have a relationship without having a legal document with that the that the state can go ahead and hop in and just do whatever the hell they want on, right? They don't do that. They don't want to do it. So what do they do? They want to push that, like you said. And I believe, Hammer, and I want your take on this, we have a responsibility to our fellow man to do what? To educate them, right? We have to go ahead and say, okay, this is what's happening. That, that's why, like I said, we always talk about relationships first because you and I both know most of the, the, the reasons why you're going to get ruined as a man in this world, let's look at Deshaun Watson, right? It's going to be something a woman says. Let's, let's just be honest. Because remember, men aren't really going – I mean, how many times have you heard a man go to the court saying – Hammer hand touched my thigh, right? I was in the truck with him, and he rubbed up. A, it, it doesn't even make sense. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to educate them. We have to empower these men, right? 
And then what else do we have to do? It's about transparency. You see what I'm saying? You got some we hitters need in this that chat. Boy. What's that? I said, you got some hitters in this chat, man. Yellow oh, Flash was in here earlier. Hey, my man Flash. Chronic Success Pool Endeavors. You got a couple of haters. One fast deck. It's all good. Oh, yeah, baby. Well, the thing is, blame and shame, I believe, has to be reinstituted, right? We have to, because this goes back to what you said earlier, right? Gatekeeping. And I've talked to Yellow Flash at length about this, along with Tug and Raging Golden Eagle. There has to be blame and shame. Because I don't know if you heard about this. My man Yellow Flash did a video about the new ethics division at Square. Hammerhand. Yeah, I saw it. Enix you saw that at bullshit? Square, at, at Square Enix? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, you saw that bullshit. I saw it. Oh, yeah. no. We're going yeah, yeah, we to. This is Tifa's tits, right? Let's go like this. Yep. Let's suck you know, them titties you know, in. Tell you, every time they de-breast one of these luscious bitches, I'm going to go buy me an anime poster. Yep. Oh, don't forget the mods. Have you seen what the mods are doing? No. They go, they go over the top, right? That you you, you de-boob Tifa, these mods go in. Lady D has a huge juicy <laughs> booty and stuff. Oh, it got out of control, man. Because, man, because Hammer, man. that's the only option you have. Because think about it. From what Yellow Flash said, they were able to prove that this these ethics division, they're not waiting till the game is finished, right? And saying, Oh no, God, did you see they're there you from the, the ground leaks, right? up. Yep. You saw the Disney leaks. I mean, yep. it, the Disney leaks. Half. It's oh, gonna be half. It, it'll be more than that. They're yeah, 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 yeah. They're saying they're half. Saying they mean half. all. It's, it's gonna, gonna be all be every fucking thing. Yep. You gotta Everything's gonna every, be rainbow. Why would you go down this path? Right, people are saying Disney's dumb as fuck. They're blah blah blah. No, no. This ain't a money game for them. It has nothing to do with money. They're not in this to make billions. They're in this for the long fucking game. They're playing the long game. It's going to take fifteen years for this stuff to get bedded in. Yep. And you have to resist it with everything that you are. Yep. You know. But we know the they won't. These these slow, slow motherfuckers are coming up nowadays. Today, they accept anything. I'll watch your reactions on YouTube for like Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett. Yeah. These are the most mediocre, ridiculous, stupid ass series. They have no, nothing digestible about them. Nothing. And if, if they, they take this kibble and they shovel it in front of these fucking fools because they can't wait to get more of the same kibble. Yep. You know, and that's the majority of the people that are, are contributing to this shit. Now. Oh, absolutely. Well, well, Hammer, this thing, people forget. And I'm sure you've, you've thought about this. And I'm probably sure you've said this at some point. Don't you guys miss George Lucas yet? You see what I'm saying? Because he kind of represents. Know, man. I, I always love George. He, here's the thing. Even, even when George made some, some suspect decisions, right? I was like this. Here's the thing, Hammer. I'll, I'll tell you something about George Lucas that a lot of people don't even fucking know because they, you know, they're too stupid to investigate. When they blame George Lucas for the prequels, right? I love the prequels personally, and the people, you know, hell, I like the it was, prequels. I like them. People were always because that's what got me into Star Wars, right? Because I was born in '82, so the, the uh, you know Return of the Jedi came out in '83. By the time I was able to watch Star Wars, I was already watching Terminator Two and shit. You see what I'm saying? Because of the age gap. Yeah, right. By the time I got to the prequels, though, this is what what struck me. I always wanted to know how did this come to be that George was forced to direct. The, the the prequel trilogy, right? Because he wanted Spielberg to do episode six. So I went back, and then in Empire of Dreams, it comes out. They uh, 20th Century Fox yeah, fired Alan Ladd, Alan Ladd Jr. Alan Ladd Jr. Yeah, Alan Ladd Jr. stuck up for George Lucas, and when the, he wanted to keep that, the, you know, the opening crawl, what happened? They said job. it cost him his job. And it, you know what George Lucas did? Rather than say, "Oh, that's okay," what did he do? Hammer. He did some so man he, shit. Yeah, he, he said, "Fuck that." Those committees and he it, left it was also the directors about guild. The credits in the wrong spot. That's right. Yep. Right. Instead yep. of running at the beginning of the show, he didn't yep. want that. He wanted. He didn't want the that end of the show, and he he revolutionized the industry. Right? He did. Oh, don't forget about the merchandise, right? So the, see, this oh, is all. Oh. It's okay. Here's the thing: if you think about the hammer, George is essentially MGTOW. He went like this in terms of like the, the way the industry is run, right? He went like this. I can't go that far. No, no, no. But, but here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. For, from the perspective of the industry, right? So look, the industry wants that control, right? Sure. And do you remember what George said when he went to go when he went to go uh, negotiate his contract, right? He said, I don't want any more points on the movies. I don't want extra money. What was he after, Hammer? Uh, he wanted to protect his, Everything his else. IP yeah. by going for the merchandise rights. Yeah. So what was it? What was that able to do? To give him was, financial independence from the studio system. I think in his, in his words, it was everything that they did not consider valuable because they were Correct. just short sighted. The short sighted, right? It's all about the movie, the movie, the movie. Yeah. And he it knew was, it was he was short. They were short sighted. They well. were short sighted. He, he knew see? better. 
He knew better. He knew better. Hey, if I can start selling uh, Boba Fett uh, lunch boxes, Darth Vader uh, helmets, uh, you know, little Luke Skywalker uh, toys, if I can do that, Hammer, and, and make billions. I don't have to be a. I mean, I'm going to make this a fully independent movie, right? I hire my own directors, and then that's the thing. See, he became independent of the studio system, and yeah, all it because just, it boggles the mind that that he would turn right around and sell it to them. No, no, you it, know, it just boggles my fucking mind. No, no, he my said only... that it was because he wanted to keep his people employed. Yep, but man, and he's you're old. Making it, you're making a deal with the fucking devil, man. Now, now hold on, now let's let's be fair. Let's be fair to George, right? I've always I been that highly there. I was I was critical of George, and here's why: he basically played the role of Adam, right? The original simp. He actually believed what Kathleen Kennedy was telling him. Well, and Bob to. Iger. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, he, we're gonna he, be respectful to your much. characters. He said as much. So. Yep, he said he got he got hoodwinked, right? And I'm like, George, you thought these people were gonna take your property and keep on making it like fucking pure? No, they corrupted it with the bullshit Ray, right? Uh, 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 you know all this this nonsense, and I'm thinking to myself, George, if anyone's smart enough to know better, oh, two hour content stretched out for two years, yeah, I believe them. It's they they have this because like, the thing, Hammer, I've never watched anything after. Uh, Last Jedi. I have not seen one ounce of no, Star Wars. After. Neither did I. I, I, I didn't see Solo. Yeah, I, I, I never saw. I never fucking, saw Solo. I never saw Episode Paul Nine. Skywalker. Nope. Um, I saw. I saw the clips and stuff that that ended up on YouTube, and I would have been fucking mad if I had spent money on it. I would have yep. been embarrassed. Um, it, well, the, the Disney Christ, Star Wars is an embarrassment. Rate. How do you it, take a slam dunk? It's a it's a slam dunk from the fucking moon. It's a slam dunk. Star Wars, and this this is what you've turned out. out out of all the films. The only thing that you can look at and say, yeah, m maybe is Rogue One. Agreed, agreed, in, agreed. In my opinion, that's yep. just my opinion. Yeah, most but people say the same. God, my God, you, to fumble this away like this, they will be talking about this in four hundred years. Oh yeah, if, well, if you we know, make you it see this, long. you see this throughout history, right? Where someone goes, "How the hell did this happen?" Right. And people have to go back and give you context. Like, let me explain, right? They sit you down and go, this is what the world was like. This is what happened. Because when someone looks back, right? So, Hammer, 20 years from now, someone's going to want uh, an explanation of what happened with The Last of Us Part Two, right? Because remember, yeah. kid, people are born every day. Someone's going to look back and go, how did this happen? Because remember, yeah. you, think about it. How many times when, when you were a kid, you found something, right? Whatever that something was. You, all you needed was a whiff, right? You took you, one whiff of it. For me, yeah. I got into martial arts because of one thing, Hammer. I was a kid visiting my grandparents in Arkansas, right? My uncle, right? Cause, you know, because of the age gap, he was, uh, he was, he's about, I want to say 20, maybe around 20 years older than us, not even, about 15 years older. So he's the uncle, but basically it was almost like a super older brother, right? Because the age gap from like my dad to the youngest child. We're in Arkansas and he shows us Game of Death, which Bruce Lee wasn't even in that much, right? But he filmed the fight oh. scenes. Beautiful the, the, the the infamous yellow uh, tracksuit, right? The, yeah, the oh yeah, man. <laughs> Hammer. With the big footprint. And the the big footprint from, from Kareem, right? <laughs> from Kareem, yeah. Hammer, do you know what that does to a young boy's mind when you see that? Because remember, remember fun, I was used to seeing yeah. action movies, right? With white guys and black guys just punching and kicking, you know, not really on martial arts. you, is what it does. And you saw that, and I went, whoa, wait, what is this? The way he's fighting the sound, you know, whoa, he's making all these sounds. I had never seen that, right? And I'm like, well. So, Hammer, you can imagine being a young me, right? I was probably about five at the time and five or six. And I said, this is incredible. So I asked my uncle, who is this guy? He goes, that's Bruce Lee. Remember, the way a kid's brain thinks, right? If something is happening on screen, that means it's right now, right? It's not, it's not 10 years old. It's right, right now. Right, right. So when I said, oh, my God, Bruce Lee, I love this guy. Well, man, what's his next movie? My, my uncle looks at me and goes like this. Oh, yeah, man, he, he's dead. Hammer, do you know what that did to me? Oh, I imagine it I was just saw you. like this incredible thing. He's in a yeah. yellow jumpsuit. And so what did we do? It hurt me. But what did I do next? What did I take away from this? I love Bruce. I'm going to go back and find his movies. This is Fury, Return of the Dragon. You know what I'm saying? Chinese yep. connection. But Good then what ball. did I do? It was about what? The learning. art. Yeah. Right. Learning. learning. What is this thing that he's doing? This martial arts. How do I do a Kimura? Right. How do I do a rear naked choke? When UFC first hit, that was in the, I don't know if you remember this, special interest section at Blockbuster Video. Do you remember that? I saw the very first UFC that was ever televised uh, live pay-per-view. I was sitting right there for the first one. We paid uh, Gerard Gordeaux busted yeah. out the sumo's teeth 
first yes. fight ever. Well, he he went down, down. On the, and they slow mowed that shit, and that dude's bits is flying out of his mouth yep. and shit. My, I, like, was oh. looking, I was looking at my boy, man. We were like, did that shit just this happen? Just happen? Knocked that motherfucker's teeth out. It yeah. was it was hardcore, man. It was it yeah, and I was I was hooked it, ever since. It, it, it was one of those things like, like like hammer, and this is the thing. I, I I preach about culture so much because this is for the young guys. There's going to be guys out there, and you know this, as we get older, because the modern generation is so fucking cucked, what, what's going to be called like action to them might be Rise of Skywalker, right? What might be considered sports might be some bastardized version. So we have to go like this. No, no, no. UFC started with, you remember this, Hammer, no weight class, right? No, no Open nothing. weight class, bare knuckle, right? There were three rules. No fish hooking. No eye gouging, right, and no biting. That's it. Yeah, three rules. Yeah, we, we and, watched uh, that whole thing. Uh, what is the fucking uh, Hoist Gracie was in it? Yep, Hoist Gracie. Yep, Hoist Gracie was in it. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, we wearing watched the that gee. whole thing, man. Yeah, and, wearing the and, gi, and then when a fucking dude tried to get him with the gi, and he beat and the it, shit out of him. Beat the man. Hey, he beat it, the it, shit it was shit out of him. It yeah. was so amazing to see. I remember. Do you remember Chemo? Right, big old dude came out across. And chemo, and you remember Joe Son was his his road dog who was in Austin Powers. Yeah, he's serving life for uh, eating a guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what happened to Joe Son. Remember when he was in Austin Powers and threw the hat? Yeah. Oh no, threw the shoe. He threw the shoe, right? Yeah. Uh, in the Austin know, Powers movie. I yeah, didn't Joe Son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he ended up eating someone <laughs> in prison. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, look him up. So Thanks. we, what's up? Are you ready for Collins? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and do it, man. Hey, oh, uh, actually, you know, let me give one one sec. I'm about to go take a quick leak. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll, I was just uh, gonna say the same fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hammer and I got yeah. literally just give us a All couple. Right. Here, let me. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pull you out uh, so that you can do your thing. And then just uh, give me a hand sign or something. You get back in, guys. You're stuck with me for a minute, and our viewer count just dropped by a hundred. Nope, two hundred, three hundred. It's going. Hey, Ken, I uh, sent you the link. If you want to jump in here, uh, get in here. Otherwise, I'll be dropping the link in the chat uh, soon enough. Uh, once you guys get back. Oh, someone's calling me a shumophobe in the chat. Um, you know what? Uh, mushrooms aren't real people, and Rishi's not a real mushrooms. So, nothing has been harmed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got to catch up Super Chats because uh, I fell behind. Oh, yeah, yeah, Manic. Uh, you know what, guys? Send me all the uh, Manic is the best producer. Oh. <laughs> What's up, Yetus? Just give me a second, and I will... Uh, I'll throw the link in the chat. You guys can all jump in. I can always do some unbreaded uh, for you guys. You know? You just sit here and just be like... Touchdown. On paper? On breaded. Yeah. Touchdown. On paper? On breaded. There you go. Yes, I'll be dropping a link to call in in uh, a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. Just want to get back. Awesome. Uh, hammer. Ba hammer back in. Uh, I see Yedis and Rishi are in the chat. Yeah, man, there's a lot of folks in there, man. Uh, Yellow Flash was in earlier. Chronic's oh, in there. I, I see Legal Mindset. Yeah, like I said, I'll be Legal dropping a link for all you guys to jump in. Uh, let me just do Super Chats real quick. There's not a lot of them, but let me catch up because I, yes, I missed a few. Uh, Frederick Little says, congrats on uh, congrats for reaching 10,000 subscribers. Much love for you guys in the channel. I hope eventually your channel reaches 1 million. I don't know if Susan will let that happen. <laughs> yeah, I think Auntie might be a little pissy if that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Drex is going to have to up his game. He's going to have to set, start sending her feet pics. <laughs> hey, Hammer, um, when the dick pics don't work brother when the dick pics don't work you gotta up the ante with susan man oh you yeah. know she's bi-weekly getting blacked so oh, oh, oh <laughs> give it a fucking break oh give in give me a that's break. a fact have you seen her husband no yeah google susan no uh, however you say her last name then the well, husband jicky well jicky however well, you jicky. say that well, yeah. face. but jicky whatever uh mike hunt says uh, Drex, I think you're just looking for an Amish wife. <laughs> uh, Mike Hunt also says, old anime was Macho. Uh, Kenshiro, um, I can't read half of these. Uh, Some of Jubei, it was. Jubei Kipagame. 
Oh yeah, that's uh, Ninja Go-Go Scroll. Ninja Scroll. Go-Go. Yeah, Ninja Scroll. Yep. Go Go thirteen. Go Go seventeen. Go Go thirteen. Yeah, Go Go thirteen yeah. is for real. Uh, yeah, Mad Bull but... thirty four. New anime bunch of limp wristed dudes getting hit by women. Fix that's anime. That's what fix it is, society. man. That's what it yep. is. Get me some fucking Maddox. Get me some Gunbuster. Get me some fucking Venus Wars. Come on, man. Oh, Hammer. Do you remember an anime that a uh, time forgot that was ultra violent called Violence Jack? No. No. Oh, it was ultra, dude. People were getting it real bad in that, man. Oh, Savagely man. yeeted. Like Fist of the North Star bad? Yeah, yeah. Kenshiro style. Like, like yeah! Hey. <laughs> I love that motherfucker, man. Oh, dude, that, that's my man, Phoenix. Is, because here's the thing. He represents that Clint Eastwood, right? The silent hero, right? Oh, yeah. Slow walking. Stoicism. And had all the skills and was savage. And Stoicism. Yeah. Stoicism, right? The, the modern anime is what? It's all I'm dead. <laughs> oh my god! How dare you? It, it's it, it's it's kind of turned into what now, Hammer? It's turned into like what? these effeminate, it's a whole weirdo, androgynous, androgynous dudes. Yep. Yeah. See, there I, you I go. won't watch it. You, you Hammer, know what I'm saying? I don't. Want I it. will not. Wa- Look, I grew up watching you know Cowboy Bebop, watching Trigun, watching uh, Vampire Hunter D. Right? There you go. Uh, you remember seeing Akira for the first time? Oh, it was fucking brutal. It was brutal. I loved every second of it. But yeah, it, 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 Akira was savage. You know, and goddamn when, when uh, I, Gal Force, Rhea Gal Force. Yep. Great shit. Good stuff. Uh, the Good the stuff. original uh, Grappler Baki, right? Seeing uh, the, the cord cutting techniques and stuff where he did a super close up of uh, 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 cords getting ripped from arms. When you see that shit at a young age, like, oh, it was savage, man. It's like you, you can't look away. Yeah, yeah. You you, know, it was so. Look, it's fucking disgusting and you yep. can't look away. Eight Man After, Wicked City. You know, when you see these uh, things. Fucking Soul Bianca. Yeah. You try out Soul Bianca. Yep. Great shit. Silent Mobius. I'm gonna start I writing, uh, writing, writing notes here. There you I go. know, right? I'm sorry. We're dropping all this stuff get, that oh, I didn't hear them chat. So. <laughs> it's, it's what anime used to be. I just introduced myself to Berserk. Oh, yeah, yeah. With Guts. Guts and Griffith, man. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm going to have fun watching that and catching up on that. Uh, Rip Kentaro uh, Mira. Or, yeah, yeah, Kentaro Mira. Sorry, I'm, I'm, your... I'm terrible with my Japanese pronunciation. I should get uh, someone in here to help me with that. Nani? Um, Hammer, mm. uh, you sent a uh, chat. Thank you very much, brother. We really appreciate You're it. Welcome, brother. Happy appreciate you. 10,000 subs. Um, I hit this one earlier. Ian Mac, Mandalorian's two hours content, stretched over two years. Uh, Mike Hunt says, even Jar Jar Binks couldn't kill a franchise. <laughs> you know what? It, 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 actually, Tim. Tim, I got to say this about Jar Jar, though, in, in all honesty. I'll tell you what, what really struck me with, with the prequels in particular. Hammer, have you ever watched reaction videos, in, in particular reaction videos from women? Because those are usually the ones who have never seen Star Wars, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you notice they don't harbor those same feelings? Because from, from, from you know unbiased eyes, they view these movies that we watched very differently, right? Like, like you know, you've been well, around kids before. They, they, don't view, they don't have the same biases. We have... 30 years plus 40 years plus for some of us of movie going experience, Mm -hmm. you know, so they're pretty new in the field. You know, you made a comment earlier about observing the reactions of people and how they act to things today. uh, For me, the perfect reactions are the reactions of folk listening to music. You know, they're listening to Metallica or kiss or fucking Stevie wonder or the Bee Gees. I can't tell you how many people I have watched listen to the Bee Gees that's a black man or a black woman couple, and they're like, I thought them motherfuckers was black. Y- yep. They yep. don't even know they don't about even know. this stuff. They don't yep. even know about it. And there's no earthly reason why they wouldn't know about it. So that it, there's something fucking missing. With all of the shit that we have at our disposal, why is that missing? Why are Tribalism. people not looking at it? Tribalism. You know, because, I agree because with Hammer, let's face it. I have a guy in my Discord, shout out to my man Part Whiplash. Of Part of Whiplash is a young buck, right? And he thought rap was basically this mumble rap garbage, you know, sissified version, right? No. 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 So when you give him the real deal from the 90s and the 80s, he was like this. What the fuck? He, hey, man. He if was you blown could away. Pick, if you could pick one rap artist. I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, Tim. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Get your shit. No, 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 go. If you oh, you, you said one, if I could go, pick go, one, go. Uh, what were you going to say? If you could pick one, one rap artist that you felt influenced the genre the most – Pre two thousand, who would it be? I know that's tough. That's tough, but tough. But you know, you know who I'm gonna go with. Uh-huh. Okay, here's the thing: on a commercial level, that's Jay Z on pure commercial, right? 
the commercialization right. of rap came from, from you know, once Jay-Z's Hard Knock Life album dropped in 98. However, right. if someone were to ask me, who is the rapper that, like, 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 this is what I've always said. When history gets written, Nas is going to be the person that stands above everyone else. And here's why. In the same way Shakespeare is revered above all other playwrights, right? He was not considered the best of his time, just one of the best, because he was too ahead of his time. You see how that works? Where, yeah, okay, prime example. Martin Scorsese's movies don't make as much as Michael Bay's, right? Well, right, yeah. But you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but when someone says, who is the best director of that entire era? It's Martin Scorsese. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And so, so what's what's going to happen is years from now, Hammer Hammer, we're all dead and gone. And someone starts going back to getting the craze, going, why was this movie considered good when this is the – look, Raging Bull lost the Oscar, right? That's Goodfellas amazing. lost the Oscar, right? Yeah. Yeah. Casino yeah. didn't win. Look, he, the movie Heat, Michael Mann's movie, Heat, <sighs> won nothing. Scarface won nothing. And you're thinking, good. how did that happen? Good God. You That's see, amazing Scarface didn't win one shit, fucking you know? award. It won That's nothing. amazing. That's unbelievable. And, and so, so that's so, so hammer. That's how history treats the what I call it, the real. Real shit will always survive. So remember, Nas is ill. It's timeless. Studied at Harvard. It's timeless. It's, it's timeless. studied at Harvard. Name another rap album studied at Harvard. None, right? I couldn't think of one. It's it, that's the only one. It's illmatic, right? It was written now. At, at the time it came out in '96, people called Nas a sellout. Oh, he's working with the track masters. Blah 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 blah. Do you know how it was written as viewed now? Oh my God, this is a masterpiece. Of course they say that now. Yeah. At the time, it was too ahead of its time. You yeah, see them, what I'm saying? Them fucking, uh, them NPCs. Yep. You got you to kind of consider that even in the industry, there are NPCs. I mean, people yep. that you would consider to be legends, they still just kind of hang on the coattails of other people's opinions. Yep. So Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was who did you think it was? It. Who did you think it was, Hammer? I, I, I had two choices. I was, as far as just particular artists were concerned, the person that broke it in uh, was Africa Bombada. Yep. And then if I was going to go with anybody, it would be Scarface. I like Scarface. Here's my issue with Scarface. I don't think he is the best album maker. No, 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 no. As far as just just from a lyrical point of view. Correct, correct. I yeah, because yeah, my thing is this. That could take SpaghettiOs and Mumble Mouth and turn it into magic. Oh, Absolutely. Uh, just, you know, I loved his style. I remember when the dark when the diary came out. Obviously, his work with the Ghetto Boys and uh, you know the song, the Suicide Note. He's had all these great songs. I just this is just me because, like I said, I didn't I didn't grow up in Houston where he's from. One of my main issues with Scarface was simply that I don't think he was ever the guy that put it all together, making like album after great album. You see what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. Great Agreed. guest appearances, great songs. Yes. Agreed. Albums. I say you, no. You ever hear the Convicts? No. That first fucking album of the Convicts is magical. I'm gonna look it up. You remember, got to check that out. Guys. You got to check I, that out. I love this exchange of um, culture and ideas. That like Drex, every single time we listen to Hammer Hand talk, we learn something. Every single time. Oh, stop it, all it, that it, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the, the thing is supposed camera. to happen though between uh, yeah. the, the thing that's supposed to happen in this space is like Hammer Hand said. I, I don't know if you remember there was a there was a I think it's two black kids out of Gary, Indiana of all places. I can't remember if they're twins or not. It went viral, right? They listened to Phil Collins in the air tonight for the first time. Do you remember that? Uh, I've seen it got it got a stupid amount of views, like like something Several. stupid, right? And it went like viral across the world, right? Here you got huh. two kids in in Gary, Indiana, right, the hood, and these are you know these are good. And they say, yeah, man, you know we you know where I, we come from, we don't listen to shit like this, right? Even though the song in the air tonight has been sampled many times in the rap space, right? That's Tupac what another one of those. Here. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Ahead. That's what another one of those uh, reaction or uh, reaction type video persons. It was a woman. She uh, a white girl. No, no, she was a high high light girl, mm -hmm. and she kept saying, um, "This keeps fucking happening." Where I start hearing these songs from the '60s, '70s, and '80s. And immediately pick up on the fact that it was sampled, and I never knew that it was sampled. Yep. And it was clearly pissing her off. It was bugging her. Yep. You know, because so much of that genre is sampled. Yep. And well, I that's got, that's the origin of that's literally the origin of the genre. It was about that's chopping. It, yeah. That's chopping. The so so it. it's like, but here's what people don't understand about that. Uh, okay, I view rap the same way I view like Quentin Tarantino, right? Everything oh. Tarantino has done has already been done. So what makes him unique? He's able to chop up a bunch of shit that's very disparate and then go ahead and put it together, right? And make it work. 
You, you well, see what I'm saying? He puts his seal on it, though. He, he puts his seal on it because it, you know. his thing, Hammer, you and I both know, nothing is new under the sun. You see what I'm saying? Nothing very is rarely. new. Yeah, very you know what rarely. I'm saying? So, so everyone is, is inspired by someone. That, like, if you talk to Led Zeppelin, what are they going to say? We were inspired by, you, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you just go back that like that throughout history. So, so there's, there's nothing wrong with sampling. The question is, did you put your own spin on it, right? That's the question. Did you put your stamp on it? And, and just like in the Manosphere, you know, guys out here have, have all, you know, similar talking points because, you know, we have similar experiences, right? Iceland, Greenland, America, uh, Zimbabwe. The question is, how do you make it your own, right? Things that you said, this is your own thing. And like, I think even you're, tonight, just, you're just genuine. You know, right? right? Just be as genuine as you can possibly be. You know, even if you're using somebody else's shit or you're, you're, you know, begging and borrowing ideas from other folks, yep. just put enough of yourself into it that makes it just, just a little tick of unique. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that that rides with a lot of people. It does. All right. I just put the uh, link in the chat for everyone who wants to call in. Uh, Flash, if you're still out there, man, uh, get in here. I saw Legal Mindset. Andrew, you're welcome in, of course. Ken. Uh, Rishi, Yidis, all you guys, if you want to get in here, I can get you in here. Oh, shit, um, it's going to be a slugfest. Oh, it's <laughs> going to be a slugfest. We're going to love it. All right, let me, uh, two more, a couple more chats uh, came in before. Uh, let me hit those. Um, Spaceballs was more of a homage to episode seven to nine. Seven to nine uh, says Ian Mack. At, at least it was somewhat coordinated. You know, yeah. these folks got into those episodes, Disney Star Wars. It must it must be stressed that it's Disney Star Wars, even though all Star Wars is Disney Star Wars. Their own unique productions were a fucking disaster. They were a disaster. When you go mm-hmm. through 10 directors, 10 directors coming and going, that's that's a problem with the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, Legal Mindset says uh, Uber funds to Susan's house. <laughs> Thank you very Uh-oh. much, uh, Legal Mindset. Appreciate Uh-oh. it. Uh, yes, uh, Flash did send a chat in. Yellow Flash says, uh, Sailor Moon did gay before Hollywood. Oh, shit. Who's Sailor Moon? <laughs> Is that code for somebody that I'm not picking up on? No, you remember the, the anime Sailor Moon? Yeah. Yeah, remember that garbage? Dude, I knew people that, that live... Do you know? I'll tell you, that was the first time I saw what now we, we describe as a weeb. Oh, yeah. The first they time I ever saw weeb. what a weeb was, like, like I said, it didn't have a term back then. It was grown ass men watching Sailor Moon because like, Sailor yeah, Moon man. did not appeal to me at all. I saw these screeching girls. I'm like, this looks stupid. My ex wife, uh, my first ex wife, uh, oh. was all uh, all about Sailor Moon, and I gave oh. her the business over it one day. <laughs> she it's never so watched awful. it again, man. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> like, Yo, Rishi oh, is that a man, Rishi? What up, what's up Rishi? How what's you doing? Up? Hold up. Just want to take a Grazzo. second. Uh, <laughs> oh shit! Grazzo. That's unfriendly, man. Grazzo. May I present to you <laughs> my wife? Yeah. That is horrible. Look. Oh, that's unfriendly, man. Sixty-nine for sixty-nine. All right, Rishi, Slipper you're slide. real. Well, Slipper Slipper you, earned, you earned it. <laughs> mm. next you know what that means? It's time for dessert. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Thumb Ugly says, uh, Super Savage Anime MD Geist was one. Uh, J- Gist? Geist? Am I saying that correct? I don't yeah, know if I'm Geist. saying that right. Yeah. Geist. Uh, and there was one more I saw sneak in here. Yes, another one from Mike Hunt. Uh, it's called a double wrist lock, not a kim- uh, Kimaru? Kimaru? Kimura. Kimura? Uh, BJJ is just watered down catch wrestling. Figure four, not triangle choke. Cultural oh, yeah, by yeah, Brazil. They, yeah, people talk about that. Uh, but, but here's what here's what I've always said. There's a song I want Mike Hunt to listen to. It's a Raekwon song. Go look up Shaolin versus Wu Tang. There is an audio snippet in that song, Hammer, that I think applies like very much to tonight's stream, right? And it's the very nature of Kung Fu, right? And he says, You took our Shaolin style, you mixed it with blah blah blah. The, the, your style, right? And he goes, My lord, he says. Kung Fu doesn't belong to anyone. It evolves. And then the next the next verse comes on, right? We're always evolving. Like here's the thing. I don't even like the term cultural appropriation, and here's why. Hey Hammer, if you use a Samsung phone, are you culturally appropriating Korea? I suppose you, if somebody wants to cause a problem, sure. 
Um, I think we need a legal expert from South Korea to call in and uh, clarify that. You know how most of these people, <laughs> uh, the people that are being so called, sort of, sort, sort of defended, right? Like this chick wore a, a Chinese traditional garb to a prom a few years ago. I remember that. The China or, or Japanese? It was one of the other. Yep. And she, the the people in the in the home country were asked about that because of the furor here that it generated. They didn't care. And they said, they, they number one, they don't give a fuck. They don't care. Nope. And the other answer that you got was that they they felt honored that somebody was representing their culture over here. Yep. This Especially is a as long uniquely as it's respectful. Ameri- it's an American sickness. Yep, it that's is going on here. It's an American. It, well, you saw sickness. you saw they did Adele, right? Remember when Adele had uh, cornrows? Oh and yeah. Whole, uh, for and I said. Black women put other women's hair in their head, their bald heads, all day, every day. Why are you worried about about some uh, British woman with with cornrows or whatever? It's like, dude. Hello, Pisha. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jada. <laughs> um, Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Nick talked about that. That's the that's the cuck rage that comes out. It is right. Someone who has their life together and is happy with the, the position they occupy, the space they occupy, doesn't lash out like that. I Never. can almost understand why why this cat did that. I mean, that he has been too. getting fucking raked over the coals for two years, three years now. Yeah. That's funny um, too, because like oh, she treats him. He so was bad. laughing. He was laughing before. He was. And then he looked over to Jada, and she and was she, running. He's like. Right. Oh, uh, Drex, you remember it. that meme of that swimmer who came in second place, but she was, like, really disappointed. She thought she should have been first. So she's got this, like, Yeah, she had, she had the uh, Michaela Maroney yeah, Michaela. or whatever name. Yeah, yeah, yeah Michaela Maroney. Michaela's not impressed. Yep. That, that was the face that Jada made, and Will's like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yep, she put the, I tell you, she put that battery pack in him and said, execute orders. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Jada shit was, went out there and did have what he had to do, right? No. Someone oh, photoshopped that. Jada was not like, oh, impressed. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, she put the Energizer yeah. Bunny. That she put the battery pack in him and sent his ass out. And these German shepherds will get you killed. Oh, Hammer, no Rishi, shit, you know man. this. Come on now. Come there's on. a there's a lot of dudes right now in a cemetery or in a jail cell because of one of these bitches right now tonight. Yeah, right. April Fools. The April Fools joke is on you when you don't have control over your own life. You, you know what, uh, uh, Rishi. You know, we talk about chivalry here, right, and holding each other accountable, right, and making yeah. sure that guys are, are understood to say, yo, Rishi, what problem do you see and ways that we can join together to solve it? Well, I think, like, in uh, respects with Will Smith, he's simping over a woman who basically betrayed him and made a mockery of him on national television. But you does he consider it to be a betrayal? No, See, that's the thing. Does he well, consider the that to be a betrayal, or is it, this is our marriage, it's our business? Uh, does he even realize what this means? I don't think he does, because he cried after he uh, hit Chris Rock. Hey, hey, he was on stage, and he cried that, on That like, motherfucker is in crisis, boy. There's something wrong yeah. there. Something wrong there. Mm-hmm. Drex, Drex, do you think Will Smith actually believes everything he said about his marriage with Jada? Do you think no, like no, no, no. he's blinded by the V? No, no, he's not. He's not. No, cucks are always in denial. I know this from being a bull. Uh, these guys hate their lives. I, I always go back to there's one movie that I think perfectly illustrates what a cuck is. There's only one movie, and Hammer knows it's Boogie Nights. William H. Macy's character is an exact one-to-one about what an actual cuck's life is like. Do you remember that movie, uh, Hammer? Yeah, it's been a minute. So uh, it's a you, cope, right? It, it's a cope. So, so uh, Rishi, did you ever see Boogie Nights? No, I didn't. Oh, you got uh, must see TV. Watch, we got to do a watch gotta, party. Gotta I got to do a watch party. List. Oh, man. Boogie Nights is must see because his character is a cuck in denial, right? And the rage comes out. It's always like like, like underneath, right? And, and, and this is the thing. I always tell guys, do not be around simps and cucks because you never know when they're going to explode, right? And yeah. one of the prime examples is uh, right here at Mall of America in Minnesota. I don't know if you guys remember this. It happened, I want to say, maybe two and a half years ago. I want to say it was before COVID. It had to be right before COVID. There was a beta male simp black dude who was at the Mall of America and grabbed a woman's child and Second threw the story. child over the balcony. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember that. See, and do you remember why he did it, Hammer? Do you remember his, his actual motivation? He wanted to kill white, I wanted to kill a white kid. No. No. He was mad that girls weren't talking to him. Right. Oh, he was banned. Sorry. He was already banned. He was on the blacklist of the Mall of America because they said he yeah, tried to do something couldn't, couldn't earlier, 
And then what happened, Hammer? It's yeah. the beta male rage, right? Similar to Elliot Roger, right? Similar to Elliot Roger. Girls don't talk to me. Eh. Rather than bettering himself or just not fucking caring and walking away, he wants to go hurt people, which is bitch made behavior. Yeah. Uh, wifey says, hey, boo. Oh. <laughs> 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 Uh, hey, hey, Tim, you mind if I answer a question real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which, uh, successful which Endeavors. It says, Hammerhand, are you going to be streaming tomorrow? I've got several people asking, and only you can answer that. Um, it, as of yet, I don't know. It, it's possible. i got a couple of things in the works, but I, I don't know yet. If I do, I'll try to give you all notice. All right, sounds good. Uh, two more chats, and I think I'm caught up, and then we'll take our first two callers. I see them. Uh, they're queued up here. Uh, Rossette says, in the 80s, I was a nerd. Now I'm toxic. What happened? <laughs> Feminism <laughs> happened. That's what happened. Yeah. It's like, uh, what the fuck? Cultural Why fucking hurricane. Talking? Yeah. Uh, and I missed one. Oh, here it is. Another one from my cut. Uh, Sailor Moon and the Seven Balls movie. Check it out, Drex. Oh, wait. Sailor so, oh, so, so Moon the Seven Balls movie? I haven't heard of that one. I ain't heard of that. Yeah, me neither. Uh, but we can look it up later. Uh, you know what I find funny about a lot of the, the anime or what we used to call Japanimation? Yep. When when that came over, uh, that was a bunch of useless, <laughs> no, going nowhere shit in Japan that was repackaged and repurposed and brought over here, and Americans ate it up. Yep. Um, <laughs> Sheila <laughs> Aliens. I'm batting my eyelash. <laughs> yeah, as soon as wife is mentioned, you're just, uh, oh, you know, you're God. bright red. Oh, she she's pure comedy. Uh, well, I'm actually uh, I'm actually headed to see her next week, and uh, I'm gonna try to get up and get up with Camelot. Also, we're gonna go see a movie Hammer that I think represents uh, this philosophy, which is uh, Sonic Two. Because remember Sonic One, they went back and redid the movie. Remember because Sonic's appearance looked terrible. He looked like a fucking blue rat. Fucking horrible. Remember, yeah. remember that? It was terrible. Yeah. And they yeah, went back horrible. and redid it the way it's supposed to be. Right? They made him look like Sonic. And he and they that that studio they were rewarded for that right, and, and I wouldn't I don't saw think, the movie and I didn't even I maybe fifty percent liked the movie, but you know oh I loved it I loved, I took uh, I took uh, Racket's kids to it, and they just loved it they just ate it up so Racket's well kids, you know it's gonna be good for kids I took my son to see it he loved it you know, oh yeah I'm yeah I, there and I'm I'm like mm, you know, it's fun for the whole family yeah like, yeah like it, fans it, of Sonic will still enjoy yeah, it yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey's <laughs> performance can be enjoyed by Jim that. Carrey was great in that as Robotnik it, it was just it, like I, I I'll tell you what it was though uh Hammer it was a fun movie that anyone can enjoy without politics uh yeah I can I can agree with you know that. what I mean like because like, you got tired of woke you, you see well, what I'm saying and a good example, people, like Drex, the two main characters are uh, in, in a racial couple. And although I didn't like no that one part. said a word. I, I'm no going to be honest with you. Word, right? They didn't draw attention to it. I'm going to be honest with you. They didn't market it. <laughs> no, 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 fuck that part. No, no, no. I don't like that. I, I, see, that's what I'm saying, man, is that it's it's always in there. The yeah, yeah. Like, well, here's, okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm tell you my, my, my only issue with, okay, I believe that she was the worst part of the movie. The black actress Tika Sumter. I believe she was the worst part of the movie. A and B. I don't like the idea of a black chick being his girl only for this one reason. They're in Montana. Yeah, the rural Montana. Rural They're Montana. Not in Billings Hammer. Or... <laughs> Hammer. If they weren't in rural Montana, I would have no problem with that, right? It's because you're in rural Montana. I'm like, that's not. I've been to Montana. Oh, uh, yeah. come on now. Guards. Drex, yeah. uh, there was a German Shepherd at the border, so she must live in one of the border towns. There's this town. In Kodiak, way up there in the north, mm -hmm. all black people. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm playing with you. There ain't no such a thing. <laughs> there ain't no damn thing. Hey, <laughs> Henry, you know how phony it is. You it's know it's phony. Was, it's fucking dumb. It's it, dumb. It, because it looks and it, it's trying to inject this this cultural nonsense into your head. It is absolutely another form of conditioning and brainwashing. Yeah, it, it, you got to be able hammer. To figure it if, out, if it's you know? if it's natural, I don't care. I don't think you care. I don't think I care. Agreed. No one cares. It's Agreed. when, like I said, okay, if they lived in the city, I would say that's okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they lived in rural Montana, I said, look, dude, I've been to Montana multiple times, right? <laughs> in fact, Hammer, that is the most scenic drive I ever had. Rishi, oh, I don't know if you've ever taken the drive from Missoula to Kalispell. is the single most scenic drive I ever had in my whole life. Missoula mm -hmm. to Kalispell, Montana. Beautiful. I, I, I feel like what, I should man. know where those are. I've driven through Montana enough times. I drove, I drove across the country here in March of last year. And I went uh, 
80 to 84 and i went up through the columbia river gorge up into washington and that's Mm -hmm. some of the most scenic beautiful shit i have ever seen in my life through cheyenne wyoming yep Yep. amazing shit the upper portion of utah just amazing shit amazing but uh all right uh a couple you're gonna love uh okay so uh this chat here uh swine dog says drexel i've only discovered you in the last few weeks your recent appearance on the jack show was great my question is are you a MGTOW guy or are you something else? I believe by the definition I am because I, I as you know, this is well known. I do not believe in marriage. You can't, you can't be black and be a MGTOW. Yeah, right. I've, I've been told this. I've been told, right? You got to be on that plantation. Yeah. Picking that cotton. So my thing is this. I, I've always said, like I told you, Hammer, I didn't know that there was a term for what I was because I felt all alone, right, for years. And once I discovered TFM and some of those guys, I was like, wait a minute, there's a term for this? Like, I, I'm not the only one who says no marriage, you know, no cohabitation. I've never cohabitated with a woman in my life. I've never been married. I never believed in it because I, I said, this is bullshit because I was smashing so many married bras, right? I saw the fuckery in society. And you know what I said, Hammer? This is broken, right? And because of that, I was like, I, all the little, you know, you know it's almost like a, like a checklist, right? When you, when you check all the boxes, you go, oh, I guess that makes me "quote unquote" Mig Tower S Y S B M. Uh, shout out to my man L O M and everybody in that in that part of the uh, the "quote unquote" black Ibor. manosphere. Ibor. I, yeah, I'm more yeah, uh, introspective black men of uh, reform. Yep. And I didn't know that hammer that there were ter- there was a term for what I was right because you remember until, until you find it on the internet or some and you said that yourself. Guys end up discovering something like oh, I, and this is the thing. There's a lot of people right now, Tim that are these terms without knowing they're these terms. There's someone right now sitting in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting in the middle of nowhere right now, right? And they're going like this. Yeah, man, I I ain't out here. I ain't married none of these hoes. I I mean, I'll pump it up at best, blah, blah, blah. And they didn't know there was a term for that. Grade two, I was red-pilled. Yeah. I didn't have a name for it. I didn't have a term for it. I also didn't have, uh, you know, the internet wasn't a thing when I was in grade two. Not that that a seven-year-old kid would be on the internet anyways. Yeah, uh, you just you just discover it naturally, organically, and that's where we're at. But yeah, and then uh, everyone, and then as everyone, you know, because when you're a kid and you discover something, you want to share it with everyone. Well, yep. when you're a boy, anyways, right? Um, and then the backlash I got back in told me, okay, hang on a second, I hit a nerve here yep. because all these teachers are yelling at me, but they can't actually, they cannot logically tell me why this is bad, right? When my mother says, "Don't put your hand up on the stove, you're gonna burn yourself." Hey, there's a consequence. Cool. You test it out. You burn your hand. You're like, all right. Yeah, she she <laughs> was not lying. Don't put your finger in the sockets. Right? But they couldn't tell me why did, why did I have a problem with the idea that you have to hold doors open for the girls and the women. Women always go first. Uh, they're allowed to hit you and you can't do anything back to them. Yep. Not anymore. Oh, there's oh, yeah, back yeah, then dude, in dudes are, dudes, in the dudes, are going, dudes are going Ray Rice now, though. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because what is a woman? Hammerhand. Uh, let me hit this chat while you ponder that. <laughs> uh, hey, Rishi, can you do a voice for me? Uh, what's that? Uh, the oh, chat okay. I have on the window there. Jet from Jack Murphy himself. I do love desserts. Hey, Drax, will you be my mutual? <laughs> <laughs> Give some of them slick brown chocolate buns. <gasps> <laughs> I've seen this before. That's uh, horrible. <laughs> uh, Island Hermit says uh, TFM saved my life. Make towel for life. Um, yeah. I've yeah, I've seen that before. It, it really does mean something when you save when you can reach these kids and actually save them. Now, I'm caught up on chats. Without further ado, oh, goddamn it, one more just came in. <laughs> uh, Glacier National Park, in Montana, is a great place to check out if you haven't been there. I uh, wholeheartedly agree. I have been to Glacier National Park. Um. It, it it is a beautiful place. One of the problem with the Southern Rockies once you get down to Colorado, there's not a lot of glaciers left, so it's just pointy brown masses. Mm. There's no snow. There's no mm. glaciers. Glacier National Park, being you know the furthest north of the Rocky Mountains before you get into Canada, plenty of uh, good glaciers there. And man, when you see these frozen waterfalls dropping off a cliff and into these emerald blue. Uh, lakes below, emerald green and blue lakes below. Uh, it's spectacular, and you can oh, just yeah. sit on a bench and life, li- all of life's problems go away for an hour. You just hang out. Yeah. So yeah. totally agree. 
uh, with uh, with Ryan. Uh, absolutely put it on your bucket list, Glacier National Park. Uh, Mr. Pliskin says 10, 10K subs. Congrats. All right, let us get our first caller in here. Let's Eric, you're up, man. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? We're up, good, man? Eric. What's up, man? It is hey, the uh, chivalry fucking stream, man. So, yeah, you're you're learning to be with your fellow man and actually not being a fucking cuck like Will Smith. So, Eric, let us know, man, what problem have you seen in your own life that you're saying, yo, man, we have to join forces as knights, right, the nobles, and work to fucking fix? Well, what's kind of sad is, you know, I grew up in the nerd fandom in the 80s and 90s, and, you know, it used to be, you know, we all had common ground. We all just loved things. And it's amazing how, you know, everything's just so segmented now. And even if you just like something – no matter what side you're on, they just turn it around and find a way to completely skew you on it. And, you know, no matter, even if you were just into fringe stuff, even if you weren't into the same thing, just because you were actually into something that was interesting, sci-fi, creative, uh, kind of out of the norm, you always had friends. And now you always have enemies. Mm -hmm. There's nothing yeah. but enemies now. And, and Eric, the sad thing is, your enemies are 99% of the time dudes. This is the reason why I, you know, I told Hammer, I had you on the first time, and I told you the, the one thing uh, about your logic that I said, eh, it was that, like, you know, you're saying about, like, you know, we were talking about, like, you know, women and men in certain spaces and stuff. I said, one of the problems that I've, I've noticed, though, Hammer, there are more men who are quick, well, hold on, males who are quicker to betray you and fuck you over than females in the modern day. Are there chicks out here who will mute to you? Yes. But I believe there's more dudes out here quicker to false flag your channel, infiltrate, do some weirdo shit. Most guys have been betrayed by more. Like, Because think about it. You're around more guys, right, in your lifetime. And they tend to betray you usually over pussy. What do you, what do you think about that, Eric? About guys basically, you know, simping became the, the new norm, right? Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. A lot of people I know uh, don't fall into symptom. Uh, they, they learned very early on. And unfortunately, a lot of them had uh, had trouble babies. Uh, you know, they were anchored in the relationships they were no longer mm -hmm. a part of um, and, and had to kind of suffer through having a, a family that they wanted but can't have. And then a family that they, you know, they have, but, you know, are tr struggling to support. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's difficult, you know, it's uh, I. I, I can't fathom what, what changed, what snapped. It seems like, you know, you got comfortable through the 2000s and all of a sudden, boom, what the hell is going on? Yeah, the 2010s, I think all of this went into hyperdrive. Like, I, I, could, I can remember, like, 2000 to, I'd say even, like, 2005, right? 2000, like I said, it, it's, I think it's something about, like, 2010. That, that's the start. Because, I mean, hell, V for Vendetta came out in 2005, right? Yeah. That's as red pill as it gets. You know, that movie was, there was no cuck shit in V for Vendetta. And then yet, look at what we're at, where we're at now, right? You know, Disney says that half the characters have to be rainbow. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's not that long, right? 15 years is not a very long time, and here we are, man. It's a generation. Yeah, you're right. It is. Have you seen, uh, Drex, have you seen, like, the leaked uh, meeting that Disney execs had when they were talking about how to, like, uh, teach kids how to be queers? Oh, yeah. Someone just made it. Who's that that made a video about that today? Uh, fuck! Everybody made a video. I, yeah, that. Gonna, it's been. Yeah. You're gonna have to be more specific. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I remember. Well, you know how when when you when you go on YouTube, you have like all your little suggestions, right? I want to say it was uh Yellow Flash or maybe like a Tug. They had a video Flash, about it. Jeremy, Umbrella yeah. Guy. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, Quarterine. Yeah, gamers. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say it, it's a lot of the people um, that I'm subscribed to. I think Gary made one over there. At Nerd oh, Rock. Ner Neurotic. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of folks have been talking about it's fucked up shit. Like Pliskin says here, it's fucked up shit. Yeah, they're pushing now, You know where they're going. For, yeah. So for all of the folks that were out there saying we just got to get Kathleen Kennedy out the door, it's, it don't make a difference if she's you know, there you know, or not. These fucking mega, mega, mega corporations are all in on this shit, and it's not about money. If they're getting money, great. The the payoff is to change the culture. Yep. Well, here's I can't the imagine. I, I can't imagine them. any game turning a profit now. Like, I can't... We know that Last of Us Part Two sold well. We know Cyberpunk sold well. But you, you think Even of the money they sink into the marketing and the development and fixing all of their fuck-ups. I, 
I have a hard time seeing these uh, actually are profitable versus indie games. I mean, look, well, I look, Team Sneed's made a, you know, I mean, he's made a bit of a penny on his cuckold simulator. He's yeah. adding Will Smith into it. I heard. I Good. saw the picture. Uh, <laughs> now, Eric, let me ask you this. What do you think about that? What do you think about just the nature of uh, we're at the point now where, like, everybody is a simp, everybody's a cuck. Because if you go on, you know, if you were to go on the hub right now, they're always trying to push the cuck porn shit. Right, oh, they're always the pushing fucking, it. the stepmom and the step mom, step yep, fucking shit, <laughs> yep, step sister, step brother. Look, look uh, that's some degenerate shit, man. Yep, that's yeah, some quote, unquote, degenerate step. shit. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Chronic just roasted a Gabby Carter today. Shout out to Chronic you got a in that video. Spammer in your chat. Oh. Do I? What do I fuck? Oh, uh, usually the mo- yeah, we've got mods that usually take care of that, but oh, I can Jesus. also just block. Don't worry, Drax, I got it. Keep going. All right. The now, Eric, I got to ask you this: um, What has been the biggest uh, thing that you've seen in the Manosphere that you wish could change that needs to get better? I really do wish that people would just stop going absolutely insane over little things. It just seems that you know. The, the, I think the biggest problem is we're all so primed to an angle or another that we're just we, we're full of opinions. We're full of just ready to snap and there's no chill anymore you know no, i not really all. don't yeah I, I think that a lot of people aren't actually crazy <laughs> all right but they're just being pumped full all so much weird shit that they can't process we've they've never had to deal with it in their entire lives people growing up with this are gone like <laughs> they're, they're genuinely strange and then everyone else it, it has no clue what what's a healthy way to live adjacent to all this weird crap and it just doesn't seem like it's really ever going to be sustainable and i think that's the point he's spot on with that yeah um yeah. can't add nothing to that yeah, yeah. yeah there's nothing to add to that <laughs> shit um just a quick uh, programming note so uh, i just got informed that the room is full uh, with people oh, calling in. So don't oh, worry, man. as soon as, as we move people out, I'll put the link back in. You guys can uh, get back in. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll uh, try to get to everyone. But, um, yeah. Eric, any closing thoughts? Yeah, um, just, as a, just as a conspiracy theory, and I know this is a conspiracy theory. Um, you know, one of the problems I see, and a lot of people bring up, is this whole changing of uh, circumstances on the earth thing it seems that a common conclusion is there's just too damn many people well if you know that nobody's going to follow this whole one child policy thing getting people to voluntarily destroy their own ability to reproduce through you know transgenderism and asexualism and you know unconventional marriages and stuff like that or just opting out of the whole system i it look if that's the end i think they're actually playing big brain game uh, and getting people to really rely on big corporations and big government and a group of people that wouldn't naturally do so. That's two different things. That's that's two different things. The transgenderism thing is 99% white boys. It's 99% white boys. So that's two different things. But it's it's aimed at the, the same population, especially the, the, the depopulation aspect of that, where people aren't breeding anymore. Mm-hmm. That's that's aimed at the same. It's the same fucking thing. It's the same result, you know. Is that you have much less capable men standing in the way, yep. and the the plan from the beginning for these folks is to weed down the population of men, masculine men, masculine men. Yeah, masculine they're, okay, yeah, they're okay with males. Okay, they're okay with Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller's not going to reproduce. That's correct. You see what I'm saying? Or, unless they like Dave, fucking Dave Rubin and Dave Rubin's partner, where they rent some wombs out. Yep, and they imprint and they inseminate these these bitches, and but, then they but just the how, children how are they, delivered to them. But, but look, what kind of what kind of kid are they going to raise? An effeminate soy boy. You see They're what I'm saying? going to raise them. They will raise yeah. a mirror image of them. Yep, and that's that's what I try to say with the single mother homes out there that they're raising hardwired female brains in male bodies. Yep, they're raising mirror images of them. They're turning them into son husbands, yep. son boyfriends. Oh, that's you sad. know. All right. It's fucking hey. ridiculous. It's terrible shit. Yeah. Eric, thanks for calling in, man. You All right, y'all have a good night. Before you go? Hey, uh, have a thank good you, one. Eric. Thank you, Eric. Uh, no, just uh, 
keep it uh, watching MGTOWN. And, uh, you know, Nick Riccada, I love him. I waste my entire life uh, following <laughs> just, just about all of you. Uh, there's not enough hours in the day. And Nick make, it, Nick's entirely the problem for that. <laughs> Is it a waste? Is it really a waste? <laughs> no, it's time well spent. <laughs> I love you. Thanks, Eric. Steven. Uh great, you're up next. Get ready. Uh then it's uh then it's Mega Max, then Miss Mom, Captain, Voice, Vanish, and Shake after that. Uh, no flash? The order. Nope, no, I didn't see Flash come in. Although he might have been one of the people trying to come in late. So um Hey, uh Flash, if you're still listening, uh, you might want to Twitter DM Drex and he can get you the link. We'll uh we'll get you we'll get a, we'll find a way to get you in here. Is what I'm saying. If you need me to uh, drop but, out, man, to make it happen, I'll do it. So oh, Evening, make don't town? worry about that. Hey. hey, Gray, what up? What's up, uh, Gray? Hey, 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 Amber. How's what's up, sir? Yo, Gray, what's I up? I keep running into you like this, man. This is this is people that are going to talk, son. People are going to oh, talk. How's my favorite public enemy number one? <laughs> oh, I'm doing good, man. You know, uh, I don't have any major news corporations running hit pieces with my face on it uh, this this day. So, yeah, we're good. You got to yeah. get you like the little helmet that uh, Cobra Commander has. We'll call you Big <laughs> Commander. That's going to be a big-ass helmet. <laughs> well actually i've been doing a bit of research and i ran across a quote that i kind of want to run by you guys and see what you think so do you mind go ahead no go ahead see it. All right, so <clears throat> your feeling about having no forms and faces is merely symptomatic of modern soul sickness it is lack of confidence in one's creative power it is the root of homosexuality as understood in this country and all of these crazy movements. The Neothomists, the Bookmanites, and the Dadaists, and the Surrealists. Picasso took it far enough. He tried to paint a chair which could be not any particular chair, and therefore must have no color and no form. But as every chair, in order to be a chair, must have a support for the human frame, he did a horizontal line. But this is metaphysics and not art. All these half-sexed, half-witted people, sicklied or with the pale cast of thought, I cannot believe that any of them would ever command either the Exeter, the Ajax, or the Achilles. And any man who is not potentially capable of doing that is not a man at all. He may be some kind of pudding. And I hold no grief against puddings. But all these people who resent simplicity resent manhood. They weave their own oanistic web of nastiness. They are the shells cast off from the tree of life. These are the larvae of abomination. It has been your evil fortune to have far too much to do with such people without proper clinical training, such as would have enabled you to diagnose their malady. They have small orts of cleverness without any breadth of vision or balance, without the sense of space, of nature, of fresh air. So this was written by a Brit, probably around what, 1940-ish? A little earlier than that, closer to like 1910, 1920-ish. Yeah, it was very, very British, and I recognized all of the ships. Yep. <laughs> What's happening yeah. over there, Tim? I'm hearing a lot of crinkling. Um, I, you know, snack trays need to be filled. <laughs> <laughs> Drex, I got multiple snack trays on the run here. Oh shit! Well, you know what Gray's Gray's um, uh, reciting of that when he talks about pudding and what I got from all that was basically Hammer. We talked about this, Rishi. We've talked about it. These rudderless youth, right? Rudderless men in general. They, they like they they have no moral center. So because they have no moral center, they can be swayed anyway. You see what I'm saying? They're very yeah. bendable. They're very bendable. They're malleable, right? Yes. They're very malleable because yes. when 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 I go out and about, what I notice is that uh, you know, and, I've, and this is this is the funny thing. I've had lots of women tell me this. Women will shit test dudes to see if they actually have a backbone on dates. Hammer. They'll go like this. They'll say something ridiculous to see if the guy's going to agree with them, right? See if he's a beta. Beta males go like this. Mm, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Hillary's right. And there, there's like and and these women know like, oh, yep, you're bitch made. They know they're they are testing these dudes. Hammer. Feminism is a giant shit test on masculinity, right? Yeah, but what do they tell you, though, when you're approaching these bitches for dates and when you're trying to go out with somebody or trying to get to know them, they're saying that agreeability is a positive trait. 
Yep. And then they reject agreeability. That's right. Well, that's the shit so, test. I mean, women yeah. women are experts at spotting BS. I think that they're just one big bundle of fucking nerves and that they're all mostly confused and they don't really know what they want. They don't. No, they don't. They really you, that's you the female autism. Right, well, next I mean, you can you can say that they'll tell you, well, I want the six 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 devil Chad, you know, and that's cool and everything, but that's programming just just as well as anything yep. else programming. Well, well no, I they'll mean, you, say you that they this. want the sensitive man, right, Drex? But then what do they do oh. with the feminine oh, sensitive oh, God, guy? Never, oh. What's up? First <laughs> who's the person she's hitting up when he's at work? Oh man, I, I love it. Uh Hammer, I've gone my whole life getting the DMs from these chicks who are with these betas. And the beauty of it is, is that I, I, I've told guys this, when you're getting yelled at by a woman, when a woman is sitting there calling you an asshole, for those of you who haven't watched a great movie from the year 1990, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, live action. Uh, Hammer, I know you saw that shit. Oh, yes. Yo. Oh, Do yes. you remember the relationship between April O'Neil and Casey Jones? Do you remember how April... Chances. Remember this? But yeah. hold on, hold on, Hammer. Do you remember what happens when she writes about him? Remember, this is after Raph yeah. gets his ass kicked. No, but that's her private thoughts, though. Her private, yeah, her private thoughts. So, so publicly, great. It is amazing to see. She's always butting heads with Casey Jones. They get to the farmhouse, and then so she's she's now it's her diary, right? And she's talking about this is how Leo is coping. This is how Donatello's coping. And when she writes about Casey Jones, she's so this thing. The entire diary entry is her insulting and berating him while smiling and and, and batting out of the going. And then this Casey Jones, a nine year old trapped in a grown man's body, and she hates the fact that that she, so, her pussy's wet. While her pussy's she's wet. writing about it, she can't yep. stand it because she don't understand it. She is Yeah, she 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 looks at him gray. She loathes Casey Jones. He calls her toots. Honey, sweetie, yeah. baby cakes, and yeah. she's like, she's like, you misogynist. She, she's giving him the look, you misogynistic pig, and he's greasy. <laughs> Remember how greasy he was, Hammer? He was greasy, oh, yeah. right? I'm Mister Fixit. I am your. I'm Mister Fixit. I am your man. And, and, and Gray, there's a scene in there right before she makes this diary entry. She comes in from from doing some work at the house, and she goes like this: Casey Jones is going to grab something. And she goes like this. Oh, she rubs her. She's trying to rub, give her a massage, right? Casey recognizes this and tries to grab her in the same way that Han Solo tried to touch Leia in Empire Strikes Back. She goes, like, get the hell up off me. Do you know how he reacts to this, Gray? He grabs her and slams this bitch down right in the chair. You remember that? And starts giving her a massage. Remember that hammer? And how does, how does April react? She's like, oh, okay, well, that's God, over, yes. so let's get here. Yeah, 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 and all of a sudden it's cool. <laughs> the pretense is, is fucking gone now. So yep. let's just get to business. Let's just get let's just get to yeah. business. And it was a beautiful thing to see. But like, this is what what we got to see. The turtles were chivalrous. They they helped people. They were doing the right thing. In, in that movie, uh, you know what I, movie, it's the best turtle movies out. Easily the best turtle movie. Easily. And, and, and you know, Gray, you know what's sad about watching that movie now is that Shredder is taking in the misguided fatherless youth of New York City. That's yeah. the Foot Clan. Yeah. He indoctrinates them. Remember that? Yeah. Yep. And, and what does Splinter tell him? Master Splinter says, the Shredder does not care about you. He doesn't love you. He's just using you. Just like feminism uses these mo boys and girls. The girls these are victims too. are your family. Yes. I am your father. I am your father. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you should feel <laughs> That's what honor. it is out here. Yeah. It is. And like, you should feel proud. Yes. Well, you carry the I mean, honor of the foot. Of the foot. <laughs> it's just, oh man, that that movie, man, that movie brings me back, guys. It, it really does. Hmm. It's a pretty fucking good movie. Yep. That actually mm -hmm. brings up something that I was talking with Yidis about earlier. I guess I'd like to run it by you guys, if it's okay. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. So, I, I've been looking into like a bit of uh, kind of human development like through the ages. And one common theme I come across is a conflict of some kind. And then I'm looking at our modern society and seeing that we're kind of divided into three groups. There's Only the three? men, basically, roughly, yes. There's the men who experience constant conflict, constant pushback. The men who don't. And women who also don't. And the men who don't and the women who don't 
go batshit crazy. I think that's, in my own opinion, it's because they lack the intestinal fortitude to put themselves into the conflict, even to represent their own best interest. It's just my I'm, opinion. Oh, I was thinking, and I'm wondering, does that start in childhood? When they're not actually held to account, when there is no pushback, do they lack that resolve later in life when they really need it because they are so sheltered from it in their youth? Depends on the person. Uh, you certainly can't throw a big ass blanket over the population and say yes or no. You know, sure, it depends sure. on the person, depends on the decade, depends on the time that you're being born. You know, I mean, as you as you can see, anybody can see from the 1900s to where we're at now, we've lost a lot every 15 or 20 years. A lot. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I, it just depends on where you're at. It's like trying to compare generations of race car drivers against one another or who was the best quarterback from 30 years ago against today. It's just it's not comparable. It's you just know, got but, me wondering, does the human creature crave some kind of conflict oppression something pushing down on them for them to push back on yes because i see so many people yes who haven't experienced any sort of real pushback in their lives constantly trying to get that pushback by doing more and more outrageous things until eventually they cross a line that they really shouldn't have and experience a terrible consequence i believe they haven't looked within themselves first because yeah. I think that before you can even go out and tackle any kind of obstacle, you have to look inward, right? And one of the things I think we're, we're seeing now is that, especially with these single mother-led households, is that what these boys are doing is that they aren't having any, any uh, they aren't taking any accountability for their, their actions, right? That's why, if you notice, Desmond is amazing, right? That's Ugh. the true, true consequence of all this. Because you're gonna get yeah. to a point now where, as you're starting to see, they're starting to go after parental rights for men and women, Hammer. Oh, Gray, you've seen this, right? They're, they're basically saying, you're not gonna be allowed to be a parent. The state- Just Check your will... fucking school boards. Yep, Yeah. yep. The yeah. state and, will be able to, to educate your kids. And homeschooling Look, Hillary is Clinton, illegal. Hillary Clinton came out and clearly said that the state has more right to your kids than you do. O on national television, when she was asked that question, and you so, know she would have passed a lie detector test. She truly oh, yes, that. because they absolutely believe that. You know, it, it wasn't shocking, but it was shocking at the same time. Yeah, because she also said that there's got to be a public policy and a private policy also. Yep. So, and, and yep. she believes it. Rishi's they right. Have, they have the rights to train you however they see fit. They're the yeah. shepherds in their fucking... Absolutely. Oh, the narcissism. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm going to jump out. I'm, I'm going to jump off of that fucking wagon right now. Um, <laughs> you come and you tell me that you have the right to train me or to co-opt my kids, and you better bring your body bag with you, because yep. that's what's that's what's going to go down right there. And if it means that I go with you, then I go with you. But yep. that's that's not happening. Yeah, that's it's just happening. like what, what's the you know? Here's the thing though. What is the cost? Uh, uh, you know, this is this is uh, obviously figuratively and literally. What is the cost of your cheeks? Right, your manhood. Because I believe most people out here now, they they don't care, Hammer. They will get pegged. I believe most well, people, I know that. the state came up right now and said, we are going to do this, and we, I want you to bend over right now, and they're going to spit on a fucking giant dildo and fuck dudes up the ass. I believe most dudes out here would take it. Jack Murphy would go to the front of the line. <laughs> <laughs> 69 for 69. <laughs> He'd be like, <laughs> he'd be yeah, like coming up at the end. You, safely uh, say, you have a pretty uh, good... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk. Oh, go ahead, Gray. Yeah, yeah sorry, I, I can agree that at least 51% of the male population would agree to that, and that's very unfortunate. Oh, I man, it's much higher. Yeah, I, I, I think it's closer to 90. More than that. I believe it's closer to 90%. I, I, I say at least 51%. I don't know you what have the exact a good representation would be. of that, that metric that you're asking about right there of who did not go and get injected with poison for whatever reason. Yep. I, I did that, have a very that good number there. around my area. That would be about eighty to eight, like eighty-five to ninety percent of the population got injected. There you go. So no, no, no hold on, Gray. Fifteen percent. No, great. Now this is this is where it gets a little tricky, and I'm gonna tell you why. It, this is what bothers me most. 
if you have a legitimate reason to get to get the jab, especially if it was something like uh, you know, like hey, um, I you know, it was that or I lose my job and I have, to, I have a family to support. I, I can actually respect that. Now, here's where, where it gets a little tricky. How many dudes got the jab because of their woman? <laughs> right. How many lot, of them right? bitches were out there talking about uh, I, I no sex and no fun for you yep. if you don't get the fucking jab? If, you, yep. if you're unvaccinated, I'm not fucking you past this I'm not fucking you. No, right. no bullshit. I don't Drags. know about that personally. I do know at least one who got it strictly for the convenience of international travel, i.e. they wanted to be able to take their kids to Disneyland. No thanks to me. Nope. Wow. Nope. Um, Drex, there is absolutely one case, at least one case, of a woman who said, no, you have to sleep in a different bedroom unless you're wearing your mask. Oh, I'm sure there's oh, more wow. than one. I'm oh, sure yeah, I, I know I it's guarantee out there. you, we, I know we've seen enough. Oh. But, but you know, though, she only says that to a guy that she knows she can say that to. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because here's the thing. I've, I've had women say some things. I, like I said, I've told guys. I've, had, I've shown my, my text messages, right? I had women say some unbelievable things to me, Hammer. Unbelievable things about my life, and I just went like this: "It ain't happening." And they went, they fell in line. I, I should you not every single time. They, I had a girl tell me once, oh, "Drex, oh no, we're not gonna, you know, watch horror movies." You know, she said she didn't like horror movies, right? And I was like, and she said something. She said something real slick, right? Like, like basically, like she she expected me to cuck, and I'm like, "Well, I'll just leave you there. I'll go watch horror movies with somebody else." Okay, what what movie do you want to see? All of a sudden, she flipped, Hammer. That's all it took was me saying, I'll leave you. I don't give a fuck about these bras, man. Like, if you start trying to tell me, like, I can't do this, that's why when, when I hear these, these female dating strategy things, right? Let him hang out with his friends, Gray. No, you're not going to let me do shit. Let? let no, you're not letting me do shit. <laughs> there's, there's no let there. There's no I've let my me life, do I've shit. I've got my, my autonomy, my body, my choice. That's you right. Know, my yeah, wallet, my choice. That shit, right? My wallet, my choice. Yeah. Uh, that's if just if what you don't get the gun pointed at me, then. Like, it's my shit to do. And if you do have a gun pointed at me, well, one of us is leaving in a body bag, so yep. hope you're good with it. Yep. Yeah. A lot of people will tell you that, and then they'll cuck. They'll do it anyways. And uh, it's like, I just, I don't see that. They'll do the Will that. Smith route. But but you saw the way she looked at me, right? Oh, you saw the way she looked at me. <laughs> Someone put in a private chat. Uh, uh, I got into one little fight, and my mom got scared. Said, you can't smack Chris Rock because your wife has no hair. <laughs> that was just around oh, There you go, oh, man. There you go. Oh, that was beautiful. Um, hey, great. Uh, any last thoughts before we uh, uh, get you out of here? Um, you know what? No, I guess I don't have anything real quick. Thanks all for hosting me, and congratulations on 10K. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Do you have anything to plug? Thank you, Greg. Mm, Sir Yidis has some awesome stuff on Sunday I've been collaborating on him with, so check out his channel if you want to see some cool graphics come in. Well, speaking of cool graphics, yeeted. yeah, he got he yeeted himself out of here because I saw him in here earlier and he's gone now. But Aww. No, uh, uh, speaking of great graphics, Gray, uh, absolutely uh, shout out to you for um, the, uh, the Contra uh, gr art you did for us. I was wondering who did that. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Look yeah, man. Bro. That's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. Oh, it well, thank you as well. Man. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm open for that kind of stuff. So, like, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm on Chronic's Discord and Gilded. So, feel free to hit me up if you're interested in some kind of work. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always right. interested in some kind of artistic project. So, yeah, hit me up. Nice, you got it. Much appreciated. Awesome. See you later. Great. Uh, next up Thanks. is uh, Mega Max. Hey, what's up, gentlemen? What's up, Mega gentlemen? Max, what is up? Uh, nothing much. Just, you know, enjoying a Friday, end of the weekend. I mean, I got some chores I got to do Sunday, Saturday morning. But, you know, it's the weekend, baby. It's Friday. Oh, yeah, man. TGIF. Uh -huh. Now, Max, we got to ask you, man. Here we are talked about the uh the, the the very issue that chivalry ain't dead that like we have uh -huh. to what do you think is like the number one thing that we need to exchange amongst each other as men uh probably just the uh brotherhood really like you know that sort of thing of like mentoring younger men because one of the things is just making it so that jack murphy can't make a fucking living mm -hmm. is what we need to do because Jack Murphy only exists 
because there's just not enough guys around like you, Drex, to be like, look, guys, here's how it really is. Here's what you got to do. And it's one of those things of no one can really make you an alpha. You become no. an alpha through example, through sort of mentorship, but also just spending time with other dudes that are alpha. And that could be the form of any just like decent male role model. Who, who will tell you, here's what you need to do, here's how to, you know, shave or tie a tie, here's how you interact with women, blah, 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 blah. I, I sort of, fe- I do, in a way, feel sorry for the, you know, the suckers of Jack Murphy. Because if you're some guy who's never been told or just had a positive real, male role model around to where you can learn to be, an, you know, an alpha giga chad, where the fuck are you supposed to learn it? Yeah. So here comes along, you know, Jack Murphy, who thinks the way like Tim Pool's camera and stuff like that. He looks legit, sounds legit, has you know a decent. No, he didn't. Ear. He didn't sound legit. No, nope. he sounded rainbow to me. He didn't sound legit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He he, he looked the part. I've heard. I guess looked the part. I I haven't yeah. really listened to a lot of Jack Murphy shit because you know I don't care for it. Right. I had a, I had a father around the house, <laughs> but it's just Lucky you. Yeah, in fact, the the weird sort of thing was that my dad was the stay at home dad, but he he was like, I think it was more just a cost benefit analysis, and my mom had had an actual career in that she actually liked doing her job, sort of thing. Whereas with most women today, they get fucking jobs. Mm-hmm. They don't like the career woman is deluding herself as she guzzles her box wine into thinking I feel so empowered having this nine to five soulless, you know, wage cage slave job. Is she deluding herself by herself or does she have a lot of help? Probably a lot of help, mainly just like the culture telling you, yo, go girl, be the power girl. That's, you know, you, you can own it all. You can do it all. And it's like, no, you, you can't do it all. Someone's going to have to sacrifice a little in some mm-hmm. way. Well, what do you think is missing from the, the male sacrifice right now in terms of, you know, uh, I think like a lot of times, not even just in this space, but in our regular life, like a lot of guys won't go out of their way to help guys because like guys see other guys struggling, right? Like you can uh-huh. see, I mean, Elliot Roger, I mean, lives could have been saved had someone kind of peeped him and been like, yo, this dude is, he's kind of headed down the wrong path. And and he could be saved. Elliot Roger, I believe, could have been saved. Same. Before he started May, if that you crazy fixed shit. His, if you could fix his narcissism, I literally yep. think he could have been saved. Because there is no way Elliot Roger should have died a virgin. Dude was he, a he pretty didn't. boy no, with money. Yep. Elliot Roger's not a virgin. I don't think really? he was. No, I think I think he was. Well, yeah, he, he was a virgin. Had a girlfriend. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, could, he like his yeah. whole thing was like he wanted to get sex through a girlfriend, like you know that uh, sort of like lo- loving sort of sex that comes from, like that's not well, transactional. I could have sworn he had gotten laid once and nope. then he just couldn't uh, zero. He, he couldn't recap. Okay, uh, he never he never got laid even, even so. Uh, yeah, he went he went through okay. all that all that hatred and, and frustration, and you know I want to ask you, Rishi. When it comes to this space, because like I said, let's face it, especially with the younger with the younger guys, that aspect of controlling your fucking biology. Hammerhand has talked about that a lot. Rishi, what do you think that we need to teach guys uh, to be on some fucking night shit, to be nobles? It's controlling that body, controlling that fucking male thirst. You have okay. to remove the importance of vagina and relationship material from your life. In perspective to the young guys, I think what Absolutely. it is, it's like, they were sold this thing for so long and they can't like really it, they have to go through this whole process of getting like red pilled and realizing that most of it's out of their control so i think they need to learn to be a little bit more stoic if anything else uh, though one of the guys super chatted about uh jack murphy skipping leg day and i have to agree when i saw him storm off of the fucking uh <laughs> Skinny jeans, man. Oh, fuck you, fuck like you, fuck you. Oh, like, like, yeah, right there, Heartfelt, when he was storming off of that, it's like, why do you look 
Why does those those legs look so small? You look gay, bro. It's just like the skinny black jeans, man. sort of thing. It's, it's just it, like they're, dude they're the kind no of legs style. that they're the kind it's of legs that go up behind your head, right? This, this it's guy, like Rakeda said. Don't let your chin <laughs> and your heels be in the same picture. Oh God, mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things of like he that that guy there. He's like, man, that's a gentle creature right there. Yeah, he's a gentle creature. on a plate at Buffalo yeah. Wild Wings, homie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Dude looks like a uh, despicable me, you know that uh-huh. guy. Looks, from despicable. Looks very oh yeah, Gru. He's, He's got, got the anatomy of Gru. Yeah, of yeah. Gru. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Now, see, one of the critical so think- junctures you could have used to save Elliot Roger is the first moment he started uh, sitting at his sister's door while she was banging. That was the moment to correct oh, that. Oh God, man! That was the yeah. moment to correct that. You know, if, you, if you pick him up by the by the tuft of his hair, and you'd be like, "The fuck you doing, boy?" Uh, well, another thing. Well, too, maybe like, I, I think the part of the reason why he just went that pa- down that path was it's either like not my problem, he's sort of weird, or you know, just I don't you know I don't like this kid. He's just got that ego, and I don't want to deal with that. They either knew that there was a problem with him early on, or they ignored him to the extent that he became invisible so they could not detect a problem that was developing. Uh-huh. Yeah, and what that's probably more say? likely. Yeah. yeah. What do we always well, it's say? The, we say uh, that, like, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, it's more just like the, the not my problem. There's the, I think it's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where it's like cloaking doesn't exist. Instead, there's like a, a thing that you just turn on, a machine that you turn on that sends out a wave that makes it so you're not this person's problem. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that yeah. was sort of how like he got ignored. It's like, well, it's not my problem. Well, yeah, that's he looks of, like he's going down a bad path, but hey, it's not my problem. That's that's the atomization of our culture, and that's not an unintentional thing. You know, uh-huh. when the problem when the problem is isolated to one or two or ten folks, you would feel, in my opinion. Uh, the, uh, the obligation to reach out and try to give these people some assistance if they needed it. When you see 10,000 every day, every hour of every day, it becomes impossible. So you have to tune it out. You yeah, know, well, you drive yourself insane trying to think about how to fix it. Well, you yeah. know, millions of statistic. All right. You know, the death of one is a tragedy, but you know, the death of the millions, that's just a statistic. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing. Yeah. Nobody really cared about Elliot Roger until something went wrong, right? Until uh-huh. something bad happens, right? Nobody cares anything about these guys. And when it does happen, they ever like call people like Hammerhand a terrorist for talking about these issues. You know, and what did they do? I mean, they used this kid. Granted, he committed heinous acts. But by the time you get to that point, you know, you know you're war. Uh, I mean, you're uh, in big like, fucking trouble. Pretty mm-hmm. much. Like, at that point, it's like, well, if he's gotten to here, it's like there, there was a point where he was just long gone. Yeah, I agree with you. And then the only purpose that he serves is to vilify, demonize, and beat you over the head with him in his death. Uh-huh. You know, uh, Tommy Sotomayor said a long time ago that you are worth more dead than you are alive. That's mm-hmm. especially the black community. And he was talking about how when, like, some German Shepherd's kid gets killed, they will do a whole GoFundMe of, oh, my little oh, baby yeah. died. I loved yeah. him so oh, yeah. much. Now, oh, yeah. They didn't give a shit about him in, in real life. Probably weren't taking care to see if he was going to school, trying to get, you know, some sort of life to where eventually he'd get out of the hood. And then well, so once doing? they get... What was he Probably doing on the street at 3 some, in the morning? Yeah, that sort of thing. And so once he gets killed, either by a cop or by some other black person, they hit up that GoFundMe, help me, you know, bury my kid. Once she gets like $50,000 worth of GoFundMe, does like a $2,000 funeral or cremation and takes the rest of it to go to Vegas. Yeah. Not like we and she has like five movie, other kids to do this with sort of yep. thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not like you haven't seen that repeatedly over and over and over and over. You can go gorilla glue hair to your fucking head. Oh, and go find me. oh. it's just like Tessica I swear Brown. To God, man. Tessica Brown. If Tessica. you want to make anyone racist, 
against <laughs> black people. Just expose <laughs> them to German shepherds. You know, like, well, I swear look, to man. God, you know, the, the people who are de-radicalized from the Ku Klux Klan by, uh, what's the, Daryl Davis, all you, all the, some racist dude needs to do to drive them back in is like a compilation of German shepherds yeah. twerking at like a gas station, <laughs> at a you funeral, ain't be that, at a man. funeral <laughs> but, starting mean, Waffle House fights. Chimp out mm-hmm. at Popeyes. Hey, Drex, we got to show <laughs> Hammer the, the that video. The chip out of Popeyes. Oh, crazy broad. <laughs> that sort of shit. It's just like the degeneracy, uh, like how German shepherds like getting pounded by Nazis and skinheads and stuff like that. It's like, oh my oh, god. Don't, but they're immortal. Don't, like don't you can't ever kill... think that they don't have the slave master fantasy. They do, and oh, it goes they both love ways. It. They want it goes it both so ways. Bad. You know, David Carroll used to talk all the time about all of the romance, the so-called romance novels that were written by black women for black women. And it, it's fucking loaded with that shit. Yep. Oh, you know, that's I how you have that DJ it. that was running around a couple of years ago. DJ Kid, Jason, that, Jason Roger Pope. 600 fucking women gave like 100, 200 of them AIDS. Yep. Ooh. HIV. Yep. And, and Cause they lay down with this, they knew who he was. Yep. And they lay down with this motherfucker God. just to get his seed, take yep. it all raw yep. and then their, their life's over. They, they want that validation. No, they, but that just reminds me of they like want that the, validation. Uh, they want that fucking, uh, that nice hair. They want their mixed babies, mm-hmm. you know? They don't yeah. give a fuck about y'all. Yeah, well, that nope. reminds me of like the, when Jordan Peterson, one of his video lectures was talking about like, what do women find sexy? Like when you ag- con- aggregate all the things that women like that are sexy, it's like werewolves, vampires, yeah, pirate, Surgeon, I forget what the last thing was, but it's like bad all dragon this dildos. Stuff. They like them oh, too. Uh-huh. They like them too. They're all over the hub, all yeah, over that, the hub. And I think like the the thing with like why women are attracted to the thug sort of stuff is like there, there's a sexiness to the danger of it. It's like this person could like beat me or kill me or you know do something awful to me, but maybe I can tame him. And you know, you know what that's called? That's called hybristophilia. Yep, that's yep. it. Yep. We talk about a lot called. here. I could sort of understand like the adrenaline thrill if I was like having sex with some female serial killer who, you know, was a buff chick, and it's like, you know, any moment she could just reach around and snap my neck, sort of she thing. She can reach like, around any old time she wants to, baby. Yeah, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, 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 hold on, Hammer. <laughs> guys don't get off on that though. Like guys don't get off on dangerous women. Like guys, like okay, I guess if you were most to not, I could, I could sort of understand it maybe like the thrill of like, ooh, that adrenaline thrill of like, you know, could this be my last moment? Yeah, well, but but guys don't like our dicks don't get hard by the idea of fucking a psycho like Jody Arias or Casey Anthony like that. Like whereas women get off on I'm with the Menendez brothers. You see what I'm saying? I'm with OJ. I like they, they get off on that. Like guys don't like guys don't want psycho chicks. We we don't want no. Amber Heard. We can look like, at her and be like, yeah, uh-huh. because when we see a chick that's, that we find out is crazy, Hammer, what do we all say? Well, she used to be hot. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like once we know that she's crazy, we're like, eh. We like that's them girls my, that don't stab, philosophy. don't stab. That's my daily yep. philosophy when it comes to dealing with them. Uh, yep. Look, they can you can you can be a dime piece. Yep. You can be Miss Fucking Universe. You don't even know if it's Miss Universe anymore. It might be Mr. Universe. It might be Mr. Universe. <laughs> you just don't oh, know. All I all I think about when it comes to that situation, and I've been there many times over the last two or three years, is Okay, I say yes. Okay, we go to dinner. Okay, we get past that point. Now I'm in trouble. Because I can't get past the idea that something could go wrong. I'm not talking about on my end. I'm talking about she didn't like the date. So she and sorry's my ass. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> or she decides, oh, I just don't like the way that this dude looks today. So I'm just going to go ahead and fo- file a false claim. Yep. You can say that it's only happened once. No, it, it's happened Dude, thousands of times. One of my favorite times. things I've heard about yeah. was like... Oh. Yeah, I just two, don't fuck with them. You know, I think it was at some college thing, but it was like, you know, they both go to a party, dude and a chick. Like, they just meet there, they fuck. And then, like, the guy realizes, oh, wait, we both had drunk sex. But Title Nine, you know, I got sexually assaulted. Yeah, he's guilty. All that matters is who gets to it first. Yep. That's right. He's guilty. So if the dude gets there first, he's not guilty of rape. She is. Yep. So he's just like, 
you know what? I'm not taking that fucking chance. Fuck you, girl. And I'm just but like, man, it's not even nine out of ten, eight out of ten. It's not even her. It's the fact that her friends would be like, ew, you fucked uh -huh. that motherfucker. Yep. And then yep. she's uh -huh. instantly like, oh, well, maybe I didn't fuck that motherfucker. Yeah, and uh -huh. then, then you're just off to the fucking races. Yep. And he took advantage of me. Uh -huh. You know? No agency, no accountability, no intention of ever having either because they are enabled to be this way. Fuck, fuck them bitches. Fuck them all. Yep. Pardon me. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's oh, fine. Oh, we got to watch our language here. Please. Susan might want to. It's why we uh -oh. got uh, uh -oh. The repealing the 19th is a good start is all I'm saying. I, I've pretty much I'd gotten to that point along it, with other never things. Happen. Never happen. It'll never happen. I advocate oh, for it openly, but it'll never happen. Oh, uh, yeah. Mega Man, uh, or sorry, Mega Max, uh, you got anything, any final thoughts? We got to move on. You know, I, I sort of, I sort of wish the, the, the realist prospect didn't seem so doom pilled. Like I wish the realism was there was a little bit of hope and not like a, yo, we're fucked sort of thing. Man, there's a whole lot of hope. There's a whole lot of hope. Well, maybe yeah, once, I, once you I, realize that you have a problem and you have avenues to solve the problem, uh, you got a lot of hope. You simply don't have to engage with them. Right. Though you know? I think Drex, I guess the last thing will be is that uh, Drex, there's like a certain subreddit that you need to check out and maybe just go on there to give some bitches uh, the reality check. Uh oh. Because <laughs> they I think that's one is that? high about. Oh, I fucking forget. I could send you through. It oh, was please don't say it's FD, is it FDS, female dating strategies. Uh, female yep, dating strategy it. is the best. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you know Do you know that uh, I was actually mentioned on that? I think I put it in the chat. Uh, Miss Lore is the one. So, Hammer, I know a girl who goes on there for her own oh. entertainment, right? Oh my and she God. said, hey, Drex, they mentioned you. And it showed, and someone put my name in there saying, and there's this guy named Drex who was saying that. I'm like, wow, Dude. just a bunch of miserable bitches. Literally. Oh, they, like, they be like miserable. Delusions. They oh, be yeah. like utter oh, delusions. Keep your name out my wife's delusions. mouth. Yep. <laughs> They'd be like Drex. April O'Neil right in their little uh, suburbs. Oh, man. It's oh, so yeah. Drex. They ironically <laughs> think they're high value when it's just like, oh, this single moms, fat yeah. chicks. Or just like, I'm, that... I'm a career woman who's overeducated. And it's like, good job, bitch. You just priced yourself out of almost 90% of the dudes who would go be interested in you. But you're just like, yeah, you don't have a college degree. I'm looking for a man with a college degree and, you know, a nice job. And it's just like, bitch, really? There's guys up there way out. Or, what, what were you going to say, Tim? No, I was just going to say, uh, you introduced uh, Good Logic Joe to the uh, female delusion calculator. Oh, yeah, I, man. That I, I, think we should introduce, I think we should introduce Hammer to that. Hammer, have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen the female delusion calculator? No. Oh, Hammer, it, it's the best thing ever. It shows you that it's over. Like, like, you yeah. know it's over. I know it's over. Yeah. It, it shows you just how delusional they are. It shows you just are. how delusional they are, man. When you see I, I it like this. Oh. All right, I just don't need to be shown that. When I see a fucking <laughs> truck 50 tree trunk looking bitch talking about, I want this dude with six figures. I'm like, <laughs> six foot <laughs> six figures, yep. What? What? No, hey, he he needs I know my work. Six, six and ripped. You yep. know, there's this one that comes back to me a, a couple of weeks ago that I saw on another channel. And then this, oh, man, this gorilla wit looking motherfucker. She is sitting there talking about if you if, look, you've shown me that if you can accept me at 347 pounds, you can handle me at my best because I deserve that. Uh, I'm like, oh, God. OK, <laughs> were you like five two? delusional? <laughs> I mean, look, that's that's what has been fostered in this country and all yep. over the West. And it's, it's not an accident. I keep telling people they think that this is some kind of experiment going awry. I said, it's not. It's not an experiment. Not. This Max, is you got anything to plug? fucking intentional. Uh, I wish. Maybe I do need to start off a YouTube channel. It'd probably just be like some long plays of like how to beat 1999 mode for you know, <laughs> Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> the answer is do get it. the two pieces of gear that give you invincibility. That's how you yeah. do it. Yeah. Play like a bitch. Like journalism mode is retarded oh, journalism yeah. mode <laughs> Dude, just, look man i can appreciate a difficult challenge so long as it's fucking fair watching nick right fail on. through elden ring is the greatest thing ever <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout do, out to nick we got an but... up and coming uh what's his name again dark side phil in nick or <laughs> oh god no man come on
Come on! DSP, get out of here. Why am I toxic? Oh, God. All right, Max. Good to have you in, man. Yeah, we'll no see you problem. later. Later. Right, Peace out. Uh, Miss Mom is up next, Drex. Oh, hey, we got Miss oh, Mom. I love talking to Miss Mom. Well, hello. Hey, Miss Mom, good, how's it good going? Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah. I understand y'all are talking about chivalry tonight. Yes, indeed. Uh, it needs to be brought back uh, as the the code. It is the code that men used to have that they've obviously lost and have become these weirdo bastardized versions of themselves and we're we're trying to restore the chivalric code and what do you think about that of men reaching out and joining forces with other men regardless of what color they are where they come from to finally get shit back in order 100 percent, do it do it do it do it teach the young ones to do it <laughs> what would you give up to see that happen <sighs> what haven't i given up i've been trying to train one um my son is 22 he's in college he's trying to do all the right things he's trying to go through on scholarship and grants and have as little debt as possible once he gets out he wants to go into a solid stem field he wants to be an engineer um, and he doesn't have interest in the women that are out there because the women that are out there aren't quality women they're um let's see y'all have similes. Multiple similes. multiple words to describe them that I, that I are not part of my usual lexicon, so I'll refrain. But you know, three May or I four. Ask in you that a bit sort of a thing. personal question, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Is his father in his life? Yes, sir. Good. We've been married twenty five years. Congratulations. That's all I got to say about that. Congratulations. Yeah. That's a good thing. Good. But thing. I think I think a part of it, and this is part of why I wanted to chime in, is because. I don't know, maybe I'm weird, or maybe I'm spectrum or something, but I came into marriage with the idea that, number one, I wasn't going to change my husband, and number two, I wasn't going to control my husband. Funny how that makes for a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it can. Uh, I it always can. had the, the idea that when I was going to commit myself to somebody, which I've done twice, majorly, and both times, they were the ones that were stepping out the door with somebody else. Right. So it just is what it is. I mean, I go in there, if I'm, if I'm down for a day, I'm down for a decade, basically. You know, and then more, of course. But these folks out here today, they don't, they don't think this way. And they're exactly. encouraged not to think this way. So, yeah, marriage is dead. <laughs> Which is why I have no problem whatsoever with my son saying that he's not any interest in trying to hook up with a woman. Is he, I'm you know, cool being facetious that. or, or is he serious? No, he's serious. So he must be getting some exposure somewhere that's cluing him into what's going on. Uh, maybe Us. life. <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen, he was in the public school system from, because he was diagnosed early with delays, he was in the public school system from the age of three. So he was getting it from the very beginning, but the watching what he had to deal with going through the public school system having to interact with not just i i don't i didn't meet most of the kids that he had to interact with but dealing with the iep meetings with the aftermath of incidents after incident that would happen and then having the iep meetings go crazy because they're saying well the parents of this kid and this kid and this kid are threatening us because of your son it's like well mm -hmm. wait a minute you have this incident well this person tried to torture him. That person got in his space. That person tried. And all they had to do was throw up their hands and say, but we were just trying to be friends. Uh, and that was a get out of ticket, get out of jail free card. But because we, we had to deal with the special needs issues, we had IEP meetings frequently, which meant that I got the, blow, the blowback of it. And I'm sitting there going, these people did everything short of assaulting him in some cases, actual assaulting him. And you're trying to tell me that it's all his fault. I don't think so. When he got to high school age, we were in a position where we were able to pull him out and homeschool. Best decision we could have possibly made. We found out just how bad the educational deficiencies were. And we caught him up to speed on that. So when he finished high school, he actually had an education. He could actually 
read and go. write and do math. He tried to get a job because he didn't want to go into debt. He knew he wanted to go into college, but he didn't want debt. And he couldn't find work. And, and I think at least a part of that was be because he has a, some difficulty in dealing with people. And most of the work that's out there, you deal with people, mm -hmm. either, you know, customer service or food service or stuff like that. You're dealing with people. And, and, and so he ended up starting college, you know, a little later. He's almost halfway through. He did a tech school for the first two years. He's done scholarships and grants. He's completely debt free going into his junior year. Um, he's transferring in as an evening student at a military college where the day students are cadets. He's picked a disciplined field. He's going to a college that's got discipline and honors and chivalry and standards. I'm doing my level best to instill into him this is a code of conduct that you need to follow. One of the things that we started doing, um, kind of in, in part because of some of the stuff we had to do for the homeschooling curriculum, but we kind of kept it up after that, was every Sunday night we read a chapter of a book. And some of the books have been things like apologetics and, and that sort of thing. But we finished a couple of weeks ago a book called Raising a Modern Day Night. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what it was talking about was, it was aimed at dads. But a lot of what the book was talking about was, hey, you've got to instill in your sons this idea that if you don't have a higher calling and a higher standard to aspire to, you're going to come down to the level of the, con the common denominator. And the common denominator is lowering by the minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. And, uh, may I and, ask you, is the father sorry. involved with the reinforcement of these uh, philosophies that you are teaching? To a degree. Ah. There are things that I push harder because just because I'm here more. Such uh, as? Such as, uh, uh, what do you mean? So, which concepts? Yes. Or, what, do you, yes. what do you feel that instilling in your son is going to help him out here in a gynocentric society? Oh, glory. For one thing, having a very, very critical eye when it comes to female interactions. And how do you uh, make him aware of those female interactions, if I might ask? <laughs> yeah. We, we talk through some of the stuff that he's been through in the past. And then I say, okay, how does that translate? You're going to encounter women in the workforce. You're going to encounter women. There's at least one female in one of the classes he's in now, according to, the, I don't have privy to every single class he's in. Right. And I'm like, how are you going to interact with this? And, and he's just like, as far as I'm concerned, I don't even see her as a girl. I know that's a weird way of putting it. I just see her as she's there. She's another part of the class. Right. But she's not someone to be interested in because she's, you know, that's peripheral. I'm focused on my education. I'm focused on, I want to do my best and I want to get good grades and I want to, you know, proceed because I've got a goal in mind and I'm striving for that goal. And to him at this stage in his life, anyway, a female would be a distraction. And Does so he I'm, know that? <laughs> I'm not sure how conscious he is that, that he's, he's saying it. I'm the one who's rephrasing it as he's seeing it that way, but he's not seeing them as something that this is somebody I want to be interested in. And I think at least a part of my, I don't want to say goal, uh, one of the things that I would like to be doing or, or, or reinforcing at this sort of stage of the game is, yes, you're aiming for a goal, but I want you to put up safeguards because they're going to come after you because you're, you're positioning yourself to be high value. You're positioning yourself to be the kind of person that they're going to want. And so what do you want to look out for? What what mm -hmm. traps do you want to look out for? What pitfalls do you want to avoid? He's, he's going to end up being the kind of person that they will want to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 100%. Mm -hmm. and May I'm I ask you, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. No, when no, I say no, 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 you're not. If uh, Would you consider him to be a mama's boy? In some ways, and in some ways not. Uh, there, I'm 
grateful that we have an open relationship. I'm grateful that we can talk, but I'm constantly pushing him out of the nest. I'm constantly pushing him to go past what he thinks he can do. And uh, he, he wants my wisdom and advice, uh, but I want him to advocate for himself. And, and because he's on the spectrum, that's, that's been a long, long-term goal. I want him to get to the point where he can advocate for himself, where he can decide for himself what he wants. In fact, we were just having a, not an argument exactly, because he's transferring into a different college, we're having to go through, do we want to try and get the same accommodations that he had before? He, one of the problems that he has had is, is, uh, trying to get what's in his head out through his hand onto a page. He was almost diagnosed dysgraphic because it was so bad when he was younger. He's gotten a lot better over time. And he said, you know what? I have had the accommodations. I, I know it takes longer for me to write stuff down. One of the classes he's taking this term is dynamics. And he said, you know what? For dynamics, I t chose to not do the accommodation. And I was like, honey, why? I mean, you know, everything takes longer. And, and he said, because I want to get to the point where I'm not depending on that. I want to get to the point, you know, I'm transferring to the other college. I'm, I'm going to be in higher level, ha harder classes. I want to get to the point where I don't have to have the extra time in order to do that. And I, I said, you know, if you screw this up, they're not, and you ask for the accommodation midway, they're not going to let you go back and redo that other stuff. And he said, I know, but does I he, want to push myself. Does he demonstrate traits of masculinity? No. I, I think he does some. And I, every time I see it, I praise no. it. Er, uh, he stands up Your to version us. of masculinity, perhaps? Let's put it like this. What what kind of masculinity should I, mean, I be stoicism. trying to instill? Because stoicism. Incredibly strong mentally. He's, he's a lot further along than he used to be because he used to be a crybaby. And now yeah. he's not a crybaby. It's, it's coming. He's, he's not where I would like him to be. I would like him to be to the point where he could turn his back on me and say, Mom... I, I can do without you. And, and I'm like, it's going to be a while. I want him, I want him to be the kind of man that says, okay, mom, back out, leave me. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't happened yet. It's there, are, there are places where he does that. And like and, maybe and a minor tried, disagreement, but not like a firm planting of the foot. Like, fuck that. I'm not doing that. That's because the stuff that he's chosen to do thus far has been stuff that I'm in agreement with. I'm looking forward to the day where I can see what he does if we ever get into a true major disagreement. Yeah. Does, does he pick things in anticipation of your approval, do you think? I don't think so. Because mm -hmm. there, part of it is his personality and it's because he has it, laid back isn't what I don't remember the, the names of the different personality things. His idea of my favorite day is to go hole up in his room and work on something with programming or work on this new program that he got for his birthday. That, that is a world building kind of thing. Curvis something. Yeah, that can be pretty remember. fun. Like, Certainly can be. It can be very, very fun. So uh, I'm going to ask you another question. Uh, you say that dad is in the picture and you guys are married. What does dad do? He's a security guard. In fact, he's on shift now. He. Is he active with the boy? He's active with him when he's at home. And I think at least a part of the. I don't want to say rebellious thing is that my husband's way of interacting with him can be 
I'm trying to think of the right word here. He he tries to needle him. He he tries to to sort of get under his skin and see what kind of a reaction he can get. And that's one of the few things that I don't like. That there, there are healthier ways of of masculine interaction, and there are less healthy ways of masculine interaction. Does your husband make a habit of disagreeing with you and sticking to his guns? No. That's one of the things that I wish he would do more of, frankly. But yeah, he, yeah, he he doesn't sound like he's going to be the guy that's saying he's not. We're and, doing and this. I, and, and then, I like, try no to thing. put, yeah, and I try to put our son in, I mean, what we have to put him in, in contact with is the people at church and the people at school. You understand and, what, you, what you just said, right? I mean, now, once again, that, I'm, I'm not trying to go sense. after you. It means that you are instilling your version of masculinity in your son. Which is why I'm looking for other men to get him around because I don't want him picking up and he, I'm not going to be able to be masculine. I don't at, want him to think what what's masculine is what I say. At 22, I that's want him. Be hard sell. Well, he's like I said, he's on the spectrum, which yeah. means at 22, he's probably emotionally around 13 or 14, and it's going to be a long haul. And I keep trying to push him and push him go do this, go do that and celebrate what little victories we can get. So Indeed. again, I mean, part of the reason I follow you guys, part of the reason I listen to you guys and listen to your collective male wisdom is because I'm a mom in a situation where I've got a son that I want to be more like you guys. And I'm looking for the resources to, to I'm, I'm female there's limits to what I can do. And <laughs> well, that's going to be a first. <laughs> yeah, that's be a first. Role model. I mean, the, it, you know, he's, he's male. I'm female. I don't want him to be female, but I can't model male for him. Yep. So putting him in the position where he's around other guys, whether it's guys at school, guys at church, guys, you know, I want him to be around other guys. He wants to sit in his room and play on the computer. <laughs> hey, hey, Drex, uh, do you want to do you want to address no names comment here? So no name. OK, what? Oh, no he'll name be, said he'll be at a military, military college. That's that's what but one of the good things about that is that the, the next two years, he's going to be around military minded guys. Now, hold on now, Miss Mom. The military Sir. is completely cucked. Yeah, right, it is. they're cucked. I'll be right back. The military oh, ahead, Amber. is cucked. The, the military is totally uh, cucked, and I yes. I do have a problem with you sending him to uh, this particular place only because they've been just as compromised as the Boy Scouts. They've been as compromised as well. Uh, the reason he's going to be there is because the program of study he's in. There's only two colleges in the state that allow him to to transfer in the first two years from the the. Has tech he ever played sports? At. Has he ever no. played sports throughout his life? Because uh, one of the main places where I learned a lot of these things, I mean, obviously I learned them from my dad, but uh, the place that kind of reinforced it was uh, in the world of sports, right? Because I think boys, when they're coming up, they need that sense of competition. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the best competition is through physical dominance and struggle. Because if you're coding and all that stuff, like I said, I, I, as you guys know, I'm very – I'm very against this whole world of, uh, you know, everything being the computer, this computer, that guys sitting on computers all day because I'm like, no, no, no. you need to be physically doing stuff. Right. right. I want guys. I want boys getting into fights. I want boys to rough house. I want boys who have had like, you know, battle scars, because if they don't have that, what ends up happening is coding is one thing. But guess what happens? You know, like, let me tell you something that uh, Miss Mom, a lot of the women that cheat on their their partner. They are with guys who are high earning guys who are in the the world of uh you know STEM. You see what I'm saying? Because those guys make for good earners. But a lot of times, if, if you're asking the question, are they really that masculine? Are they are they, the, they are they the man's man? The answer is actually surprisingly no. You see what I'm saying? Correct. Because, and and you know, at least they're, part they're, of that is because stuff. those STEM fields are, are tend to be highly intellectual, 
and and it's a lot of those highly intellectual ones that get into the super crazy ideas especially the ultra feminism and the the stu- well the stupidity that is current but yeah and and so that's part of why i'm I, I mean, yes, I like that he's going into engineering. Yes, I like that he's going into something where he will probably have some degree of economic uh, stability. But I'm not real thrilled about the idea of the the higher echelons of the the intelligentsia coming back with this this incredibly beta way of thinking that he's likely to be exposed to yeah and well just, they, they've perverted so encourage sports is one thing encourage uh male interactions wherever we can push him into it be sure to um, get him into weightlifting as a as a hobby to get him off computers hmm. uh you know jordan peterson has often said you know find the heaviest thing in your room and just lift it you know what i'm saying like he there's a reason he says that is right. that you know it lifting weights uh, for these boys, raises their testosterone significantly, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you need weight training in order to do what? To build that testosterone, and then like you won't have that sense of like, but my mom, but my mom, it'll be more of, yeah, mom, I gotta go because I gotta go lift these weights. You, you see how you said that that's a different vibe as opposed to exactly. Well, mom's that's here. what I'm, I'm trying go to cultivate. That's that's yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. So yeah, weight, get so him so into lifting those, weights those is weights. one good thing. Okay. Yep. Because if the heaviest thing in the room is him, uh, that's the problem. <laughs> Just remember to plant the seeds for stuff like this. If you go, you know, ape shit and you start going overboard and trying to be domineer, domineering and push him into it, nah, you know, he, he nah. may respond to it at first, but it's not going to nah, be. He, he would, I, be I already option. know that, that if I try to push something, his, his instinct is to go <clears> 180 <throat> degrees. So if I'm trying to guide him in a certain direction, I certainly uh, and don't go ape shit, if you will. Yeah. That that's just the uh, nature of the uh, parent and child relationship. Right? Exactly. Nothing makes something un- uncool faster than your mother liking it. Right? <laughs> when your mother got on Facebook, all the kids went to TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so. I should I should be grateful that we we both like anime. I mean, when he was younger, we knew every VHS tape the library had of Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh. Um, <laughs> And there are some anime we both like, and, and plenty of anime that he likes that I don't, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. But uh, hey, Rise of the Shield Hero has got a new season. Stance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shield Hero is coming with a new season. I'm grateful for that, and that's one we both like. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of second seasons. Oh, uh, I want next... Goblin Slayer. That's the one I want the next season of. Oh no, we just summoned Koopa. <laughs> oh, ge- oh Jesus. <laughs> Uh, Drex, uh, it was great. <laughs> there's there's a certain anime that Miss Columbia has been eagerly waiting for that's supposed yeah. to come out this quarter. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, redo of Healer Season <gasps> 2 is coming. Healer 2 is coming? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's coming. All right. uh, oh, that Mom, one was great. Sir. Any, uh, a- any final thoughts before we get you out of here? Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm just going to keep listening and gathering what knowledge I can and, and see how I can subtly encourage weightlifting and that sort of thing. Well, awesome. I, like I very much appreciate the discussion, and thank you for the insight, Hammerhead. You're you're very wise. Uh, well, I, I appreciate you, ma'am, and I'm, I'm dumber than a box of rocks, but I'm getting there. No, <laughs> no, but but when you put enough collective male knowledge together, it's something that's worth listening to because y'all are actually doing something right. When I see the ones doing something right, well, I want to take notes, and y'all so are doing good. something right. So, Miss Mom, uh, hot poker or no poker? Oh, golly. No. <laughs> no, no, you poker. wouldn't use the poker? No poker. Okay. No. There, there, <laughs> right. are, there are better ways to deal with it than the poker. Oh, and the chat's saying... I'm probably uh, you're... weird. I'm the no poker class, but no, no yeah. poker. Uh, the chat is saying that your son should get into Undead Chronics videos and that uh, <laughs> he'll, help him, he'll help him lift. <laughs> You just go up to him and it's like, I don't like this undead chronic guy. You shouldn't watch him. (laughs) (laughs) All right. By the way, Rishi and Yidus, I love your avatars. Those are fantastic. (laughs) Thank you. Why, thank you. (laughs) Why, why why are you saying thank you? I made mine. (laughs) You bought yours. All right. Let's make that clear. What's up with all the aggression? I fired for two seconds. 
Yidus comes in here and suddenly everyone's firing shots at him. All right. I do, Mom. Right, I like it. I like it. All right. Thank you, Miss Mom. See you Thank later, you. Mom. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey, yo, you good, Rishi? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just saying that that was out of nowhere. Like, like make, up, make up. You're saying, like, why are you saying thank yeah. you? It's like, okay. No, I was, no, she said, you cool need to episode. kiss the mushroom cap and yeah. make up. Yeah, fuck that. Kiss oh. the ring. It was just out, that caught me off guard. One boy. of the few times in my life I was truly off. At least I'm in my own. You lazy. You guys don't like, don't ever suggest to another guy to kiss the mushroom tip. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Well, hey, uh, remember, hammerhead. Rishi Jack claims Murphy. to be a mushroom, not a real guy. Kind of weird. I don't but, appreciate you guys. It, kip, I mean, you just you just got sucker punched <laughs> worse than that one guy in high school. Did you see that, Drex? Wait, the high what? school running champion there. Uh, they were doing like um, a high school track meet. Oh yeah! And this was guy tough. was like had a big lead, and then some fucking uh, another runner comes in from the side, just sucker punches him what? right in the back of the head. What cost what? him his first place? Oh oh wow! I did not. Wow! I didn't. I didn't it was right yeah, after was the Will Smith slap, and it was a black runner. Of course it was. Of course. Wow. <laughs> well, that's how he caught him. Hammer. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they wonder why yeah. they don't take us seriously. Yeah, I know, right? And well, that doesn't, that doesn't just, apply to you guys that are doing the right fucking thing, man. Unfortunately, you get blanketed with it. You know, just like all of us white supreme pizzas. Yeah. We get blanketed with it. <laughs> so, you know, it just is what it is. All right. Well, um, uh, voice. Uh, voice is up next. Voice. Uh, was that? Voice of Free America? You're up next, man. Uh, then it's Vanish. Uh, then Carry On. Uh, Captain. No, oh, wait. Yeah, I think Captain actually got out and got back in, so... Uh, but yeah, that's that's the order. So the, there's four of you left, and then we can uh, we can take another round. So uh, voice, you're on. How are you? Uh, can't really complain, but who'd listen if I did? All right. What's up, voice? <clears throat> and not much. And What's just up, trying I'm to freaking deal with this lazy ass local government. <clears throat> Why? What are they doing? How how are they ruining your life today? Well, today, the rats that they've been insisting aren't here for the last three years managed to chew into the freaking electrical system for the building. Goddamn. Yeah, it took the whole goddamn thing out. Where are you at? Columbus, Ohio. There you go. Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh. (laughs) You know, it's funny. uh, Up here in Canada, our carbon tax kicked in today. Uh, so our gas shot up by 13 cents a liter. Outstanding. Which, uh, you, you, if you were to translate that. For, uh, for gallon, uh, a gallon of gas now, so. Yeah, if you were to, like, uh, make that equivalent to uh, U.S. dollars per gallon, uh, it added almost uh, something like 60, 65 cents. Yep. By instituting, and it was just a federal government carbon tax. Yep. Wow. As I tell them to take all their fucking shit and stick it right up their asses. So. Just don't need it. Don't need it that bad. But, oh, man. Uh, so, uh, who, that now, do you live in, like, a large kind of, like, complex uh, voice? Do you, so you have to go through, like, the local board uh, to get that dealt uh, with? Or the city? private owned, uh, just, like, three buildings. Although we've got the freaking township, the same township that's insisting there's no rats here, have been since they tore up the sewers right after they went and wiped out the feral cat population. Nice. These people kind of get their heads up their asses, right? Mm. Oh, severely. Mm. To be honest with you, if I didn't have a job here as a prison guard, I'd have been right the fuck back to West Virginia first chance I got. Man, you can find a job just about anywhere, brother. I mean, if it's that bad, I mean, you know, get the fuck out of Dodge. Well, also, uh, as a prison guard, I'm sure you have no shortage of work in Columbus. Nope. Not oh, no, man. These motherfuckers are doing nothing but, but fuck shit, getting in trouble. Uh, well, yeah, let me ask you this. When I was growing up, they shut down all that stuff here to hear oh. my neighbors talk about it. Hell yeah, back in the 90s, they shut down the ability to party at home with some friends. God they damn. shut down so much shit to where the only things that were left were shit you had to pay for. That's sad. Now, now Voice, I got to ask you this. 
if you are in the penal system, what have you noticed that is that they do that is chivalrous as A and how they got there, I'm assuming is a lack of the male father figure in, in their lives is B. Yeah, well, to answer you first on B, here's what I've been saying. Most of these motherfuckers that have been coming in were coddled by mama. Daddy wasn't there. And nine times out of ten, it was the fucking golden child. If yep. There were multiple kids in the goddamn home. Yep. He could do no wrong, right? And because of that, he was able to just do fuck shit. And mom covered for him. And then now he pushed it too far, right? Basically, he was feminine. He was trying to shit exactly. test. Yep. Exactly. And I'll tell you what. I was seeing the same shit before in the Navy. Hell, part of the reason why I left was because it went so fucking woke and cucked. Oh, the military's done. I've been saying this for you. You just said that earlier. Now, I got to ask you, what chivalry do you see... Uh, with you know the the prison system is considered the condemned members of society. What do you see amongst men in that system that you can say is admirable? To be honest with you, the fact that for the most part they will actually look after their own. You get little gangs together, you get little cliques together, and they will actually stand up for one another. Do you believe that they stand up for each other more so than people on the outside? Oh, hell yeah. I'll tell you what, out here where I live at, a motherfucker will snatch another motherfucker's purse, wallet, whatever, just for fucking bus fare. Mm. Hey, man, did you see that video a while ago? It was a good month or so ago, maybe when it came out, where this cop was arresting this cat, and he had his back, he was sitting on him, and he had his back turned to the guy's head, and some folks come up and tried to rip the chain off of his fucking neck <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> while they were arresting him because oh, the cop couldn't see him. Oh, no. Did you see him? Because the, the fucking oh, girl yeah, tried it, then the guy good. tried it, and then the cop kind of looked around when, when the guy started struggling. The cop looked around, and he's like, get the fuck out of here. They were trying oh, to rip the guy's gold off of him while he was being arrested. God damn. Ain't that some shit, man? Uh, you remember where it was, uh, Hammer? It was in some, one of these urban population centers, and I cannot remember which one it was. But I'm, I'm sure that if you you just put it in YouTube search, you know, I'm gonna guess stealing Chirac. chains off of somebody's neck, you know, that would be just as good as any, you know. I'm but yeah, that was, was that was fucked. Up. Yeah, there's people in the chat now saying, yeah, they saw that. So yeah. Oh, so yeah, damn, <laughs> gold I'm, snatchers. I that. Yeah, man, we got a list of videos we got to look up later when we're all done here. Uh, Voice man, you got anything else? Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah. Be honest with you, every fucking young man should be given a sex at all once they turn 18. Told Hulk smash that until you build a future for yourself. And then tell these bitches, you know what? I've got something to stick my dick into. What are you bringing to the goddamn table to make me throw that out? Well, you know, though, that goes back to the dick discipline, uh... Uh, voice it really does go back to the dick discipline because i i still say i don't I, I think there's two components of the red pill that i think has to be in imparted first before you can do anything else before you can get into all this you know uh you know self actualization blah 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 i think there's two things you need look within yourself and your own environment is a and then b you have to know how to deal with women you know what i'm saying because hammer you could be one of these guys, and you and I both know. A guy's, oh, I'm, I'm red pill, bro. I'm red pill. And he just knows these are the same dudes like in the military that go marry a fucking stripper. Every day. And so then that when you're on deployment. Times, Every day. And in fact, I've got a story from the military to tell you guys. Uh-oh, go ahead. Okay, I was a search and rescue corpsman. Basically, go out there and rescue people who freaking needed it among the Marines. And I can't even tell you how many freaking Marine Corps pilots we had to go and bail out. Well, the guy who flew my chopper, he was Asian. He married a white woman when he was told, we're going to have to go overseas. Mm -hmm. He fucking comes home. And remember, he's Asian. She's white. He comes home 16 months later to a newborn half-black kid. Uh, 
And on top of that, she took it to the fucking state. Yep. And it's one of those goddamn states where if you were married at the time, you're the yep. father and yep. you have to fucking pay for the kid for 18 goddamn years. Damn. Yeah, you, you don't have to do that, but you got to fight your way out of it. You have to fight and, your way out of it. Yeah, and he how, got many, how many men want to deal with that, too? Like, that's not an easy fight. No, there's no dealing with it. I mean, it, look, if you have an ounce of self-respect, there's no dealing with it. There's Most there's no amount of pain that is going to be worth the fucking humiliation that that is going to bring you. Pain yep. for someone else's kid. Oh, and no. I bet while he was on deployment, he had a little picture of her in his helmet, and she's like, yeah, and he's like, yeah, this is who I've got back home waiting for me. Yeah, that's she's that loyal. She, she, she thought process daily. Yeah, yeah, it was taped to his freaking uh, oh. helicopter's oh. Put, or control panel. Oh, Drex, isn't that cool? Don't you just love charm. stories like that? So it seems he that Jody strikes again, huh? Charm. Fucking yeah, Jody. Is. If, if you think there's still hope out there, Drex, uh, uh, first of all, you're not listening. Yeah, well, one of the things that I always make sure to tell guys is, is really simple. Hammer, my goal is to eliminate the hope in men. I don't want men having romantical, you know, this romantic love hope. Uh, it has to be killed off entirely, right? And yeah, then you have to, I agree. You have to do gender right. segregation because that's hope is what's killing the world. All right, the hope of men is what's killing the world. It's not these bitches acting crazy. It's the dumb and dumber mentality. So you say there's a chance. That's yeah, what's gonna, causing all these problems. Yeah, I, hey, I Drex, agree. Uh, yep. There are what, what? 150 yeah. million men in America. There's 150 men looking for unicorns. Drex. Yeah. And, well, and they're all bitch made. You know, these guys don't understand. I mean, like I said, I the biggest black pill you can ever swallow, if you want to call it red pill, black pill, is when you're the side dude. You learn more by being the side dude than you will ever learn in any on any guy's red pill channel and all this other shit. And they got their lessons, the 33 secrets, whatever this shit is. Oh, no, no, no. Just be the side dude and, and hammer. You will look, you just knows you just saw some shit in the military, right? It is a red pill fucking uh, bastion in the service because uh, by being the side dude, by being like, wait, you're saying the commander's daughter is, oh, shit, and she's got a train ran on her? And then here he comes being a simp, <laughs> being a simp. Oh, shit, man. It's I can bad, tell you some stories uh, about running through commander's daughters, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. How, let me ask you this, uh, voice. What is what is the issue with like commander's daughters and all that stuff? What, what do you think is like their, their main issue? Just like they want to defy their father. What do you think is the the main thing that caused them to be turbo thoughts? To be honest with you, I think it's that they're trying to seek the love that daddy didn't give them. I mean, because yeah, they're moving around a lot, right? Actor, not only that, but also the dad, like with the base commander, he's got to pretty much sacrifice his family to hit that position. That mm -hmm. means very little time with the wife, very little time with the daughter. And, you know, that screws with a girl just as much as it does a boy. Mm -hmm. So yep. when she doesn't get daddy's love enough when she's young, she'll fucking see it in the dick of whatever type of manner daddy was or whatever type of manner daddy hated. Yeah. Uh, one big red pill that I learned when I was in and it's true everywhere. 99% of the time, women are never single. Ever. Never. I always have somebody on the side. No matter how much she wants to hide behind her pure, oh, I'm holier than thou uh, facade. No. She always has a dude ready to go. The it's, preacher's daughter, the commander's daughter. Yeah. It's, it's, any man oh with authority, God, his daughter's a thought. Daughter's the yeah, worst. It's so wait, who'd you say was the worst voice? The pastor's daughter. Yeah, yeah, easily. By far. Yep. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you what. The commander's daughter might chase after all the soldiers on the base, but that pastor's daughter... She's fucking chasing anything with a dick because of the fact that she's pissed that daddy's giving more time to God than her. Yep. Oh, the the homeless guys, the drug oh, addicts, man, the people so at the bad, soup man. kitchen, right? It's like you grab you grab soup from the soup kitchen, you go into the back room and uh, you know drop a load in the preacher's daughter. Yeah, the re uh, uh, religious girl is definitely the freakiest by oh, yeah. far. All right, voice, can you do me a favor? Can you tell yep. me that uh, you like to sell propane and propane accessories? 
I like to sell propane and propane accessories. <laughs> Perfect. Our man Hank, <laughs> my dad. Oh, dad. Oh, I'm not right, you're gonna take me to the game right, today, man. <laughs> that boy ain't right. Uh, boys, thank you very much for calling in, man. Anything you want to plug before you get out of here? Uh, not really. All right, have a good day, y'all. Calling, boys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you. you. Uh, but yeah, Jody strikes again. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, he's always yeah. lurking in the shadows. Always. Vanish, what's up, how are guys? you, man? I'm well. What's up? I, I am back. Drex, uh, Vanish called in on our on our Valentine's Day stream. It yeah, was I remember Valentine's that. Day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've been waiting to get him back on the show because he had a story to tell you. Oh uh, yeah, I was kind of hoping that I'd have more time, but uh, I found out recently that um, MGTOW is the truth. Red, like everything Hammer has been saying, Drex even say it's the truth. Found out my sister has a fucking OnlyFans. I'm not laughing at you, man. I'm not laughing at you. That's just horrifying. That's, oh, that's that is fuck. traumatizing, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, you want to know oh, how I felt? I was up, talking man. to my youngest sister. Yeah. I was literally bullshitting with her. And I, was, I turned to her. She was drawing. And I was like, hey, you need to start uploading this shit to Twitter. YouTube or something because I don't want to see you on OnlyFans. And my sister turns around and says, What's wrong with OnlyFans? Oh, uh, the oh. German Shepherd head snapping everything. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, no, what did I just see? bro. No, bro, not I, only I, said, I mentioned this on Rakata's Discord channel. I've been getting roasted every time. And hey, you got those details. I want to see this. <laughs> oh, no, I don't, I don't know. know how to react. And I don't want to know. <laughs> Bro, oh, I would not no. know how to react. Not OnlyFans. Man. No, no, not no. OnlyFans, man. No. You've got to disown that. I'm not You've got kidding. To. I, it's, there's not man. much else I can do. Because hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, not, not. I basically have almost done that. I, just, I really don't go for term for much of anything. The, the what got me the most is that what times when they needed help. <laughs> Yes, it is emotional, emotional, emotional damage. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so what went vanish? What went wrong with her? Uh, well, my sister is okay. So you imagine a black, light-skinned girl who was very attractive, and fill in the blank. Yeah. Very and and after, and they my the dad's a minister. That. So you fill in the blanks there too. Oh, your dad's a minister. He, he's a minister, but he never actually ran a church. So we were in a church growing up. And it got to a point where my, there were a couple of people that my sister was into. And I would tell her, those are not good dudes. But they're so pretty. Uh, what? They're pretty. That's the kind of person who voted for Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Drex, his, uh, what kind of shampoo do you use in your hair? That was that was the question of a reporter during his election. <laughs> I swear, I it's you know so what? Bad, I swear to God, man, I could pull up the video. It's There's so a reporter bad. interviewing Trudeau about why he should be the prime minister, and one of the questions out of his mouth is, "So, what kind of shampoo do you use in your hair?" God Almighty, God help it's us just, all, man. You help, dude. It's 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 yeah. just too late for you. So, hey, There's so no being from Canada, right? You know, uh, the you heard the latest shit where they failed to disclose that they were getting a kickback on every single injection. Oof. Right, well, and they didn't I tell that was, motherfucker. Uh, That's why they I were thought, pushing it so hard, right? What's well, funny? We know why they were pushing it so hard. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always been about controlling money, man. Always. Always. Yeah. I, I this went, surprises no one. No, I, uh, Hammer. Canada is the country that features the uh, rape shield laws. I talked to Drex about this last week. Oh yeah, uh, and Super and press because we had a Canadian guest on here. Um, this came out of the Gian Gameshi case. Where yes. a bunch of women me too. Oh, you know that case, right? They, and he showed yeah. the receipts. Yes. Oh, I had a great time last night, Gian. You're yes. so sexy and handsome. Yes. Yes. And now the government's well, we can't we can't be using we can't use these girls' words against them. That's not allowed. Yeah. Right, Hammer. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we're going to do anything in their fucking power to get that uh, percentage of of rape conviction where no rape or sexual assault took place. Mm-hmm. And that's been institutionalized, you know, in Canada. It's being institutionalized here with Title IX, you know, amongst Castro. other things. So Castro. I'm sorry about that, Vanish. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, it's, it's fine, Hammer. I mean, when I 
uh, like I said, I, that was a sidebar because the previously when I was on here before, I revealed that my dad is probably secretly gay. And by secretly gay, I mean <laughs> so and my family to go live with his best friend. And they've been rooming together for almost 10 years. So okay. your dad's on the DL. How did the sister end up on OnlyFans again? Drex, this is a mystery to me. I, da well, dad's on the DL. Raised, <laughs> we're raised by the same parents. And four out of five kids have their heads on straight. Don't There's know. always one. There's, there's always one. I, you, you can't fix. So there's some things you just can't control. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I was trying to rack his brain to try well, and add one never. plus one equals three. Well, my dad is one of those. Um, he's what you would call the quintessential mama's boy. He was always under his mom's. Uh, mother, what did we just get him talking about? Four, five, six hours talking to his mom, but would spend a minute talking to his dad. Yeah. Uh, we just was got his done dad talking like? To somebody about that. What were the? Were your grandparents, right? Uh, his yeah. parents, were they together when he was being yeah, they raised? Were together. They were married since, uh, basically, but, well, because the era they grew up in, um, my grandfather married my grandmother when she was 16, and they stayed together for the entire time. And they, she, basically, she ended up becoming a widow because my grandfather died of testicular cancer. Mm. So Get him checked, know. guys. Yeah, I was going to say, get him checked, no, for real. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, God damn. Show up until like he he did those regular checkups and he just happened to go in, you know, for his regular checkup. He said he felt a little off, scheduled an appointment when he checked. Yeah, I mean, he got testicular cancer. I just got damn. checked two months ago. It happened that quick. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It hit him wow. that hard. But he, I mean, they, they gave him a year. He lasted five more. It's good for him. Yeah, that's that's always the thing. Is every time a doctor gives a timeline, it seems like everyone lives longer. The will the will to live is very strong. Yeah, very, it got very, to very strong. the end. The reason why he was pushing so hard to keep, he was like, "I don't, uh, I'm not gonna leave the my family without anything left." You know, basically, he's like, "I've got everybody taken care of." He was that kind of man, and yeah. I'm just, I look at that and I'm like, "How and did it, my dad end up the way?" He <laughs> How did my dad? And it happens, you know. Like, like you can do. Hammer and Drex, I think this is uh, an important lesson for everyone. You can do everything right and still come out with the wrong result. Many of us did. Yep. So. And, and what's you know. that is, I was very more along that feminine energy bullshit. And what happened, what woke me up was getting accused of sexual assault twice oh, in the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. Fastest yeah. red pill yeah, on got, the planet. Before, yep. before I got to, like, I was the gentleman, because I, I told Hammer this before. But I don't think I mentioned this last time, but, you know, I was that nice guy, gentleman, always frustrated because they could never get a date. And all these girls tell me, oh, you're so nice. And I want to date guys like you. Or I wish my boyfriend was like you. But they would never uh, pick me. And I was just like, okay, well, that's bullshit. And so when I started cutting bitches out, then they were like, that, that's when they wanted me. But at this point in time, I've already killed you off in my mind. You're dead to me. You don't matter. Yep. And that's mm -hmm. when they wanted. And that's when I realized that these little things like that when I got me too before me too was a thing because this happened in like that was in arizona at the time i think that was 2006 so that was um, Damn. 16 years ago i was yeah because i was 19 20 around that time and I'm, i'll mm -hmm. be 34 this year so that was a, that was a good chunk of time ago you know and when you get when you get hit with the accusation where you're they're saying the cops are coming you better hope that this uh, security footage you're talking about exonerates you. And they bring Damn. it in and say, never mind, we're, we're going to tell the police we don't need them. Like, this close. This Damn. close. You, you think about the dynamic that's involved in that shit, where somebody's looking you in the face and saying, I am going to send you to prison until something comes up that counteracts what they've said. You're on the way to prison. Your life is over. Yep. And I like, moment, I the like, willingness of a fucking cunt to do that, of a bitch to do that, it's not limited to one person or 10 or 20. It's instilled in them now. It, it's the default mode that they carry with them. Mm -hmm. And the, what, what triggered this, it wasn't anything that I did. It was the girls that she was friends with, they came up and told her, I don't really like him. Yep. He's an yeah. asshole. And they were talking mad shit. And because she 
enjoyed interacting with me. The sisterhood always sticks up for each other. They're always oh. gonna be best buds, and that's why I don't fuck with women. And yeah, that right, in right, wrong, or indifferent, they will back those motherfuckers to the wall, and I've they don't it. care whose life it fucks up. Nope. It happened recently where I'm in a, oh, so this is a workplace comment uh, or story. So like b before I mentioned drugs, I work in an office because I got uh, injured in a warehouse. Um, basically, I I found out recently I had the knee of a seven year old. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, any physical labor is done for me for, until I can get my knee fixed. Um, but now that I work in an office, I just work with a bunch of married women. And what I've realized is that anything that goes against the female narrative is just going to get slapped down. They were talking, um, another guy joined the office and he was saying, I don't care if a woman talks shit to me. If she's coming at me and attacks me, I'm going to slap the shit out of her. And then all the women were like, you can't do that. I'm like, if she's cut and I turn around, if she's coming at me with threats of violence, I will treat her like a man. Equality is a two way street. You don't get to have your cake and eat too. I will slap a bitch. Yep. Yeah, the, the, these chicks are different. I got to ask you this, though, uh, Vanish. When it comes to the, the issue of chivalry and men looking after each other on some night shit, I got to ask this question. When you got Me too once and Me too twice, how did the guys treat you after hearing these allegations? Did, did the guys stand up for you and, and were in your corner? Oh, no. Or did they cook? They, oh, they put no. for the females, Those right? Those were silent. Yeah. I turned around and I'm like, yo, you guys are right there. Say something. None of them wanted to speak up. Yep. Because yep. what I found out later is that those guys were actually sexually harassing women in the workplace. Yep. They yep. were afraid of catching a, a bullet later. Yep. Yeah. So why didn't they say anything about the guys that were actually doing it? Because, the because they, they have they a different role. We, we, no. Nice guys are second place. They're, they're what women think that they want, but what they want is that guy who will come into the office and just grab an ass cheek full. Oh, it's much more sinister than you that, know. my friend. It's it's much more sinister than that. Well, they they, they see they fellas do. like you or, or me or, the, well, not me anymore or, or anybody else. I don't put myself in that position anymore, but uh, they will they grab a hold of you and they stick you in orbit. You get to be the emotional tampon. Mm -hmm. This one over here gets to be the one I cry on his shoulder. This one over here is the one that I humiliate on a regular basis. This one over here pays my fucking rent. This one takes me to dinner. It's every one of them. Every one of them. Yeah. And I, you I, have I to be smart enough problem. to know what time it is. You have to be smart enough to know what your role is. And if you're unsure, do not accept a role. Exactly. I, I've cut women out of my life. Other than my mom and my two sisters, and even really then, it's just my youngest sister that I spend more time with. I've cut them out of my life. I don't have time dangerous. for fuckery. No. You know, I've spent my own prison on strength real quick. So last time I was telling Hammer, I'm in a gun plot. This is 600 hours worth of work. And this isn't all of it. This is just a part of this hanger that I made from yeah, scratch. Very nice. Very nice. Hours. Good job. I just finished it the other day. I don't have time for women. I got too much shit to do. I got, uh, I'm just getting into the car scene. So I'm building my uh, Hyundai Genesis up. You know, I got an aftermarket exhaust that I'm going to put on it next week. You know, I've got Gundams. I do art. I do 3D modeling. I program. I've got too much shit to do to be worried about a woman. I, there's, I'm not friends with any woman. And the last woman that I was a friend with, um, she doesn't matter to me anymore. Because cool. she'll come in and try to grab my attention. But I'm like, you blew me off. And then played. Because I've said this before. You know, happened to her for years. I liked her. I was like, hey, you know, she would always tell me about how no guys appreciate her for who she is, uh, and that she would want a guy. And well, she would always say this to me. So I'm like, I thought she was sending signals. I'm like, hey, I do like you. She wanna No, I only see you as a friend, and you know I knew you always liked me. And I'm like, this motherfucker. So you wanna know why I did? I ghosted her. I fell off the planet. All of my friends, tell me why all of my friends, even the ones who knew what she did was fucked up, told me I was wrong. Yep. yep. Every single one of them. And it's at that moment in time I said, fuck this shit. Yep. You think your, your friends, those so-called friends, you don't think that those men were not observing the hierarchy in that orbit? Of course oh, they were. 
Oh yeah, they were. They definitely were. That of course they were. In, in our group, I I essentially pushed her out because I realized you're toxic. I don't want you interacting in here. So I like when I said I ghosted, I made it so awkward for her to be there that she stopped interacting. She made her own Discord server just because I because I owned this Discord server that was for our group. Originally, she was considered a group founder. I made the Discord server because I was tired of Skype because this is back when Skype existed. They were hooked on it. I'm like, no, fuck this. I'm tired of Skype. The updates are stupid. The audio is garbage. Discord actually kind of functions sometimes at this mm-hmm. time. Um, and even then, Discord seems to be repeating the same bullshit that all these other apps do. And I'm just like, uh, I'm at this point in time where I'm like, I'm about to program my own shit. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm done. I'm done with this shit. I'm tired of woke bullshit. Uh, um, I actually said this to Young Rippa. Um, I sent him a super chat the other day. I am so tired of the woke bullshit. I am going to be the change that I want to see. I'm not going to wait for somebody else to do it anymore. That's what I did that for so long. That's cool. So well, you I've, you I've need to, well, because you know I, I've always said though, vanish is that what a lot of guys do is they'll say like, oh, I have a problem with this, right? And it goes back to what I was telling Hammerham, complaining is saying, yo, this woke bullshit is bullshit. That's complaining. That's valid. What whining is is saying, it's all woke. It's all woke. But they're not doing anything. When you're doing something, then it's real, right? You complain about what you you see. I don't like what I'm seeing, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the the initiative. And go do my own thing, which is what you're doing. That's what we like to hear, man. Yeah. And uh, it takes solace in the fact, Vanish, that someday a man is going to wife up your OnlyFans sister. That's already happened. That happened before. What? Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Let me tell you this. Okay, so I, her her husband. Here's what's messed up. I oh, there's more. This guy. Okay, this is a complex story. <laughs> There's some fuckery going on here. There's fucking onion layers on this shit. There is onions on onions. So get this. My sister was into this pretty Hispanic guy. He took over her house, and she says that they tried to have happy fun times in the bed, and she was like, "No, I don't want that." Air quotes. I don't know what to believe. Because understanding what I'm going to say in the future, you will be like, yeah, I don't buy that shit. And understanding female nature, I'm like, yeah, I don't buy that shit. So fast forward, I, I was on DeviantArt for a long time. <laughs> so I was on DeviantArt, you know, posting my art and stuff like that. And I would comment, and there's this guy who I noticed his pictures of like this photography. I was like, yo, this is pretty cool. And I was talking to him on DeviantArt. Somehow... I guess he found my sister either through me or she found him. I don't know the out of it. But they dating online. She then goes out to visit him and his family up in Delaware. They link up an event. He comes back to visit us and stays with us out in Arizona for a good couple of months. I get to know him more because, like, again, this is a guy I knew online. We talked, like, almost every day about random stuff. We were talking about Halo, you know, Gundam, anime, all this sorts of stuff. So it's like, this is my friend, too, and my sister's into him. Like, I don't care. It's got nothing to do with me. Because even at this point in time, I had already been me too twice. So I was getting to the point where I'm like, I'm over this shit. Um, so I was very much focused on like, hey, this guy's cool. I'm like, cool. So we were just hanging out. And I noticed, started noticing little things like that were a little off. I'm like, hey, it's not me. That's her. I can't. Uh, she's not going to listen to me anyway because she never did. I would tell her, hey, you shouldn't wear that dress to school. Or you shouldn't wear that skirt to school. I literally told my sister, you're not leaving this house until you go put on proper clothes because she tried to go to school looking like a thought. Mm-hmm. She is Many a thought. Because she is she, a thought. She, she was is trying to thought. wear a mini skirt to school. I'm like, no, go put some pants underneath that shit. You got to hook them at the schoolyard too? Yep. Yeah, and the, the oh, sad man. thing is we were homeschooled for most of the time. So Fast forward, you know, she has her first kid. So she gets, um, she and her first pregnancy was, ooh, that was trouble. Um, so she had some blood clots and all this stuff like that that happened ooh. during the time. And so her first pregnancy was rough, very rough, like in the hospital for months at a time. My mom went out with my youngest sister and they stayed with her to help, you know, during the whole process. Um, and so we fast forward a little bit more. You know, now her first kid's here. She's coming to visit us because now we're back in Virginia from Arizona. 
and my sister comes to stand with us and there's some weird things that are happening like some very sketchy stuff like single mom level shit with kids like putting your kid out in a garage and telling him you're not coming in until you fix your behavior and she's screaming like she's dead that level of bullshit I, and keep in mind i work at the time i worked at graveyard shift i woke up and i was pissed i stormed out of the house and my sister got offended but i'm like motherfucker this happens every single day if i die because i'm tired i'm over this shit i'm over this shit um but it did we keep going a little bit more and i'm starting to see all these red flags and like stereotypical like stuff and they're, they start hearing things like oh well you know on one time when they go pick her up you know my ex-brother-in-law brought the white uh his mistress with him and they berated my sister and she had a mental breakdown on the highway and i'm thinking oh, shit. so why didn't Please. you call us to come pick you up because me and your brother would have no problem to come pick you up right away like why the fuck you go back i thought we could work it out no what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah 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 hammer, hammer, no, yeah, yeah. Hammer, hammer, hammer. there's no coming you back you want fuck all that he was a bad boy of course it was a bad boy yeah, fuck all that also <laughs> all right he had a big Damn. too according to her of course so apparently he laid the pipe down on her very well and she enjoyed it which makes you think if she was like he was big how would you know in comparison to other guys unless you've already yep and oh, when i started that. thinking about that i was like oh you a hoe i got news oh, for and you then, and then you your sis, then my sister you know asked my brother to bring her her toys out of storage no man no and no I had no on one of them and that shit was like it's no. a power tool a fucking power tool and I'm like, that that's most of them now i mean hammer these girls parade around their toys that's why do you notice women always say oh Look, guys man. will stick their dick in anything okay let's see women stick vegetables in the in the vag they're sticking fruits they're sticking Doggy. power tools dogs they, they there's yeah. nothing they want and yet they they talk Literal about real it's dogs. all projection yeah. There it's was all projection. That I always said is when I started waking up to all this shit, I realized every stereotype about what a man is is simply female nature deflected because they can't accept accountability. Men yep. are shallow. Women only care about what you can do for them, how good you look, and that's it. Nothing else. <laughs> Men are the only ones who truly love anything because I'm willing to die for anybody on this panel if it comes down to that. I'm willing to die for my neighbor if he's bolted. Uh, you know, in, in that sense, like if I think, like, man, this is some real shit's going down, and he looks like he needs some help, I'll, I'll, I might risk myself to do that because that's what men will do. We will stand around saying, "Oh God, please, somebody help." What the fuck yeah. is that shit? All right, you know? vanish. Any final Wait, thoughts yeah. before we move on, man? That was a hell I of a mean, story. I mean, <laughs> I, Tim, I know I sent you like at least three emails at this point in time. What the fuck's going on, man? <laughs> Did I not respond to the last one? No, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, pretty, I okay. Uh, yeah, we're just dealing. Um, we got a bunch of guests. Uh, we just had guests lined up in a row, right? And then right, a couple right. cancellations. No, it's, it's fine. So, yeah, I've I've got you on the rotation. You're you're co you'll come in. We've it's got uh, we've got legal mindset next week, right, Drex? Yep. Yeah. Man, so. Andrew's great, um, but um, yeah, you know, as always, you know, I'm working on. The reason why I have the curtain behind me is because my background's a, a shit stain. So yeah. I put that there so at least. It, kind of looks presentable because i'm at build area right behind me and because i'm out in the open area there's just a kitchen right behind me and it's a disaster um but i'm going to be getting into content creation i've got a couple of videos of me scripting out because uh i i've got so many ideas rolling around in my head i just need to start producing stuff you know well good yeah. luck man Hope yeah all it is all, all it's really about is just doing it and and like you know guys like you know yidis rishi the war band hammerhand like Guys always like helping, and I think that's one of the, the major things. And Hammer, you remember being new to this space. It was about guys like like guys with bigger channels lending that olive branch, right? They extend their hand and would bring you in and say, hey, yo, here's some pointers or something. You know what I'm saying? Like just guys even giving little pointers makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't sure. even do live streams at first. You used to just kind of like make the, the quick videos in your car about 15 minutes, and then that was that. And you started doing live streams and doing it all. So – 
Yeah, yeah. Van, yeah Vanish <clears throat> just like all it is about is just doing it because like you have people who have people who have people who have people who have oh, no yeah. problem helping you out, being a guest, letting you know some pointers, man. So stick with it. Oh, yeah. I've been in content creation for years. I, I've been streaming yep. on Twitch for over a decade. So I'm used to the casting. I went to college for design, but I've done video editing for years. You can find my old YouTube content all over the place. If you mm -hmm. search Vanish Mental, you will find my signature all over the internet. But, um, you know, my main focus right now is just my game, you know. Uh, I've taken a break from it mentally because my, uh, you just, like when you get stuck creatively, it's very hard to force yourself out of that rut. So I just refocus that to something else, which is the Gundam stuff. Um, but yeah, the only thing I have to plug is my uh, game company or my website. You can actually find gameplay of my game uh, via the YouTube channel, Creative Virtual Magic. I know I haven't updated it in a long time, but at the same time, <laughs> You know, I, I'm one man, and I'm the only one who manages everything that I do. So, yes, sir. Right. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you very much for calling in, man. Okay. Thank, uh, you. thank you for. We'll, 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 we'll be in touch. Appreciate Definitely. you, man. Look forward to it. I'll go check my email because I'm probably wrong. You're probably right, Tim. I will. Or I, you know what? I may have forgot to hit send. It. Both are equally likely. All right. But we'll we'll get you in here. Yeah. Don't worry about As it. As always, hammer is nice and Drex. You know, one day we're gonna have to meet up in person. Indeed. All right, catch you later. Peace, Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. All right. Karrion, you're on next, and then it's Captain Nightmare, and then we're finished this round. I'll do Super Chats, and we'll see how much how much longer you guys want to go. Yeah, well, I'll get off in about 45, because i got to get that early drive. Yeah. I think uh, I'll be disappearing here at about the four-hour mark. Yep. Same I see you, Hammer. Karrion, how are you? Uh, I'm good. It's 5 o'clock for me, so it's fine. Oh, damn. Yeah. What's up, Karrion? How you doing? I'm fine. I never actually got to speak to you, Hammerhead, even though I'd be in a few streams of you. So, yeah, it's nice to actually speak to you for the first time. Pleasure to meet you, bro. Yeah. So, I guess how I say it is, I'm part of the younger generation. I was born around uh, 2000. So, I, I've oh. seen a lot of this. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty young. Shit. So, yeah. What, what is I, that like? Because, you know, like, I was born in 82 and the world was so different. And, like, what, what is it like being born in. in in this era where i mean what what let me ask you this something that i talked to hammer earlier do you guys see in your generation any masculine reinforcement like you know from movies games do you see anything that makes you say yeah that's a man depends on different groups but most of the time you look at people like eh, no 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 it's like no no teachers no if they're male teachers definitely no <laughs> Actually, I feel like more female teachers have more masculine traits than male teachers, which is kind of fucked up. That's your uh, parents yeah. uh, depends on each like that's really hard. Like, and after what you're watching, it's just like a lot of bullshit. So yeah, like you don't they get a clean form of masculinity. It's rather the really fucked up form of like someone that's mentally unstable or pussy. So that's what you get most of the time. That's pitiful. Well, let me ask you this. How do the the uh, the other your peers right? How do your peers respond to the fact that like do you guys have these kind of conversations? Like, yo, man, I want some direction. I don't see anybody like you know every every dad out here now is just a beta cuck. They're basically Will Smith. I, I can't talk to people around my age. The only person I can literally talk to the most is probably my brother. He's like two years younger than me. And like we've been through the whole crap of our family, and we have somewhat different personalities, but different ways of like look similar in most ways so i look at other people like if i want to speak to you i know you get upset if i actually spoke how i actually feel so i just shut my mouth when i speak to the most people around my age is like i can't speak to them they're mostly dumb or they're also they look always looking for pussy always yep. looking for pussy or they just don't know what they're doing and it's like i don't know what i'm doing half the time it's like dude i'm not going to waste my time because you're going to talk about some dumb anime shit that's kind of sus like, oh my days, the case is everywhere, man. It's everywhere. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> I, I know that there's been a lot of that. Let me ask you this. What do you what do you think in your, your generation thinks about everything being a push for the rainbow agenda? What do you think about that? Oh, okay. The guys hate it, but they don't want to say anything about it. They all act nice around the girls, like, yeah, I'm fine with it. But when they're talking about it, it's like, I hate this shit. I hate this shit. I don't want I don't want this to go on. That means like, they're the problem, man. They yeah, yeah. 
I, I told Hammer that earlier. I I'm the guy like I just don't enable any of the fuckery. I just don't. I never have, never will. And I keep seeing everybody. You know, I told Hammer when we first started. Hammer, you've been in that situation. Everybody just allows everything, right? Tolerance, acceptance, everything is okay. And Kirion, you know, okay, let me ask you this. How many times have you been in interactions where there was the, the one guy out there who was like, I'm not tolerating any of this fuckery. And then, like, here's the thing. He got the girl. And how come, did you guys kind of look at it like this? Wait a minute. The guy who was the asshole and was basically against all of the fuckery is the one who's getting the results. I haven't seen that myself. I don't really try to interact with women. I just find it sad. I personally see them as a waste of time, and the best I can get out of them is watching them as entertainment. It's like watching a yeah. reality TV show. I personally yeah, enjoy that. As a, like, I guess from a young age, I just had a fucked up family, so, and I'm on the spectrum, so I have a certain trait. I like to watch people, so I found that this stuff really early. Like, women do this bullshit. I was like, oh, yeah. And my mom was a teacher, so... I listened to her when she was talking, like, children don't understand what they're talking about until they grow up and like, oh, I understood everything you were talking about now. And I understood, like, hell yeah, women are fucked up. They'll do all this bullshit when they think no one can know and where, oh, they're just children. I grew up and it's like, oh yeah, I don't trust any of the women I knew. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I know what you talk about in private, you, you, you. I was like, yeah. all my aunties and people I suppose look up, like, yeah, I know what you're talking about behind your back. It's like, oh yeah, I like this guy, but he's bad. Oh, some of the broken families like, yeah, I know all this shit. I know what you do. How can I respect you when I know all your secrets? It's like, yeah, I don't want to listen to you. It's like, hey, ready, young age. Carry on. Carry on. Yeah. What part of uh, London are you from? You from the north? No, I I'm from... I'm from West London, like uh, almost outside of London, sorry, but my family's from... No, no, that's all, that's all good. You got a very familiar accent. Yeah, it's probably from South London, where like my family is from the Caribbean. So, yeah, you're educated there, though. Yeah, different things. That's like, let's just say recommend. I had a lot of aunts and uncles, which aren't really aunts and uncles completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got oh, you, man. By the way, I see uh, Hammer's got to go very soon. Uh, do you mind if I pull in the last guy? Uh, he's been waiting quite a while. Uh, do you mind if I pull him in before you head out, Hammer? Oh, by the oh, way, no, before fine. you. Before you hand it out, Hammer, I need your opinion. What do you think so far? It's probably a little small. Maybe I can... <laughs> Pretty good, but so far, yeah, it's a little small. It's just a quick sketch. Yeah, loving. Probably do more. Probably Absolutely, do more man. Later. Sweet. Gap Nightmare, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, did you have hey. any questions for Hammer before he heads out? What's up, Kevin? Uh, no. Hey, no, appreciate your guys' content, though. Oh, Thank much appreciated. How you doing, Kevin? I'm good. Is that a truck? Are you in a truck? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Are you are you currently blocking a border or honking at the prime minister's residence? Uh no. Sadly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hammer, it was uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for uh, gracing us with your presence. Gentlemen, I appreciate you greatly as always. And uh, yeah, it's no kind of grace, man. It's 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 a pleasure for me to drop in and. Hobnob with you guys every once yeah, in a I while. Yeah, I love it, man. I, I always shout out Hammerhand uh, everywhere I go. I'm always like, yeah, you guys got to listen to my man Hammerhand and Lie to MGTOW. I always give yeah, you guys I appreciate a shout out in the war I recommend as many as I can possibly recommend when I can think of them. So for certain, sure. Yeah. I love the stream. Congratulations on 10,000 and uh, here's to 20,000. All right. Much appreciated, Hammer. Have a good night, brother. Peace, gang. Appreciate you. See, See you, Hammer. Peace. All right. I'm heading out as well. I got to get up in like... Five hours. So. Yeah, don't right. worry. I'm, I'm on that same five and a half hour boat because I got a, a six hour drive tomorrow. That's gonna suck ass. So yeah, I'm just gonna clear the remaining queue, go through super chats, and that will that will be a night. Yeah, um, yeah. Don't worry. We'll like, for the people that we miss. Don't worry because I'll, I'll definitely come back later uh, with another stream and make sure we always get those another people. one. Well, we got. But yeah, the Captain Nightmare. Right? What what do you have to say about like I, I just asked Kirion about this whole issue of lack of of you know men that are manly men. And, you know, in your profession, do you see that there are more guys out there who are, you know, strong jaw that want to be men, not little weak wristed girly dudes? Uh, so let me uh, let me uh, let me uh, broadly answer that. The truck driving field is slowly becoming dominated by women. Wait, what? 
Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh. That's not a joke. wow. What? <laughs> what? Whoa, that's, whoa, whoa. Wait, Drex, what? that's why they made self-driving trucks, right? We were like, we can't yeah. have this happening. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I've seen a lot more women, seen a lot more in the uh, what they call teams and stuff, a lot of husband wife type couple or girlfriend boyfriend whatever the fuck you want to call this shit and uh no it's uh making the men weak i think i absolutely see that uh the thing i see it is you know i'm a older guy like 37 but i've been doing this for about 10 years and uh you know used to be a lot of the older owner operator type guys and you know they're the strong rugged independent they're gonna make it on their yeah. own time and nowadays you're just seeing a lot of the, oh, well, I need a job, you know, so they just get into it like that and they can't drive. They're a bunch of, you know, I don't know what I'm allowed to say on your show, but let's just say F slurs and, you know, they're not <laughs> strong at all. They're not strong at all. No, not know, it's truckers. Sad. No, it's sad, you know, man. I got to give a shout out to you guys out in Canada. I never saw that coming. You guys you know, have the real deal. We, we have good days. We have bad days. I don't know how, what to make of us. You know, the like, like Drex, I, you know, I was down with the truckers, right? I was down mm -hmm. there at the border with the truckers. Uh, I didn't see any of these people you were talking about there, right? These were just like salt of the earth right next. Now, most of them were transporting farmer uh, mm -hmm. grain to the elevators, cattle to the ranches, right? They're, right, right. they're farmer truckers. Mm. So I think that's different than, say, the uh, city trucker that's dropping off with Walmart at like three in the morning. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, um, yeah, I'm trying to think how you like say this. I got, it's hard to really articulate, but I'd say over the last ten years, I've seriously two things. A, I've seen a lot more women, and I've seen a lot more bitch made simps. No, but I think well, that's what, just what society. Do to, what do you have to say about what Kirion said? Because Kirion, you mentioned that the guys that you've seen, it was always about pussy, always about pussy. Mm -hmm. Are are you a nightmare? Kind of basically seeing the same thing that you know that's what you're seeing. Is that what's motivating the guys that you've seen? Um, mostly. I have a lot of buddies that I don't, let's just say I'm not buddies with anymore because they chose, let's just say, different life points, right? You know, I used to be in a long relationship. I got fed up with that shit after a couple years. Well, actually, almost a decade, to be honest. But, you know, you get to that point, you don't want this shit anymore. Then you kind of do the casual dating off the side. And that's when you start to see the stuff you're always talking about. You see these fucking cheating housewives. You see all of this yep. fucking shit. Then you're just like, I don't need this shit, you know. But basically, by the time I was in my 30s, I'm like, I don't have time for this shit anymore. You know, I just started focus. That's, you know just kind of focused on me since I actually got into the truck driving thing back when I was in the relationship after I ended that, I had a lot more money for myself, mm -hmm. you know? Well, now, now with, uh, with your profession, what do you have to say uh, to a guy like Kirion who is, you know, younger and like looking for something to do? Do you think trucking is a good, good trade for like a young man to get into? Uh, I would say it is if you're willing to work hard, cause it's not easy. Like a lot of it, especially if you go the corporate route and the non-owner operator, you know, it's a lot of basically being a slave for the first couple of years. So you can get your experience, go get one of the nicer kind of day jobs or, you know, just depending on what you're wanting to do. And, but I'd say it's very profitable, but it is also really hard work. Have you, uh, have you done any of the, um, you know, out, out in the, uh, boonies trucking, uh, for <laughs> forestry or mining, anything like that? Uh, no, I've primarily just done like what they call dry van, but I actually, you mentioned, uh, not in the middle of nowhere, actually, I, uh, primarily drive in Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois. So it's all just open farmland for the most part when you're driving. Have you been to Gary? I have. Did you keep all your wheels? Uh, mostly thankfully I yeah, never stopped you, you there. only lost half of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's a shithole though. You are correct. No, 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 no. I got to ask you, what are the, what are the uh, professions that guys your age want to pursue? Uh, YouTube is probably one of the major ones. Esports, uh, YouTube. Yeah. Streaming. Yeah. 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 They, Everyone yeah, wants yeah. to be next to you. Bye. Yeah. yeah. That all is like, for, like they sports. Be on TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, is that all sports? Like, they don't really have any dreams of actually building up anything from the bottom. Like, they want to be slaves to companies. Technically, they don't want to actually be the person that has to actually owns these dumb asses that are making millions of money. But yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Darth Darth Hideous has a great comment. Uh, Drex, an entire season of Ice Road Truckers with nothing but women. Oh, it's coming. Uncensored. I want to see every crash, every ding, every stall, uh, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> oh no, actually, it's funny you say that. Actually, so um, you know, the thing I noticed with women, the like, at least in the experience, I'm not saying there ain't ones that can't do this, but like uh, with trucking, it's all about back in the trailer, right? And these women can't oh, back fucking they, they trailer. They can't reverse their shit. Yeah, spatial, yeah. spatial awareness. Yeah, they yeah. can't yeah. back. They can't reverse my Honda Civic with a rear view camera. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's pretty bad out here with that because like no, like you know, mostly, especially like I'd say the what do you what's your ones? I'm trying to think how you phrase this. When you see a guy like again, think you're older, rough, you know, the guy's been doing this shit for 20, 30 plus years. You know, he'll back anything, anywhere, no issues whatsoever. You see some of these women or even some of these newer like guys doing this shit, and they take 20 minutes to back into the easiest fucking spot you've ever seen at a truck stop. Like it, it's, it's, it's fucking sad. See, I, uh, when I started, I got, uh, I had a really good mentor. He was an owner operator done at 25 plus years. I mean, you know, he basically taught me, I, you could say he was a mentor of sorts, but you know, he taught me how this shit's done. And then I see that shit today and they're not teaching these fucking younger guys how to do this shit. Right. Well, well Captain, the, the whole theme about chivalry and part of that is, you know, that, that mentorship that you talked about. Do you see do you see much of that going on not just in your profession but just like in general like in life do you see older men taking younger men under their wing giving them this wisdom giving them this game so that they can go on and move that information and knowledge to the next generation I'll be honest not really I see our and I'm sure you could probably relate this too that a lot of people now the ones that have the wisdom kind of choose to keep it to themselves they don't really want to engage with this younger generation they look at them as kind of a lost cause which mm -hmm. some could agree is accurate but yeah i don't see a lot of that especially not in this truck driving stuff this stuff is very uh, isolated more than i think it's ever been you know there's not a lot of people congregating like it used to be even early on when i got into this you'd go to a truck stop you'd go to the, they have a little driver lounge you could talk to people you go in there now there's nobody in there or if there is there's a bunch of people on their cell phones and shit you know I don't see a lot of uh, mentorship at all in this, honestly. That's sad, man. Uh, Kirion, do you see mentorship with? Are there are there older people in your life that kind of you know put their arm around you guys and tell you something? No, and if they try, they're mostly idiots. Damn! <laughs> don't take the advice yeah. of idiots. Don't take the advice of your mother. Uh, I don't take. <sighs> I see my mom's bad sides, and I definitely wouldn't take advice from her. <laughs> I would listen uh, to what she says, but I wouldn't actually follow it unless it's like actually reasonable to a certain degree, and I already know it makes sense. Of yeah, but I wouldn't just take her word for it and just run to the hills. To uh, to answer Ace and Deuce's question in the uh, chat, uh, that we're that's it for call-ins for tonight. We're gonna run out of time here because Drex has to be up early tomorrow. Uh, and I have to be up early tomorrow as well. So uh, what we have in here is it. Uh, but don't worry. Don't worry. We'll be back. We'll do another one. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll have Phil. You guys love Phil. Direct stuff yeah, talking to Phil. You go for 20 hours. I think. Uh... Oh, God. Phil, Phil is always <laughs> hilarious. Um, I was oh, hoping for I... Yellow Flash to jump on. He's been lurking yeah. in the chat this entire time. He always does that. <laughs> he always does I... that. I wanted to ask him about uh, woke white women. Apparently. Oh, they're insufferable, uh, man. Woke white <laughs> oh, women. Jesus. Oh, hey, well, let's go. Go oh, ahead. I have an announcement for the uh, chat. So, Drex, I told you this this morning, but uh, I was accepted to law school. I'm about to go find the bastion of woke white women. Oh, go oh and, hell yeah. Go to law school. Oh, it's terrible. those teachers. <laughs> uh, well, Drex, teachers, me... nurses. Nurses are the, the biggest thoughts, but uh, teachers are all woke. Well, teachers uh, are also half maps too. Yeah, they're they're all woke now. Uh, I I can't think of anything that's not woke. I mean, that's why I give so much uh, props to the left because the left are the true alphas, man. Oh yeah, that's they are one hundred percent the true alphas. Like anything and everything that they want, they they just take it. Like uh, yeah. the Captain Nightmare, it's wrong to have drag queens read to children. <laughs> Shut up, bitch! And they just go in and just do it. You, you see what I'm saying? They don't ask; oh, they just do it. Absolutely. They literally don't care. Sociopathic. Yep. They just do <laughs> it. It doesn't matter what it is. Yep. It's fucked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they control then, schools. Then, then you have like Republic cucks be like, well, you're a hypocrite. And then it's like leftist owned. And it's like, okay. <sighs> we still I, Republicans are just leftist. They, they are. They try to act different, but they're just. If I. Yeah, they're just if I just talk to them. Like They're the real weird. leftists are like alpha, and the conservatives, leftists are just betas. 
Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's actually accurate. <laughs> <laughs> the Chad lefty versus the Virgin. No, but but it really is, dude. They are the real. Like, and everyone keeps on trying to say that, like, oh, they're always emotional and just playing, you know, you know, it was identity politics. You can call it whatever you want, dude. But at the end of the day, if one side is getting shit done and the other side isn't, well, that means one side's winning. Yeah, yeah. they're playing to win. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, my principles. But, but, but Captain, my oh, principles. They don't have principles. We have to lose gracefully. Ah. We have to lose gracefully. Yeah, we can't do that. It's just like, uh. Yeah, See, no, there's no losing gracefully. Yeah, if there's no win or lose. If society was actually unhinged, I probably wouldn't. No, no, no. If I was like, okay, I'm going to be honest. If I was to let loose, I probably wouldn't be alive because I'd probably be in prison or yeah. dead by someone trying to kill me because I just talked too much and pissed off their girlfriend and they tried to kill me. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, oh, there's a lot of they, guys. <laughs> they, uh, <sighs> a guy's girlfriend will give, you, give her man the Jada look. Oh, <laughs> man. He'll come over to you. I actually got oh, it. Shit. <laughs> I actually had that experience once, but the guy came up to me and he's like, oh, you talking about a girl? I was like, dude, I do not give a fuck about your girl. I think I was in, I was, seven, I was 18 at the time, and his girlfriend was having like this dumb relationship. I was like, she looks interesting. It's like, oh, you're talking about a girl? I was like, dude, I don't want to deal with your girl. Your girl has problems. And I was like, dude, yeah. And I was just sitting down there, oh, yeah, 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 he's talking shit. I was like, if I stand up, I know I could push this fat shit over and beat the crap out of him. Mm. I was like, well, if I did that, I probably wouldn't stop. And I'd probably go to prison. I was like, yeah, 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 I don't give a damn about your girl. And he's like, oh, yeah. She came to me now. I was like, did my boyfriend did do this? He's like, yeah, he told me, but don't talk to you. And the thing about it is, like, she was talking to me for the whole time after that. So I was like, your girlfriend don't respect you. Every time she's talking to me, she's talking shit about you. And I'm like, dude. She don't like you. Why are you doing this? <laughs> but yeah, she broke up and she became a hoe afterwards with it. So yeah, I was like, I'm damn, shocked. I dodged the bully. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. I'm, I'm so shocked. <laughs> well, now, now, now hold on. Now I gotta ask you, Captain the Nightmare. Mm. Uh, Coach Greg Evans made the video about the the top five thought professions. Can you tell us some trucker stories about like just how things go down? Are all the myths true? The lot lizards. Give us a give us an inside oh. take. Yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, first things first, yeah, pretty much every, uh, it, it's a little bit more deterred at like your major truck stops, like loves or pilots and stuff, because it got security guards. But you get out in the middle of nowhere, go to some of those mom and pop truck stops. There's fucking hookers everywhere. There'll be guys at the front door asking if you're looking for a good time tonight. They just kind of direct them to your truck and shit. Oh, absolutely. That shit's uh, rampant in this industry. Now, the interesting thing is I'm noticing less of them as the, uh, the last couple of years with these dating app things, because what I'm noticing, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about when I say this, there is a lot of the, uh, let's just say, down low truckers. Yep. And, and they'll just kind of like congregate with each other because it's easier is, I guess, what I can take out of it. Yep. <laughs> like not to be too judgmental of people, you know, they're into what they're into. But uh, yeah. But I will tell you the easiest sex you'll ever get, honestly speaking, I kind of account a story from just last week is talk to these fucking uh, cashiers at these truck stops. They're all usually, what's the right word? Let's just say easy. Yep. And because you're basically just kind of usually for the most part, one in, you know, one out, never see you again. They're far more willing to uh, do some stuff with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I, I love it because you know what you you get a a, a world view that comes from trucking. I think naturally, where you're seeing people on the road, you know you're you're engaging with people, right? You're getting stories. You're getting it's, it's like all this this onflux of information without yep. the internet, right? Without the internet, yep. it's just it's just seeping in. And do you believe that it kind of gets you to a point where you go like this? So this is all there is. I'm just gonna go make money, right? Oh, the relationships absolutely. are all because it, how, let me ask you this: How many of these women that you come across on the road are in some form of relationship? Supposedly, all of them. Yep. You know, they all like. Well, here's an interesting one for you. I want your take on this. So, a lot of these women, they say, "All," oh, and I don't know if this. I, I think this is definitely feminism. This is this end result of you know women have to be better than men kind of thing. But like, uh, I talked to uh, one of them just a couple weeks back. Met her. She's doing something. Um, forgot what she said. She was hauling. But I just talked to her for a brief second, and she was talking about her husband. This husband that he has this great job. But, but all I could think to myself is, if he has this great job, why the fuck are you out here doing this job? Yep. 
And I just, I can't really, um, how do you say that? Like, I can't really pinpoint what that is. And I don't know if that's just like the feminist uh, mindset that's just, you know, obviously like has just permeated culture now where women have to have good jobs. They have to make money. They have to be doing something. Usually has to be a man's job. No, and she had just, to get out of the house to get dick, man. Raw dick and cheap liquor, like Minister Jeff said. Oh, hell yeah. Now, that's also another part. I've kind of wondered how many of these went out here because they know that there's plenty of dick out here on the road. Plenty too. of dick. I, yeah. look, I, uh, there was a guy who called in the Minister Japs show. He's a trucker, and he talked about it. And, you know, I got to ask Kirion this question. Kirion, when we talk about chivalry and men watching out for other men, the thoughtery, I, I, you know, you're, you're much younger, right? What can you say about the thoughtery in that will men call out other men by saying, yo, man, your girl is foul? Are guys actually called, looking out for other guys, or are they looking to get their own dick wet? <sighs> Depends on people. Like there are some real ones that are like your girl trying to do this with me. I'm going to tell you, but the others that will just keep their mouth shut and she like they won't say anything. Or the ones that will just go through with the action. They're like they find out after like, oh yeah, I slept with your girl when we were together. It's like, <laughs> like why you have to tell the guy that? It's like it's when they broke up. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, but I just have to tell you this. Like, dude, well, why are you going to do it? He's already broken. It's like you want to fuck with him even more. It's like they'll get with it, or they wouldn't actually say that happened, but. The guy will break up with the girl, and he's like, ah, the girl cheated on me. It's like, next thing you know, his friends with the girl. It's like, really? Oh, yeah. Really? It's like, you know, you saw all the shit that she did to your friend, and after you're with her, it's like, oh, damn it. I, like, I kind of respect you, but now I just think you're a bitch for them. <laughs> there's, there's, well, there's no rules out here, and, and I think that that's what, what a, a major takeaway is, that guys got to start understanding there, there are no rules anymore. Like, you know, I talked about the, the chivalric code, right? And, you know, Cap, it was never written in, uh, it was never written down. A lot of people don't know that. The chivalric code was never actually written down. It was just amongst men, and they just said, this is the code of conduct, right? This is the, the idealized standard that we hold ourselves to. And then over time, it got perverted. And, and I got to ask you this, but this is for both of you guys. We'll get you out of here. What do you think is something that we can do to not pervert the chivalric code? Hmm. That's a good question. You know, like, again, uh, I think uh, to make it simple, I, and I think, again, I think you'll probably agree to this. The issue with a lot of this is that literally almost 100 years of indoctrination has, like you said, perverted this and turned it into something that's not. And I think that's where you get a lot of this modern simping from, where people – have misinterpreted what it meant to be not necessarily an actual nice guy, but just be a nice person and not, you know, look out for each other and try to help each other out. And it's just, I don't know how exactly how to articulate this in the words, but I just, honestly, if I was to say it this way, I don't think it could ever be fixed because a hundred years is already, well, I'm probably longer than that, but at least the last hundred years have completely fucked it. Agreed. How about yeah, you, Kirion? See, most of the time we talk about like, women don't can't accept accountability. I feel like it's the same shit for men now. Most men can't accept accountability. If you tell them they fucked up, they get in their feelings, they start crying, they start bitching. It's like, dude, if I fucked up, I would want someone to tell me I fucked up. The time that I took my time and effort out of my own shit to tell you, hey, you're making a mistake, you can improve like that. But most guys don't want to do that. And also, like, I feel like that idea of a knight, most guys don't realize it. Like, when knights go on their journey, they always meet a witch. She's always fine until, like, <laughs> You sleep with her and uh, you wake up and she's all old and has and she cursed you and hexed you and like you go to your mission and those guys always fail. They get killed by the knight because you sent out this witch to hex him and make him weak, or they get killed by the dragon because oh your armor that had resistance now lost that power because the witch drained it. It's like they've been telling us throughout history all mm -hmm. the time, mythology after mythology, story after story. Sleep with these women and you break your code of conduct, you are going to fuck yourself and fuck a whole kingdom in the process. They have something called as kingdom ending beauties. Mm. Why the hell are they kingdom ending beauties? It's just because guys are so weak to pussy that they will destroy kingdoms <laughs> and wipe out hordes of people for a woman who probably doesn't even like them. And it's like, oh wait, you won, so I'm probably just gonna take you because I have no other options. And it's like, how much people did you kill in the process? How much of your friends died for this woman? Yep. Mm. I think that's why be between the dolls, which is, the, of course, automation, and also, you know, there need, you know, you know, uh, Captain was talking about how, like, you know, you got working girls and stuff out there. People can say what they want. 
if as long as guys can get their nut busted without a relationship, I think that's a good thing. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. the post nut clarity matters. You see what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. you know, Rishi, you talked about that. Now, Rishi, what do you have to say about one of the ways that we can be chivalrous to each other is we have to get that nut busted somehow without those confines so that we cannot be basically undermining each other and dirty Mac. And what do you think about that, Rishi? Mm, I don't know. Uh, but I, I, I will say this on this matter, that I, over the past, you know, being in the community, whatever, I've realized that not all guys are the same. We can't just prescribe, you know, one thing to like every guy every guy needs to go on his own path and make his own decisions now we can give our input our opinions and everything like that but ultimately it's on that guy what i say the most important thing is not to simp even absolutely if you don't, don't even get pussy mm -hmm. because to me even if you don't get some you could still slobber over a woman on her only fans or instagram or twitch or something like that so just have respect for yourself. That's all I'll say on that. I'll agree with that. Also, this is probably a good time for me to actually say uh, you guys should absolutely be getting dolls here. I got a doll right there. Hey, look at that. Hey. Yeah. Oh, it's got a, a pirate girl. Parrot. Yeah. Oh, pirates are awesome. But yeah. <laughs> that is but awesome. No, no, the, no, the doll really helps actually in that context, you know. Absolutely. Kevin, do you see that becoming more and more prevalent? How, how prevalent do you think you see, let's say, in the next 10 years? Oh, I think, um, assuming they don't outlaw them, uh, I think they'll be very prevalent. Uh, technology's coming a long way. There's always, uh, you know, innovation. I know a lot of the robotic stuff is coming up with those. And I mean, right now it's just kind of the animatronic head shit. But I mean, uh, I've seen a couple of prototypes for ones that basically buck their hips and can literally ride you. So I think it's going to come quite a, uh, quite a long way in the next 10 years. Um, I have a couple buddies that, um, Phil, um, obviously, you know about Phil, but I, uh, buddies with one of his protégés that run one of his, uh, sub or used to one run one of his subsidiaries of the dollhouse. And that guy sells about fucking a hundred dolls a fucking day. Holy shit. Yeah. That so I mean, I've, guy? yeah, Ricky. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I've oh, seen the numbers and that stuff is fucking crazy. How many of these are selling? <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's got another satisfied customer in Koopa, right? <laughs> yeah, I saw his goblin doll. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of the filler up series that we're doing? Uh, so far, I've been enjoying it. Um, I think it all. I, I I don't know. The only disappointment I had is there's like I know you guys bring on guests to talk. I'd like to hear more from Phil to be honest with you, because he just kind of yeah. you know he's a very reserved guy. I realize so he just kind of sits there and lets people talk. But I would definitely yeah. like to hear more from Phil personally. But I realize that Phil without Drex is a very quiet person. Yeah, that might be the way to say it. Yeah, so uh, definitely episode three, we'll fill, fill her up. We'll, uh, Drex will be back. Uh, it's just the timing with the Grimlord didn't work up correctly with uh, Drex's ah, schedule. Ah, yeah. So, gotcha. And I was like, now, wait a second. We get a very good chance to test out Phil solo. Let him fly solo. Yep. Yep. But anyways, yep. no, we learned a lot. Uh, episode three of Fill Her Up, we'll, we'll get Drex back in. We'll have Phil back in. Uh, Phil's got a couple of people who he knows that he wants to bring on as guests. So look for that in the future. Um, oh, hell yeah. Any uh, the three of you uh, start with Captain. You wanna you wanna plug anything before we get you out of here? Oh yeah, sure. For anyone out there actually interested in the um, the doll stuff, I actually do a weekly Tuesday show at eight forty five Eastern Standard every week uh, called Rock and Rolling Dolls. We just kind of get on and bullshit about the dolls, look at the dolls, talk about how the dolls are better than real women. It's good shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, that becomes on. is becoming a growing incentive now. Kirion, I gotta ask you. Is there anybody in your age group talking about getting a doll? I don't think I don't know any of these guys that know about it. I probably get one because I don't really see the difference between that. Um, <laughs> I just don't want to waste my. Oh yeah, I don't want to waste my time on getting food for a girl that's probably going to dine and dash, or wasting my time trying to get gifts for some woman that's just going to probably use on some other guy. So yeah, probably getting a doll is probably cheaper in the long run. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I'd say so. I uh, could have bought about, literally no joke, about 150 dolls in what I paid for that 10-year relationship. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that that's the wild thing is that a lot of, I don't think a lot of guys really look at the, the financial drain it is, right? Like I said, because the longer you, you're there, 
the more you lose. Like there, there is no winning play. Like, I've never heard a guy say, "Nah, man, I was dating this girl. My life was so much better because, like, you know, she women aren't giving you money, right? Ever? Nope. It's a drain. It's a financial drain. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I've been uh, pretty much. I think I said something similar to this earlier, but yeah, like ever since I got out of that relationship, I, like I said I was making good money doing the truck driving. I've actually been able to have a savings account. Cause that's yep. something I didn't have when I was dating. <laughs> that's sad, man. We d- we covered that in the um, Prager U video, uh, doing mm. the Chameleon Crusades, right? Yep. Men, oh, Drex, when you get married, men earn more money. Yeah, because yeah, they have to. But yeah, absolutely. you're also yeah. spending <laughs> more money, and you're spending more than the additional that you earned. So you're actually oh, yeah. losing. That's oh, what they don't tell you. But uh, carry on. Is there anything you want to plug before we get you out of here? No, no, no. I don't have any channel yet. I'm thinking of making something because I'm doing some animation work. But besides that, no, nothing yet. All right. And there's a lot of uh, mushroom simps here in the chat. Um, <laughs> hey, I don't know. I don't know why because he's cult. not even a real mushroom. But I, I am don't have anything to plug. Mushroom. I'm the best mushroom there is. Um, I don't want to plug my own stuff, but I will say this: uh, Drex, uh, Tim. <laughs> There is a small group of new creators that I discovered a little bit ago. Uh, there's this guy called The Vital Message on YouTube. You should uh, look him up. He's a very smart uh, young guy, younger guy. He's very smart, has a lot of good opinions. And also, um, it's a whole group of guys. Uh, there's also Hold the Truth Hostage, I think. So definitely. Uh, what's the, what the other guy's name? The, the second guy? I think it was Hold the Truth Hostage. Okay, know. Hold the Truth Hostage. Man, with, the, with these channel names, how could you lose? <laughs> but, well, oh, yeah, awesome. Uh, very cool bunch of guys. Very interesting. Definitely uh, check them out. We'll look them up. We'll All do. Right, gentlemen, we'll get you out of here. Drex and I will uh, read Super Chats for five minutes, and then uh, we'll call that a night. So thank yeah, you. Very yeah. much appreciate for you guys coming on. Uh Captain Nightmare, Kirion, and yeah, definitely, man. And Rishi. Much right. appreciated, yeah. man. Yeah, congratulations on your ten thousand. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, bro. Thank yeah, you. congratulations. Yeah, actually, you're one of the first people that can actually say my name properly. Like Chronic and Yi is probably saying it wrong half the time, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't say Kirion? So Chronic's I don't know if it's sure he's drunk half the time or something. He's high. No, well, he's, he's <laughs> drunk and high. <laughs> they say, God damn. They, they, oh, they say, shit. like, carry on. Oh, like, carry on? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Ah, the collector. Yeah, everyone knows I can't read. Jelly. <laughs> Are you, uh, you hmm. she's a B Tech VeggieTale character. I just read as that. VeggieTale. Stop capping, Tim. Everyone knows you can't read. Uh, Tax says congrats on 10k, uh, gentlemen. I will show you. We'll we'll see you out. Yep. Right. Peace out. Yep. You. See you hey, have a good yep. night, everybody. Happy yep. April Fool's Day. And then uh, Drex, we got to read uh, super chats really quick. There's not All many. Right. Good deal. Uh, we'll where did I leave off? Out of here. Uh, Fo Chung says, uh, "What up, boys? Take my money." <laughs> <laughs> yes, with pleasure. Uh, Link 1945 says, "Cheers, Drex, and to all on the panel. Hail to the war band. Keep up the outstanding work, Drex. With your recent stream on Legal Mindset with Rolo, do you think the Manosphere can be bridged? As in, like bridge to what? Like, like bridge to the mainstream or bridge to? Yeah, uh, uh, br- bridge to mainstream. Because uh, Rolo Tomasi would be uh, someone. Uh, He's more a, a softer he, cell. Yeah, like yeah, he, um, Kevin." Uh, was it Kevin, 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 Kevin Samuels? Samuels. Yeah. Like, here's the thing, uh, and that's what I was kind of getting across. Like I, I told, uh, I can't remember if I told Chronic this or who, it might have been Hammer. It was Hammerhead. The first time we had him on, I said, "Look, I get why some people get mad at some of these guys that they call posers or imposters or infiltrators." But I said at the same time, Tim, you and I both know if TFM were still on YouTube, right, you would not introduce somebody to the Red Pill with TFM. You see what I'm saying? Oh no, it, it would be a tough it would scare him away. Yeah, yeah. It, it'd scare them away. They'd be like, oh, it's this is... a suppository is... this big. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it'd be too much, right? So sometimes you need a guy to listen to Sandman, Donovan Sharp, Kevin Samuels. Like, you need them to listen to something that eases them in, right? And then after that, they kind of go down the rabbit hole because, I, I mean, the red pill basically is on autopilot, like, like Lion and MGTOW said, because, I mean, let's face it, 
the marriage rates have collapsed around the world, especially in the West, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that's red pill, right? Uh, divorce rates have gone down because why? Because the marriage rate has collapsed. The birth rate collapsed. Uh, guys aren't going for the whole, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, what is it with the, the the foodie call, right? Yeah. Guys are starting to learn, Friends oh, wait a minute. Is. These women are not choosing me. I'm not getting sex even though I'm simping. So yeah. guys are starting to learn these terms. Like you, you, you did that article, right, Tim? The, 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 the mom called in to some, I don't like that my son is being called a simp. You see what I'm saying? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. They're like 11 and 10-year-olds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't young, be a simp. Don't be a simp. So so clearly it, the message is getting out there. Whether or not people like you know are watching us or whoever, there's, the message is getting out there. Because like, I'm talking to guys who have never heard of MGTOW ever. They, they don't know what that is, yep. right? But everything that they're saying is what, Tim? MGTOW, right? They're, they're, they're saying it literally verbatim. Like, They've never heard the term ever. Oh, Drax, me too is the fastest uh, red pill a man. Can oh man, get. me too. Me too is real. Like for those for the ladies out there who don't know, if you ladies knew just how much damage me too did, and, and that's why when Hammer and I say like me too was literally the last straw. Like if if any woman out there wanted like a last chance to get a man, you had to do it before me too hit mainstream in 2017. Yep. Uh, next up, uh, Mike Hunt says, looking for a life, not worrying about petrol prices, homeschool and faithful women join the Amish, the original MGTOW. Yeah. They keep <laughs> the pair of hands strong. Although hold on, Tim, we got to be fair. Even the Amish as red pill as they are, have not been able to do what they haven't been able uh, to, to weed out female nature. Cause when, when the Amish get that little sabbatical where they get to do whatever, yeah. A lot of girls just become permanent thoughts, man. What do you think they do when they hit the town? Oh, they hit it hard. Yep, they hit it hard. And look, they look. get hit hard. No, but you know, I got to be fair. <laughs> the dudes, too. The dudes are out there getting drunk and all this stuff. And, you know, like, start, we got to be fair. Fights. Yep. Um, Fo Chung says, is Will Smith not the poster child of beta cuckery? He is. He is now. He, he and Jack Murphy have like now become a thing, man. Oh, shoot, I, I should have got this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, still Darth there. Hideous is right. Terrence Pop is a good intro. Yeah, I like Terrence Pop. Um, Hammerhand, tell them about the face of uh, teriyakiism. Teriyakiism? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, well, we'll, uh, we'll get Hammer that, back. That, that, we'll that, that, that T-ism. Yep. Yeah. They, they, they try to blackball him. Um, D-Man50 says, uh, Timber Drex, wrench up S-E-E. That's, uh, one, of, uh, that's one of the Warband mods. Uh, yeah, I gave him uh, gave him a wrench. He can help keep the spammers out. Uh, Frank Rizzo got censored by Susan. Mm. Uh, as a blank chat, so uh, ta- tag me uh, if you're still listening. Tag me, and I can uh, read what you said, what you intended to say. Uh, RP Doomer says, "Buy yourself a beer." Well, thank you very much. Although uh, he sent a two dollar chat, so I don't know where I'm going to get a beer for two dollars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But no, we appreciate it. We appreciate all chats, obviously. I'm just joking. Just kidding around. Uh, Ryan H. says, It is easier to find men who will volunteer to die than to find those who are willing to endure pain with patience. Uh, quote attributed to Julius Caesar. It's very true. Aged like fine wine. Yep. Uh, Swine Dog says, She doesn't love you, quote. Uh, that's the message men don't want to hear. Yeah, it hurts, but when you accept it, you can take the red pill. And there's nothing wrong with it. Look, I, I've, I've always said, Tim, I don't care if women fetishize me or whatever, right? Oh, I've always just fantasized about BBC. Oh, well. If, if my only goal was to smash, why would I care if I'm being fetishized, right? These yeah. guys crave this love. Like It's the same with the incel, right? The incel guy says... Okay, when I say, I go, there's no such thing as an incel, because as long as you have money in your pocket, you can literally just go and pay for a streetwalker, right? No, I don't want that. So you want her to love you. That's what it's about, right? You want love, that validation. It has nothing to do with sex. It's these guys, they crave. I'm saying, these guys got mommy issues, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> I love this. Look at this guy's username, Drex. Releasing the zinc gods in your Oh, mind. God. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, In Fantasy I Die says, Tried super chatting five times. Mama Susan shenanigans. I follow Logic, Nick, Drex, and Mindset. I'm one of Hammer's mods Ghost Nation represent. Mm, I like that. Um, Five Simple Words says, Do not send him to the military. 
Take it from a vet. Want to send them anywhere? Send them to the Makedown Discord. Shout out mm. to our Discord. Uh, for those who are curious, uh, shameless plug. Uh, in order to get access to our Discord, you have to be a supporter of ours on Patreon, Subscribestar, or uh, Locals, uh, at least at the $5 level. Um, if you get, you know, they're, they're all the same. They all have access to the same thing. So if you're in one, you don't need to be in any of the others. Uh, but there is a link to the Discord server. Get yourself in, you know, while, while we're still around. <coughs> Who knows how long that's for. Can you imagine getting Susan to off Discord? That, that, that I know, suck. right? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Samurai Knight says, get him into interspecies reviewers. Second, just... Did not have enough water to drink before reading all these. Oops. Um, Junebug, I've got five left. Uh, Junebug says, uh, wish you bring, uh, what is that, Black Gen Z Mindset or AK Nation on. I haven't heard of them. Haven't heard of them. We'll have to look them up. But of course, man, we'll have anyone we'll have anyone on who isn't here to cause trouble. So right. That's why I don't want to have Destiny on, is because Destiny is just going to yell a bunch, uh, right. talk in circles. It's going to be the marriage stream all over again, yep. and it won't be entertaining to anyone. It's not, nope. We're not going to have fun, and you won't have fun as the viewer. So we respect your time a lot more than that. Uh, five simple words says uh, shout, shout out to I'll tell you what Dale from King of the Hill. Beers in the hand of every doll. Mm. Yeah, that guy's that guy's Hank Hill impression was spot. That, that was beautiful. Uh, Joel Reese says, "Congratulations on 10k subs. Get those 10 minute clips coming. Stimulate that algorithm." Oh yeah, yeah. we gotta stroke it. We'll lube it and stroke it. Yeah, that's something I gotta get on. See, you guys could crowdsource that stuff to me. Just send me timestamps. Drex's greatest hits. Email them to me. Just say, "Look, this video, this time tam- stamp to this timestamp. I'll go and cut it out." But, you know, we're 67, yeah, we're 70 episodes in, two hours each. It's a lot of listening I got to do yeah. to find the good stuff. Um, Magical Sapphire just says, yikes. Uh, five Simple Words says, X work is real work, bigots. Oh, Plug yeah. Plug her only fans and support <laughs> this up and coming, <laughs> stunning and brave woman <laughs> as she gets that bag. Oh, God. Words is terrible. Yeah, I think I missed one here. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, Eldritch Blasted said, Drex, you got to get Legal Mindset on Facebook. I do. I definitely do. I'll, I'll have to uh, ask Andrew if he wants to hop on. Yeah, I think the timing is weird for him, though, because Flash starts so late at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's uh, It would be like a nighttime thing for him. No, no, it'd be daytime. Daytime for him. Yeah, it might be like right in the middle of the day around lunch. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, well, actually, you know what, though? It's not bad because remember, Flash always does his show on Saturday. So it'd right. be Sunday morning there, which wouldn't be that bad. Well, maybe uh, maybe Andrew goes to church. He finds yeah. those uh, he finds those church girls. Oh, God, the church <laughs> unicorn. Oh, man. All right, I think I'm all caught up. I'm just doing one quick search here to make sure I didn't miss anyone. Because I always get yelled at when I do. But... Uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, that's yeah, it. I got them all. great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for the 10K. And like I said, chivalry is not dead. You know, that's why I was so inspired to do this after that 10-plus hour live chat where it was like, you know, man, there's guys coming from all over the world, right, who are, who are tuning in saying, hey, I'm going through these experiences. Hey, let's talk about creating solutions and building a brotherhood because all I see is fucking simping in the real world, right? That's all you see all day, every day, just guys throwing other guys under the bus. And here we are, like I said, with different content creators, different guys, definitely trying to build something. Oh, time to upload facial <laughs> abuse. Yeah, look, man, shout out to my man, Duke Skywalker. Look, facial abuse, Latin abuse. Uh, wait, what else we got? We got ghetto gaggers. We got deaf and degraded. Radical, uh, radical Jislam. <laughs> look, man, shout out to my man, Duke Skywalker. Uh, hopefully you have a safe trip. We'll definitely get you on uh, very soon when you come back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we owe you guys. We owe you guys some Duke Skywalker, and we will. Oh, yeah, I know him. you guys have been asking for him. Oh. We'll definitely get him back, man. Don't worry. Look at that. You mentioned Ghetto Gaggers, and a porn bot shows up in the chat. Oh, did uh, I? Yeah, oh, shit. The mods yeah. got it. <laughs> they got him already. Yeah, the mods got him. Yeah. Yeah, they're on point. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so this is going to be our stand-in for episode 69. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is cut this. Um, I'm going to divide it up because, you know, you had the hour and a half with uh, Drex and Hammerhand before that and then all the call-ins. So yeah. what I'll do is I'll just cut that in half and then the uh, Drex and Hammer portion will be your episode 69. I'll throw that up on Spotify for everyone. 
Um, God, there's too much stuff to plug. There's too many emails to go through. We'll have to do a, like an email stream someday. Yeah, don't worry. We'll, we'll definitely do a catch up. Uh, I'll but, be on uh, a, a well, vacation coming up soon. That'd be a good thing at the beginning or end of that vacation. Just knock them all out, right? Just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And we've got uh, Legal Mindset coming on next week. So yep. uh, shout out to Andrew. He's going to be joining us. Um, man, you used to get along together so well. Oh, Andrew's too great. Uh, shout out to my man, Andrew. I think you went in there for two hours. You came out like seven hours later. Oh, it was, it was yeah. We, we had hit like out <laughs> just shy of six hours. And it's like, and he just shakes his head every time. A lot of times it's, we're not eating. That's, that's what's causing our streams to end. We literally yeah. like... You go in and it's like, like, I mean, think about it. We're, we're at four hours and 43 minutes. So I haven't, you haven't seen me eat. You know what I'm saying? Like I haven't eaten. So it's like, that's what's usually causing you. Like, like, like Nick talks about this, just like, you know, the human body needing, whether it be water to use a bathroom break to get food, like something. And so, yeah, we do appreciate all you guys. Like I said, I always make those sacrifices for you guys. And I do appreciate all of you. Definitely. All right, everyone. Uh, Until next time, stay frosty. Stay toxic, Kings. Thank mm-hmm. you.